Mm-hmm. Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to Monte Carlo. Uh, it is a lovely morning, and I had a nice time at the pool, but now we're ready to go to work on some incredible, exciting matches with some of the best players. Not some of the best players in the world are here. It's just an amazing thing we have coming up right now. This is the finals of the Super Jackpot. This was a 16-member, 16 16-player uh, 16 tournament with an entry fee of 7,500 euros, and they're playing. The winner gets uh, this match is going to get 56,000 euros. Second place is going to get 28,000 euros. So, you're, if your math is as good as mine, you're going to see that they're playing for 28,000 euros. This match it's going to be very exciting, and we have two incredibly talented players uh, for you. We're going to be using it, the XG. Uh, feed as we play so we can see exactly what's going on our two competitors are mario cool from berlin he's actually from potsdam right outside of berlin he was the founder and uh, tech guy who put together true money games uh, he's a inf informatics technology genius i'm told mathematical genius in the last couple of years he's been a money player he started t playing uh, tournaments and he just told me he's going to be showing up at more major tournaments eight or ten major tournaments a year we'll see him in gibraltar uh, not gibraltar we'll see him in dubai we'll see him in uh probably uh, Nordic. We'll see him in Cyprus, the big tournaments. And uh, along the way, he had to beat a lot of good players, but he beat a guy named Mochi to get to the finals. The other player, Peter Jess Thompson, the youngest world champion ever in 1993, and he was in the finals in 1994. He won the Nordic Open several times. He won it this year. Everybody knows he's one of the best players in the world. He doesn't make it to a lot of tournaments, or you'd see him much higher on the Giants list. Um, in, in this tournament, he had a, also a very tough draw. There's no such thing as an easy draw in a super jackpot. He beat Victor Ashkenazi. I had the honor of doing the commentary. It was one of the most exciting matches I've ever seen. They had two eight cubes. The computations that you have to do in order to know when to double and when to take those eight cubes was unbelievable. And uh, Peter got them right. And I talked to him afterwards, and uh, Victor was very close and did very good on him, too. They were both incredible. And this the, the kind of math that was involved to figure out the position and whether it was a double, whether it was a take, uh, and you, with the whole match on the line was pretty amazing. They did a great job. It's a 15-point match. Uh, I'm going to try to watch the comments as much as I can. So if you have a question or comment, I'm happy to see it. I'll try to uh, acknowledge it and answer any questions you have. You can see that Mario is playing the white checkers on top and Peter is playing the black checkers on the bottom. By the way, we did have some problem with the clock before. You will not see another stream match without a clock and all of the matches on this channel on uh, stream one will have the XG feed from now on. On stream two, we won't have the XG feed. It's just too hard to do it, uh, get the right transcribers. We have Aviv who's doing an incredible job keeping up with the transcription. So we will have that on stream one, but not on stream two. The main tournament is going on. That starts after these matches, the next round. And we have some amazing matches coming up. I think. Uh, uh, Steve Sachs is going to be playing Wilcox Snelling is going to be on one of our streams. I'm not sure who the, uh, who's been selected for the other stream. I think we might have, uh, I think Sander and Mochi are going to be playing soon or, uh, I, 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 they're in, they're in the losers bracket, but it's still, or the fighters bracket, I should say, but it's still going to be a pretty exciting thing when the two of them play. So I'm not sure who's going to be streamed where. We had nothing but really incredible matches last night. If you were watching uh, between uh, uh, Justin Noel and uh, and Oliver Squire, uh, we had an amazing match where they were both almost out of time and were playing super fast at the end, and they still played incredibly well. I think Oliver played under three PR. Um, Justin was a little higher, but with when you take into account the clock and the complicated games that they played, he played incredibly well as uh, and nothing to be ashamed of. I think he was in, in the fives, which is high for Justin, but the, again, the circumstances were amazing. Okay, let's get to this match right here. Uh, we can see already that uh, um, uh, uh, that Peter's got a very commanding. Uh, situation. He's got one checker back versus two checkers back. He's got three points in his inner board versus one point in the inner board. That's, that says you've got a major lead. Of course, XG is telling us he's a 62% favorite. Not enough to give the cube yet. 
And it's not just about the wins. There's 20% gammas as well. It's all about market losers. That's why he hasn't doubled yet. He didn't have a role or enough roles where he didn't feel uh, that he would get a pass by Mario on the next roll. Both of these players know the other player well. They know that they're going to both play tremendously well. And they're going to try to just play their best game. They're not going to try and game the player at all. They're going to just try and play the best moves and the best cube decisions they can they can make. C.J. Utley, good morning, my old friend from England. We miss you. I haven't seen you for a while. Thanks for saying hello. And greetings from Santiago, Chile. We're getting a lot of views uh, on these... Uh, uh, not necessarily live in the morning because of the time change difference, but by the time the evening is done, the number of people looking at these videos and streams is very heartwarming. I'm not wasting my time and my breath. I hope you're enjoying it. And again, I look forward to constructive ideas, criticisms, any anything you want. We're not going to please everybody, but we'll, we'll do the best we can to try and please as many as we can. All right, do you come up here? It's really tempting to come up, but you can get blitzed too easy. This is almost like a, this is really a prime versus prime, and it could go either way. All prime versus primes just about our takes. 2-1 is not going to do much. I don't think you step up because you're, everything points on you. You want to keep your builders, I, I almost, you almost have to play 8-7. It's almost like automatic to me uh, to get, that checker in play to be able to make either the five or the two point and not have to break the bar point. He did. Okay. Made the right play. <clears throat> that part was automatic. I would have done that and then look for the rest. This is a good roll. This advances the prime very nicely. The last one's a little awkward. Do you slot? Do you slot? If he doesn't roll the two, you're in big shape. If he rolls a two, you hate it. The computer says you slot big time. You desperately need that point, so you put your checker where it needs to be. Very nice play. Mario's looking at it. This is clearly the best play by far, according to the computer, and according to Phil Simborg. Now, which one is uh, more important? He's taking it back to look at it. He's got plenty of time. And back, I mean, you can move him back and forth, and until you hit the clock, you haven't moved. This is clearly the best play, and... I would be surprised if Mario doesn't find it. He's just too good a player. He found it. That's it. It takes guts to make plays like this, but everything you do in backgammon is risk and reward. Okay, who has better timing? The one that's winning the race has got worse timing. Oh, my God, that is a joker. That is a super joker, but it wasn't the right play. He did it so fast, and it really wasn't the right play. You split and make the prime. And then you let the play. Then you let your opponent hit you and put you on the bar after you made the prime, and you did that so quick. There's no excuse for playing that fast. By the way, it looked like the right play instantly, but then when you look around, you could make a six prime split, and then what happens? Then Peter has to hit you, has to hold your prime and timing. Wow, that's uncharacteristically. And look what happened to Mario's PR as a result of that really bad play. Now. Do you make fun of him for that? Absolutely not. Prime versus prime checker plays are the hardest. I'm not sure I would have gotten it right over. Yeah, I would have gotten that one right over the board after I thought about it. I'm, I, I would have gotten it right. Oh, somebody asked how much money for the winner. I've got all that. I think I already said that earlier. The winner's going to get 56,000 euro. The second place gets 28,000 euro. You came, you came late, whoever asked the question. They're playing fifty six. They're playing for a difference of twenty eight thousand euro. Okay, this is too good to double. This is very. This is too good to double. But you know, an undoubled gammon at zero zero is not a real big big edge. So I I I can see lots of players making the mistake of doubling when it's too good when the score is zero zero. By the way, look how much it's too good by point oh one four. That's nothing. Hey, I'm being. I'm being joined by Mark Olson, who's going to help me with the commentary. Help hey, me. Phil. I'm going to help him. <laughs> so happy to see you this morning. Likewise, Phil. You can Phil. use help. It's a pleasure, as always. We had a real big blunder on a priming, prime versus prime play just a minute ago that you missed by Mario. Uncharacteristically, not only did he blunder, but he played it real quick. 
Okay. He had a 1-6 to come out and hit. He should have made the prime and split. Okay. And that's really the difference of the match so far. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Tara, I think you put the PRs uh, game by game. We didn't see the total PRs. Look. Yeah, it says game. He's got to click on game. Okay, maybe he knows. Ah, there we go. There we go. All right, okay, good. Okay, he match. fixed it. Okay, so we got a PR of 3 for... PJT and we've got a PR of 10 for Mario. But of course, I, I actually predict both of their PRs will go down. What oh, do you think, Phil? I think you're I think you got uh, you, you get 101 odds on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Even P, P, uh, Peter Jess? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I I would bet Peter's I would bet Peter will play very close to 2. I think um for our community, not too many people knew how good Peter was. This is kind of like, he's a world champion of 1993, I believe. And, and in 94, oh, he was a finalist. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so he was really dominating. Oh, in the and he's won the Nordic year. Open. I don't have to tell you. He won it this year and he, several years before. That was kind of like his comeback. You know, he, he was dominating when he was in his early 20s. He, he's the, youngest. He's the yeah. youngest world champion ever. Yeah. And uh, he's been keeping in shape all this time. Hiding away, he lived many years in Thailand, and now he returned. You know, winning the Nordic Open was kind of like his, hey guys, I'm back, <laughs> statement. Uh -huh. And now we get to see him here at the World Championship. Yeah. I've heard people say that they think he might be easily one of the best ever that, that played the game. I mean, there's an, there is an argument for it, you know. Uh -huh. But I think what's interesting now with all these great matches, that he will have to compete against the likes of Sander, Mochi, Michi, you know. Uh, Victor, all these top players. Let's not forget know. Kazuki, who just played two matches under one. David yeah, Wells and, and Dirk just played at, at two. We got a, you're playing up in that level too. I mean, just it's amazing. Yeah, there's a lot of good players these uh, days. Yeah, and so, the differences are tiny in PR. Yeah, but there's differences over the board though. So what <laughs> do we know about Mario? I don't know, know too much about him actually. I, re I, I I I mentioned all of this about Mario. He's going to start playing in a lot more tournaments. Uh -huh. He has been a money player in the last year. He's really started concentrating on match play. That's a good role, by the way. <clears throat> he's a mathematical genius. Okay, interesting. And a tech guy. Uh huh. And yeah. a nice guy. Okay. I, I really enjoyed talking with him a couple times during this tournament. It seems uh, for the few error rates that I've seen that uh, he he does know how to play. Oh. He, he seems like a very strong player. Actually. Well, you don't beat Mochi by playing bad. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so he's got a 5-2 here, Mario. So let's see if he can figure out if he, to make that hit on the ace. It's not the easiest play to find, but I think the key the key here, no, that's not the deuce. Oh, it could be if you want to play it into the four point. It could be, but if you hit on the ace, making the 11 point is better than sliding over to the nine because a point is a point. You want to make points. But the key here is that Mario is way ahead in the race, which means that he favors racing and blitzing. And he has a stack on the six point, which makes the unstacking hit rather good, actually. And well, somebody in the chat said Peter played twice the entry. That's correct. <clears throat> he lost in the first round and bought back. Yes. He lost to uh, <coughs> Snelling? No. Uh, I don't know who he lost to. I made. Oh. I did comment. Oh, he he lost to Mo Mochi. He lost to Mochi. Mochi yeah. And came back. Came back to make the finals. Yes. Interesting cube decision here. Very small double. Yeah. Very small. He has a blitzing advantage and a racing advantage. So that's two out of three points. And he has threats. So according to chapter three in Masterclass, this should be a double. And great take. Easy take, I would say, from Peter. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would have missed that cube, I have to tell you. Well, I think if you knew the pip count, I, did, I just didn't see enough market losers. I didn't oh, think. Oh, really? He's on the point. Look at, look at all the uh, rows that either hit in the outfield or make a point on the two yeah. point. Well, now we know why I'm sitting here instead of playing. Yeah, there were certainly <laughs> a lot of market losing threats there. Okay. That's actually one of the crucial skills in terms of cube action, you know, to identify threats. Uh huh. And sometimes uh, one of the expressions that I like is, uh, especially to like less experienced players, you want to become a threat detector. Because if you detect big threats, <coughs> You should usually double. I like that because the threats are the are the are the things that are going to give you the hugest, biggest equity swings. Yeah, <clears throat> that's the that's the ingredient for a good cube. Well, yeah. I'm sh he's very happy he cubed now. 
Oh, He's yes. in a very strong position. Don't you have to hit here? Of course. Of course. It's completely mandatory. You don't want to give your opponent a chance to make a double. Yeah. I, I, and if you're going to hit, I'm not sure that's the right two. I'm even surprised he's thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The the hit, the three is the first you play, and then yeah. you think about the two. I don't think it's the right two because you want more builders. Yeah, and and you're mm. right, Phil. Look at this, uh, mm -hmm. eight to three, but you gotta hit. I mean, anything else is just yeah. I mean, first you hit, then you look. Yes, <laughs> that, and if you did that, you wouldn't make, you wouldn't move that two. It's a little bit surprising to me that uh -huh. uh, he doesn't have that idea clear in his mind here. Because yeah. it's very very clear to me that you gotta hit. And the major reason is if you don't hit, there he goes. There we go. But okay. again, I didn't small like mistake. the two. No, small mistake. But it's okay. The idea was to hit. The deuce was a minor detail. But if he played it right, he'd have two builders instead of one yes. direct builder. You're right. He would have covered it. And by he now. would have covered. Yes. Monster difference. Yeah, Peter is fighting to get in here. It's mm -hmm. pretty big if he can roll that three. Oh, he didn't. And now Mario's got him. He's got him right where he wants him. And that's a cover. Okay. Um, we shouldn't rule out Peter here. He does have an ace point game. Winning around 20 something percent, 21, 22 percent here. He's got good timing. But the problem for Peter is that he's losing a lot of gammons here. 59 percent. And even 11 percent uh, back gammons. See, I knew all those numbers except the backgammons. Yeah. I just haven't studied that part of the game enough. <clears throat> you know, when we play over the board, uh, it's not too important to know, right? You know, is it 10, is it 15? It's not one of those things that makes a crucial difference at this moment. So we tend to be good at get estimating things that are important. And it's not too important to know. Uh, it <clears throat> might be later on if Peter's trying mm -hmm. to get off a backgammon. But at the moment, it doesn't really matter for Peter. How many backgammons he loses. Mm -hmm. So what's the idea here for Mario? He He's trying to avoid giving himself some bad numbers. Uh, he he want to... Mm, the problem with... Okay, it does look rather natural, that play. Yeah, okay, good. Double four, interesting. Does he just peel off four men here? <laughs> Usually against the ace point game, you want to uh, clear from the rear. Because the ace point game yeah. is quite good at generating shots. So you tend to play more safe. You might but... peel four You might peel four if your opponent had a worse board and if gammons were in question. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> I actually think the way to win a gammon here is just to not get hit. Yeah, it, right? you, don't so... need to, you don't need to be that aggressive. You got a gammon if you don't leave a shot. Exactly. Double five. It does give Mark a little bit of an awkward structure here with an odd number on the rear point. There are quite a few. Yeah, uh, he needs a two. A two or... He needs a two. He needs a two. He needs to roll a two. There is the shot. And here we see the the lasting equity of the, the ace point game. And Peter wants to roll that deuce. Yeah. He didn't. Oh, does, isn't he supposed to play 24 to 19 here to kind of minimize gammons a little bit? I would play this one as well, but mm -hmm. according to the four ply analysis, you could stay back with a third man. I wonder if you want to use that thir third man to maybe split somehow in the future. I don't know. I would have played Peter's play as well. I would too, because I want to get down to two checkers on the ace so I can do this. Exactly. We have a. This is a, the setup for the coup classique. So now Peter's going to stay back. He's going to risk losing the backgammon, but it's worth it because if Mario rolls, well, he couldn't ace, get off of that anyway. Oh yeah, that's right. So there's not even any question. Yeah, about there wasn't it. So a question. He, he he stays back and he <clears> hopes <throat> Mario rolls an ace, just not double aces, but any other ace. So that's ten numbers will give Peter a double shot. Oh, there it oh, is. Look there it is. That's the cool classic. Now if he hits, he's got a real good chance to win. Yes. So Peter's gonna. Is he gonna hit one of them? He oh, will. he did. And, and now he's gonna do everything in his power to try to fish for that second checker. That's the key to winning. He right. Get so first second. you make a six prime and then you leave blots and get the second checker. Yes. And exactly. then you're a favorite. You can't recube yet, but you're a favorite. Double five. Okay, so I think Peter's gonna roll over the prime at least to the three point here. Yeah. And uh okay, he starts slotting before he has the six prime. That kind of goes against your advice, Phil. What do you think here? Well, with enough checkers in the outfield you can do that. Because if things go wrong and he gets out, you still have you still have ways to get him. 
I think this is the one the way to go. <clears throat> yeah. You can slot the prime from the rear. Uh, I definitely prefer making the three point here, and it seems the computer agrees. Uh, it's just that when you're rolling your prime, each pip you have to roll it forward. There's some risk involved. So whenever you can make that next point in front of your prime, you should usually do it. That's a nice play. Me too. He, he finds the best play actually. Or well, is it like? <clears throat> or it's in, it's up there. It's one of the best plays I think. Okay. Deuce. Now he's highly favored to make the prime, there and he does. Is. Okay, he's not gonna hit on the deuce no. point. Oh yeah, with that one. Yeah, he hit oh, yes. and makes the prime. Nice, nice, nice. Oh yes, good. This is exactly what he wanted, right? Exactly. Ma making that six prime. Then he and got hit. This is perfect. It's perfect. Perfect. Now he needs an ace. Yes. If I rolled a five, six here, I would hit. <laughs> I think he should. I would have hit. Yeah. I would can hit he there. He, can he wait? Okay, he's actually correct, Peter. He's correct. I would have hit. Yeah. But it's a point oh one five error to hit. Yes. So <laughs> I'm not upset about that. So Mario, I would have hit. Marius doesn't have any moves. He figures he had plenty of time to do this, but uh -huh. I uh, never think I have plenty of time. Let's see if Peter. Now you slot the ace. If you exactly. roll a five. If you roll a five, you're going to slot the ace. Please. Absolutely. Or two, I don't think he's going to make the deuce point here, even no. though I just said that you want to roll your prime forward and usually you want to just do that, but not here. He needs to get <laughs> hit in order to win. If Peter doesn't hit that second checker, he's a huge underdog. But if he hits it, he becomes a favorite. So let's see if uh, Peter succeeds, succeeds. That's not a good roll. Mario doesn't want to hit. So that's the third chance Peter has to hitting that guy in the ace. He doesn't do it. Five... Yeah, it's a five. Oh, yeah, that's get, the play. Getting, that's exactly. the play. Just getting those builders ready. Get loose. Uh -huh. There he goes. There you go. This is a. For well, those of you, you're watching that aren't that familiar. I would have brought the two in, which was right because it gives you more flexibility to hit again or slot the ace. Slot the ace. There you uh -huh. go. Uh -huh. You and really want to get hit. Exactly. This is such a funny little edge case of the game where Peter is trying to not cover <laughs> so he gets hit <clears throat> and thereby collecting or f capturing that second piece oh there it is and peter's happy that mario rolls a an ace rather than a deuce let's see the fourth time he tries there it is there it is now if you're mario i was starting to feel depressed yeah <laughs> you're so. here you are you got him almost backgammoned and uh -huh. now you're not a favorite anymore that's right that's depressing yes Okay, Mario makes a point. Let's see if Peter's going to go for the trap play here. I think he will. I think he, he might at some point go for the trap play. I would have. I would have right there. Well, actually, the trap play was a little bit ugly because you would have to play the five, the five and the four all the way. You, you would have to front oh, your checkers. Look what happened. He rolled an he ace. Rolled he had to split. That's a, the last thing he wanted to do. That's why you didn't want to make the deuce point. Ah, that's why. why isn't he hitting with the four? Uh, Come in with the six and hit with the four? It's automatic to me. That's interesting, right? The computer wants to hit no, with the six. No, it likes my play. It hits. It no. hits. Oh, eight to it, two. It, it hits with a six. Why? It, it doesn't care too much about six primes anymore. The five prime is sufficient. Well, so I guess you just want better attacker. Uh, more coverage for both and points. There's, there's a little bit of uh, trap play in it oh, as well. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think Peter's going to cover this, point, uh, this uh, point on the deuce point. I think he's going to let him roll an ace. Uh huh. You, you don't you don't need to play eight to three, Peter. That's a little bit ugly. You're front loading your spare checkers. The deuce is fine. Getting flexibility. You don't need a six prime here. You're already priming him completely. So you need yeah. It's a little bit ugly, right? Oh, actually, look at this. They actually plus. Peter's play comes out at top. Okay, I really. I take back my words. I didn't like that it was either. A great play. Um, usually we don't like front loading yeah. our our spare checkers, but in this case. It's That's what he wanted. He wanted him to crack. Yeah. See, the odds of winning if they're both on the bar are tremendously higher yes. than if he makes if he has an anchor. You you know what the percentage is? No. It's uh, if okay six two is good. If Peter finishes a full closeout with optimal spare checker distribution, he's winning two thirds of the time. So sixty seven percent. And if he, and if the and if he's anchored on the ace or the deuce, it's got to it, be it's way less. less. It's, it's not way less, but it's, it's probably like. 60 or slightly shorter. Oh, really? Uh, see, I, so thought, I thought there was a big well, difference. Pretty well if he can sit here on, yeah, the, on yeah. the ace point. You know? The question is, when is it a recube? I think he has to close the board and take a couple checkers exactly. off. Exactly. You don't have that recube yet. Just uh -huh. because you close him out. Wow. 6-1. Oh, oh, oh. 
<laughs> this is fun. But but it's still I mean the trouble yeah. is not over yet you for, slot, for Mario. You slot and you what's the best slot the eight? Yeah. Look he I mean there's this play here. It's close. I wouldn't have thought to slot the ace. Yeah, it's a little bit ugly. Six okay. five, uh huh. Wait, which one uh makes your home? Come I like easier? this play. I like the hit. I think it's it's think right it's by a mile. Yeah. The, otherwise everything hits. Right. Six three. I think he's gonna close out the ace point here. Yeah, he's going for the close out now. He doesn't need the prime, he's going for the close out. Uh, he doesn't three. get it, but he's okay. I mean, this is very good he's for okay. Mario rather than dancing. Sixes, eights, ones, and fives. There's the eight. Four. There's the eight. The eight hits in the outfield. I don't think Do you switch. See a I don't the think switch you switch. Here. No, no, no switching. It's too risky. You don't want to give him a chance to come right. out. Mm. Good play. Yeah. This is very exciting when when the guy's down to backgammoning you and and then you turn yeah. it around. This wow. Is, that's why they call it the classical coupe. Yeah. In French, coupe, right? Coupe classique. Aha, uh -huh, he hits loose and brings, okay, whatever, which one is uh -huh. better, it doesn't matter much. You, you just got to hit, that's the idea. He you just, go for oh, he, you know, I'm surprised. He's only a 64% favorite now. Yeah. That's surprising. I thought it would be higher. He got to, he's got to get to the closeout. And uh -huh. actually, Peter prefers to cover with an ace because then he will allow himself to get better uh, checker distribution uh -huh. with the remaining spares. Ooh, Mario fights two. back. It's doesn't he know when to give up? <laughs> I always say that to my opponents. Don't you know when to give up? It's a hit, loose hit. That's there you go. Good loose hit here. Yeah. No deuce. Sevens no deuce. and ones. Let's see. Seven. There's a seven. seven. There it yes. is. So now we see the the percentages. Yeah. Showing. He really wanted to cover with the one though. I don't. I think it matters some. That it, it does. You don't want that checker down on the three the, point. He, he, exactly. It, it costs him around a percent or so. A percent. That that you have this uh, slightly awkwardly yeah. placed spare checker. Michi here. taught me that yesterday. Every every pip is about a percent. Uh huh. Oh okay. So. I found out something interesting. Michi knows a lot about the game. <laughs> <laughs> All you guys who write books seem to know something. You're not just writing fiction. Yeah, you got to study a lot to write. I've a been book, pushing you know? your latest book for two reasons. Number one, you're here and I work for you. But <laughs> number two, I read the book and I love it. I learned a lot. Good. I'm um, good. I'm both from both of you. Uh huh. Double five, one, two, three, four. Okay, it's actually a little bit awkward. Look, Peter's yeah, but winning it could chances be, went down here to six. If he dances, is it a cube? No, he didn't dance. No. If he had danced, it might have been a cube. This was a bad sequence for Peter. The double. The, that's a not a poor That's role. terrible. Yeah, that's he, a terrible he, role. He does the right thing. He wants to keep it on the bar he, for as long as possible. Yeah. but it's a terrible role. Mario is a huge favorite. Yes, it's basically. I mean, is he yes. like ninety percent favorite or something? Maybe more. And wow! Yeah, take it off. Take it ah, off, of deal. Yes, I like Why this not? play. Eighty-one percent favorite for Mario here. Wow, that was a super. What unlucky. a swing! It went from sixty-seven percent to to. 10% in three rolls. Yeah, or 19%. <laughs> yeah, 19 in yeah, three rolls. In three rolls. <laughs> yeah. Very unlucky uh, sequence for Peter, and he couldn't do anything about it. Yep. He made the best plays, but yes. Just, and Mario just immediately enters with a five. That's back, Emin. The swings so are I wonder, unbelievable. I wonder what Peter is gonna is thinking about here. I mean, even if Mario rolls an ace, is he gonna hit him? He might, <laughs> but that's a decision. He doesn't need to hit him to win the race. That's the point. But he might be forced to, and yeah. otherwise, if he rolls a one, he that's a that's a proper bagaman decision. For him right there. Yeah, he rolled that yeah. Ace. Now he doesn't get to think about it, but yeah, that now he has to start counting the rays. He has to like make this pip adjustment in these stack and straggler positions, which is very very difficult. Yeah, I read all about that from Walter Trice of the stack and straggler. He really was brilliant. Yeah, and how he how he came, how up, he with came up with those formulas. Pretty good formulas. Okay, so the PRs are starting to look really good. One point yeah, eight yeah. for Peter. And and by the way, Mario's played incredibly well, except for that one big big blunder that he played too quickly. Yes. Uh, if it was if it wasn't for that blunder, there's a way to erase that and see how you would have played. He's playing under two as well, except for um, that one play. Now we have a stag and straggler situation. Uh -huh. um, they're trying to figure out what are the winning chances here. Uh, it seems that Peter is a small favorite. Somehow, oh, did he just roll a double that we yeah. missed? Oh, yeah. I, I didn't notice it. It must have been what a double, <sighs> double five. 
So he, he here here uh, Peter is just trying to get a get a hold of the race. He's counting the race, but the problem is that it's so difficult to figure out the racing chances in in these kinds of positions. We call them stack and straggle. Mm. Yeah. Uh, because Peter has a stack, and Mario is straggling to get home, and it's not just counting the pips. You know, you have to kind of like make adjustments to figure out who's actually winning in this this race. It's not actually straightforward to see who's the favorite here. But I think Peter just took his time yeah. and realized that he's XG made it, you know it was clear it was a huge no double but yeah it, it's kind <clears> of a 50-50. It doesn't position. cost anything to think about it. He's got plenty of time on the clock. Yeah, no double. Uh, Mario needs a big big roll here. If so Mario rolls small, we might see a cube. Okay, that we, might so we have a three roll clear three roll position I, versus what? If it's a three roll three, three roll, roll, it's a pass. Yeah, but Mario might get off in two. Yeah, right? so Mario's better than a three roll here. So for that reason, it isn't a cube, it seems. Um, P Peter is a 55% favorite. There is a lot of volatility here, yeah. but 55% is not enough with three rolls to go. Yeah. So Especially it's if it's a recube. You need to be better to recube than the, than the double. Yeah. And by, say, by not doubling, the other thing is he might be able to double them out next time if things go well. So not a double here. Mario, again, he wants a big roll here. If Mario rolls bad, it's going to be double. Oh, this is bad. This is going to be double bad. pass. That is very, very This bad. is double pass. Yeah, he just lost one or oh, two points there. Yes. That roll. Big, big pass. Yes. And Terrible I'm going to get you a glass of water. You need water? I need some. Please. Good. Thanks. Okay. Right Thanks a lot. Um, okay, so that was a swingy race here. We had uh, Peter uh, losing almost a backgammon, hitting with a coup classique, uh, closing him out, becoming a two thirds favorite. Uh, then a terrible sequence gives the lead to Mario. Ma all of a sudden, Mario is a 80% favorite, and somehow Peter found a way to win this race anyway. So pretty exciting stuff, and the score is 2-1 to 15. 4-1, it's backgammon. So notice that Peter chooses to, uh, to split here. He, he didn't elect for the slotting pay. I, I have seen Peter slot with 4-1 in the past, I think. But uh, maybe he's favoring the split since he's up one point in the race. No water yet. No water yet. Oh, three, three, one from the bar. Uh huh. Yeah, I don't mind that play. Two, one. Uh huh. I, yeah, I, that's not the right idea. You don't want to slot after making the deuce point here. The fact that Mario's got the deuce point it limits his priming potential. The, the slot is a priming play. That's not the right idea. And Mario's up in the race as well. So uh -huh. if he got hit, he would be. That's not a good play. I read that in your book, Mochi's first chapter on priming versus blitzing, that's to know right. how to play those plays. Uh huh. That's right in your new book. Exactly. So this was a blitz formation, right? Yeah. So you're supposed absolutely. to raise blitz. You're not supposed to. You're slot not supposed to try and prime. Yeah. Um, and that's actually very often the way it goes uh, in the middle game. <coughs> One player is ahead in the race, and he's trying to race and blitz. The other player who's behind in the race, he's trying to build a prime. Such a normal and common pattern in the game. <coughs> Play Mario. Or five, not the best, not the best, but immediately. Look how Peter fast gets. he made the right play. Yeah. Oh, and that's a gutsy play. But that's because Peter understands the strategies here. He understands the game plans. He knows he's the one priming. He must play pure. He must play efficient. So he doesn't even hesitate. And Mario, the main reason you know, that play was six, right is there was nothing else. 6-1 <laughs> for Mario? He, yeah. He, he, I don't think, was that correct to make the seven point? He didn't even look at the, the splitting plays, trying to get out of this uh -huh. priming battle. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, blunder, blunder, blunder. Ooh. You should split. Now you're playing a priming battle. Yes. Like, Peter uh -huh. needs to split those back. He even has a better home board. So even, even if you get blunder. hit, you're holding your prime. I'm a little bit disappointed with Peter's move there. I thought he would have a... He played so well uh, up to the, that, leading up to that uh, blunder. Uh -huh. But, uh -huh. I mean, he's still at a PR 2.4, right? So it should <laughs> <laughs> 2.3. But that was an unnecessary blunder. In the priming battles. It's not characteristic of Peter's good, play either. Yeah, it's a good thing to split. Peter might be thinking, I'm facing a blitz formation. Let's not split. Let's not get blitzed. But look at Peter's front position. Mm. He's got the stronger front position. He's got more points made. So it's a good thing to split in a priming battle. Uh huh. You want to get freedom so you don't end look up... Look at this play. I would not have gotten this one wrong. Right. I would have brought two down. I agree. And I agree it's wrong. Um, he plays 13-4. I think... Since we're facing an ace point, the eight point has slightly less value than normal. I see. Um, so you kind of maximize flexibility mm. to build the uh, the deuce point. 
I but, guess giving the one six is not. Yeah, he got it. Yeah. Wow, he did. He yeah. got it right. That's the right play. Yes, it's pretty impressive. Mm. I would have just played two down as yeah, well. Yeah, well, the difference isn't wow. huge. No, but it's pretty cool. I think it's good to keep that guy up there as well for outfield uh -huh. control. You know, all of the all of uh, Mario sixes where he comes here, he keeps that mm -hmm. outfield control so we get a shot. You know what? Actually, I think I would have found that play as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's the crack. The crack in the structure. Just got to go to the two. Oh, oh, this is the right play. Wow. That's a very hard play to make. I, and it's the I, right play. I'm not sure I agree with you, Phil. I, th I think XG, a, you think it's an easy play to find? I think it's an easy play to find. Oh, this not for a, me. This is a priming battle. And yeah. what you want to do in priming battles is you want to maximize checker utilization and purity. And look at this beautiful oh, flat structure. Oh, oh, like, oh, oh, how's that for a roll? Oh, oh wow. my goodness. What is he looking at? He no, he's just, what can you also, what yeah, else yeah. could you look at? Like I guess maybe he was just assessing timing. Wow. Make the seven point and is it too good? I think it's too good. I think it's too good, yeah. Yeah. Too yeah. good means that Way he's gonna good. win so many gammons and not lose very often. I don't think you need to make the seven point here. No, you don't want to get stuck. You no. got bad yeah, you double fours and double fives and you need to use the six. Yeah. The sixes are scarce What's more important? And exactly. The XG agrees with you. Yes. The sixes are scarce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he sees it. Now he sees it. He moves <laughs> the ace, and then he um, yeah. he sees the right six. Yep. yep. Very good. Much better play. Much better play. So by too good, we mean he's going to win too many gammons, and there aren't too many ways to get hurt. Still too good. It's still too good. You're going to make a prime. You're going to make the prime with the six. Yeah. You got it. And he's going to hit loose. Yeah. Very, very risk-free play here, you know. Even uh -huh. if he gets hit, uh, Mario's just And almost no intermediate would have hit loose there. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so I guess, how do we, how can we explain it? Well, look what Mario does when he comes in with a deuce. He's just going to crack. Uh -huh. right? He's just going to crack his front position. That's right. So. And, he, and getting hit helps your timing and makes makes yeah. makes him crack more. Yes, exactly. So getting hit is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Not a bad thing. That's why it was so easy for Peter just to go down yeah. and... Get loose on the loose point. As my friend used to say, that, 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 that that's easy for, for, for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it doesn't really matter what Peter plays here. He's just basically bringing yeah. his checkers around the board and aiming for something like of a nice uh, spare checker distribution over uh -huh. here. He might, clear the, he might clear the seven point out of turn. If he gets a good dice roll to do so, I think you wait till you're a little bit closer you with your other checkers, though. Yes, you do. Before you do that, you do. You do. I agree. You need to be like one step away from bringing yeah. these guys in. Then, yeah. Then you might look. And at you also need be, yeah. clearing play, early clearing play. So, now, for instance, if he rolls like a three-two, I think the players would play something like this. Even three-one. Two-one. He could even do it now. Uh. Yeah. An argument for not doing it, I think, and that's what we're seeing here, is that Mario doesn't have any timing left, so he's going to crunch. Uh -huh. Therefore, look at what Peter does. He's killing sixes. Yes, he's slowing killing himself sixes. down. He's slowing himself down because he wants Mario to crunch right. first. That's why he put this checker here. The other reason you put it there is if you leave the checker on the eight point and later you roll a six, you have to go to the deuce. Look at this. And every he's checker you put on the deuce point is bad. Does, he does it again. He's slowing his own clearing down by killing his sixes. Rolling a six is like killing a, rolling a zero. Yeah, so he gets to keep the prime longer and have Mario crunch. <laughs> yeah, because the more Mario crunches, the safer it is for Peter to mm -hmm. bring his checkers in. Very good technical play. Look at this. Oh, that I wouldn't do. Again, he does. Oh, really? He keeps the prime one more roll. Wow. He, he wants I, him to crack. And it was points. right. I would have missed right. that one. He wants him to I've crack. always been told it's so good to bring the checkers into the high points. It was a beautiful role to do that. But it's a timing play, right? Yeah, because, but look what happened. Yeah, but he still has crunching numbers here, Mario. There's one of the crunching numbers. This is exactly what Peter was hoping uh, for. That's that's not a real nice checker play in a, in, <laughs> when you're playing for $28,000 difference. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't be fooling around that way with the checkers. One, these guys are so good, they know what's going on. Yeah. One, two, three, four. I think he can just be aggressive here, given the fact that Mario is a little bit crunched. But he could also just clear from the rear. So the computer. I would have cleared from the rear. The computer wants to clear from the rear. I would have well. cleared from the rear. Because look, actually, I'm not even sure he gets a faster bear off by bringing checkers off, because this is a fast bear off position. All yes. the checkers are ready to be peeled off. 
and no shots except for 6-5. That's the worst roll for Mario. And I shouldn't say 6-5 out loud, right? <laughs> there it is. Oh, oh. Double three. Okay, one. Uh, now he can he can be aggressive. Yeah, yeah, just get them off. Go for the gammon and the back gammon. Because the, because the opponent's board is He's still, still weak. He's crunched over here, yeah. so you can just be super aggressive in your bear off. That's not, no, that would be a waste of time to... To play. You want them fast off, you yeah. know, even if you get hit, then you have moment. No, oh. that was a, a yeah. bloody poor play, actually. Why, why did he make that play? It's it, a, it's if his a, opponent had a four or five point board, you'd make that play, but the board is crunched. Yeah. I and, mean, and he's punished for it anyway. He's punished for it. Now when he gets hit, he has less men off. Yep. And, uh, and he gets hit. Yeah. He's going to regret not having two more checkers off. It's funny how that move just, uh, you know... I don't mind people making mistakes and blunders, and I think Peter is an exceptional player. I kind of look up to him in some ways. So I was a little bit disappointed. <laughs> he disappointed me a little bit with that barrel. Yeah. Move, you know? Maybe, uh, they're, maybe they're not playing for enough money. <laughs> <laughs> so do we know the price distribution here? Yeah. Is it 58,000 euros? Uh, there it is right there. Wow, 56,000 euro first price and 28,000 euro second price. This is high stakes. Yeah. This is high stakes, This guy. is more than I usually play for. I usually play for 25 cents a point. Is that? So Peter has a tactical decision here. He's I just, do not slot the ace. You could get hit, not? come back, hit another checker. Yeah, but it's... it's I mean, and it's right, and you, I would not do it. The, the key here, the idea here is you, you slot it so you can quickly make it, and then you don't have that liability in the future. Then you will ah, never get more checkers hit. If you can I just see. quickly make the ace, ah, then he's good. You know? that's, that, was, that was missing from my brain. Yes. And it seems here that he was not really under so much attack that he could he had the time to do it. And oh, you he, make the point? That's interesting. That goes against my grain there. Yeah, yeah, that's especially with a blot down here. Yes. I mean, it's not even a problem if you get hit. You still get yes. a shot. Yes, I want to get hit. If the, uh, that was weird. Okay. He hits. He hits. He a hits. Triple shot. One. Maybe you make... Yeah, I think this is good play because you're, block, you're blocking double sixes from progressing. So that was probably a good play from Mario. Uh -huh. there, look, Peter... Had the ace point made. It's closed. No more checkers. I see. Get lesson get learned. Up. That's a lesson that I that I needed to learn. Yeah. Well, you hit loose and then look for the two. Um, Don't you? I mean, how can you not? Yeah. You hit loose but and the, then you the decide is, whether to remake the, the point the or not. I was hesitating a little bit here. Is it, hitting loose is very often just an instinctually best when you're playing containment game. But the containment game here is so poor for Mario that he's actually more in damage control mode. So sometimes there are plays where you shouldn't play to win. You should just play to not lose a gamma. But it seems here you should hit, you know, because... I you mean, still have you, enough wins. You, you have enough and, wins. And not that many gammons. Exactly. You, you actually have As a 12. matter of fact, you can see the wins and gammons are even. Yeah. And if you understand the game, gammons are only worth about half as much. Yes. The gammon value is about 0.5. Yes. Somebody asked me about that yesterday, but I can't give that lesson right now. But you need to know gammon value all the time that you're playing yeah. what how how much a gammon cost you compared to how much it costs to winning and losing the game and usually it's only half as much that, that's that's good, the right play that's a good play the very, right play very well played mario and you see he took his time you know he yes. kind of went through the same process as i did you know it's not obvious that you just hit automatically uh but he figured he he, he spent his time oh wow, great roll wow great great roll yeah, i guess his winning his is equity winning. just jumped 25 percent here if he makes the right play yeah 25 percent. there's the cube not too good anymore i mean it could still be too good but i think this is a pass because peter can still win a gammon here nope it's a take it's a it's big a, take ah no look at peter's game and it was a Down great cube look how fast he gave that cube too Yes. That was amazing. He knew ahead of time. Yes, he knew ahead of time. As soon as he saw that double six, he knew he had a cube. I think uh, the hot choice here is on Mario uh, because my quick one ply evaluation here, it actually fooled me because I knew that the winning chances was around the 25% mark. But I thought Peter was winning a handful of gammons and uh -huh. it just isn't. You know, you look at the gammon rate, 1%. That's right. right. So if, if Mario can figure that out, yeah. then he can figure out that this is a take. By the way, that oh, making the one point gained him an extra about 7% from what I recall. Like it's, because it's he made the play that you said was right. Yes. He's got 7% more winning chances than if that ace point was open. If the ace point is open, then you always have the risk of 
getting one more check of trapped because the other guy can come in on your ace point and then you might be supposed to expose yourself. No, but but even if you don't have any more hitting, just with no contact in a race, the ace point open here cost him about 7%. I would take the under. I think it's it's crucial. Uh -huh. Seven percent. Not that seems, much. It seems a little bit too uh, too much. Well, when I do, when I use the, I would say four four or five percent. Okay. In it, it it does cost him an extra roll, oftentimes, right? When you try. It's to an get, extra roll. It, it, but Ooh. sometimes it does. Yeah, maybe. In a containment so. game, I you know the rule of four, you double when you have four fewer checkers off. Uh -huh. If he has the ace point open, I double when I have three fewer checkers off. Five fewer checkers off. It's one more checker. That's right. You're right. So it's it's a whole it's a whole roll. You might even be it might be seven percent. Yeah, it's a whole roll, but it's all because of the play that I would have missed of slotting that ace point. Uh, so it's good not just in he terms wouldn't have a double here if that ace point was open. I think he might not have a double. He might not have a double. No. Yeah, it's right. it's that big a difference. Yeah. Huge. So Those it little. It wasn't just to safeguard yourself from getting more men trapped. Yeah. it's also a racing thing. Exactly. Yeah. And I would have missed it. I'm not going to admit that anymore because I won't <laughs> miss it anymore. Now I've learned my lesson. This is such a tough decision for Mario. There's well, I have learned more do, doing commentary yeah. than I have in years in the, just this this week. Okay, so that was a passes. big, big take. Though. Yeah, but uh, it's such a tough decision. It's a First, tough you got to figure out the race. Then yeah. you got to figure out, okay, are there gammons here or not? And it's a stack and straggler. There's, there are yeah. gaps. I mean, that, nobody has that as a reference position, is what you're exactly. saying. Exactly. It's nobody has that. Tough. He had he, he, actually he had twenty four and a half percent winning chance. But yeah. He, I mean, how can you figure that out, right? That's it might right. Twenty one percent. It That's might be twenty seven percent. So we see we've well, got the world champion in the room, Sandra Lilov. He's just. Thanks for just walking in there and interrupting uh, mm -hmm. the players. And yeah. <laughs> I wonder what he's saying. Well, that's Sanders. Sander played without a clock the other day. He, Sander does what Sander wants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're the world champion and and a partner, he, you're, you're the boss. Yeah. <laughs> so I had a real good in, uh, conversation with Kit Woolsey about this. A very, very small mental error can make a huge PR error in the cube. Much more so than on checker play. So when you uh -huh. see a big, big cube error, it isn't really necessarily a very big mental error at all. Yeah, because cubes are difficult for humans. Right? That's but, right. Uh, but we can, and they, we can well, the equity off. swing of a of a cube mistake is often so much bigger than the equity swing of a checker mistake. Yes. So p you get you get p that's why we we should have we do have separate PRs for cube and checker, and it's good to separate the two. I forgive oh, my students if one. they if they played three PR worse on their cube than they do on their checkers. Yeah, it's a completely different game. Much fewer decisions and much more equity. Yes, uh, huge. Swinging. And uh, people say, what's more important, good checker play or good cube play? Well, in match play, it's both. I don't I, I don't know how to separate the two. Yeah, exactly. It's both. You got to have both. Yeah. You're not in money play, I'll go with the cube being more important. That's where I see maybe in the Chouettes, most money lost. Maybe yeah. in Chouettes, because you have oh, other Chouettes. people playing your checkers most of the time. Right. But, uh, in Chouettes, that's where you're going to make and win and lose money. Yeah. But in, in match play, they're both cri both they're equally cool. critical. Yeah. All right. We so, have a prime versus prime again. That's yeah, pretty cool. I yeah. love prime versus prime. To me, side. that's the hardest checker play, though, to play. Yeah, for me as well. They're so volatile. They're so tactical. Yeah. Well, you just missed it that when Mario made a monster uh, blunder. But I think uh -huh. it was a point three blunder on a checker play in a prime versus prime, uh -huh. and he did it quickly. Uh, is this a cube? This could be a cube. This could be a cube. So the timing looks pretty even, but this is a problem for Peter. Those stacks here. You're yeah, right. It's a big too, cube. It's too inefficient in terms uh -huh. of uh, checker utilization. Uh -huh. You need your checkers to form flat concrete structures not to be uh, underutilized mm -hmm. on top of points mm. and and we have the threats right you want to be a nice threat double detector. nice very, double. Very good double and a big very take good. yes almost all prime versus primes are takes unless they're really awkward looking yes. or there's lots of gammons that's the question the is the double that's not the best role here oh no. interesting look he, he needs to go for the blitz attack very good 14 men in the zone what all a, a sudden, great play mario had kind of like a timing disadvantage you know so he goes for the blitz attack that was a beautiful play. I'm Very not sure I would have done that at all. Very good play. You do it because of the blot too. Yes, it's a tempo hit. So you want to yeah. you want to put him on the bar before he covers the blot here, and that gives you time to pick up that other blot. And you you. you I mean, if you have a more advanced priming formation, it's often a very good idea to switch it into a blitz attack. Now it's too late. Now Peter got the five prime, and it's going to be much harder for yeah. for Mario to. Uh, 
Mario did the right thing, but Peter got lucky and made that no, made Peter, that three point. Peter that has was the big. timing advantage now. Does he slot? Uh, I mean, it's it's definitely in the realm of possibilities. Is it correct here though? No, it's I wrong. It's wrong yeah. by wrong by. It seems about 4%. that here he, you don't want to slot because when he creeps up with an ace, you want to attack him. You don't want to be on the bar. I see. Uh, this one, how, no, again. Oh, sorry, that's that's Mario. Look, Mario is trying to play a very nice play. Beautiful play. He needs to play pure and efficient. That's absolutely maximize, the right play. Maximize checker utilization in a priming battle. I'm impressed how fast he made this play, too. <laughs> now Peter is considering doppling. Wow, they're so, uh, they're so volatile, right? They swing back and forth, these yeah. priming battles. Peter dances, which might not always mm. be a bad thing, you know? No. Wow, look at this. I mean, Peter's a favorite here. It Peter's takes an average of six rolls to get out. From, yeah. the, from the two point there. 5.6 rolls to be accurate. 5.6? Yes. Okay. And that's uh, in the appendix of from basic, basic to badass. I, I always remembered six because it's easier for me, but 5.6 is. <laughs> yeah. So in that case, he's favored to crack and not favored to get out. Yes. But, you know, it happens in one roll if he rolls a 1 6. What are they talking about here? Peter's time is click. It, the clock is, is ticking. He's touching the cube. He's trying to explain something here. So Peter's a favorite, but they may Mario be they may be games. talking to the transcriber. I, my be, guess is that's no, what they're doing. They, they, no, okay. He's just hit the clock. I think Antoinette is right. He's decided. He, he it's not an automatic forfeit of his turn. You know, he has a cube action. That's and, what and there it there it is. I, I think he just lost his market actually. No, no it's big a take. take. Big take. You know what, and then look how fast he dropped. Look, you know what, Phil? I would have dropped. It's the match score. It's the, oh, it's the match score. I I would have dropped. I'm just I'm, I'm yeah. being very honest here. It's that looked like a drop, but I wouldn't have done it that fast. A two point difference in the match score on a recube that swings the decision. This we was we saw that pass. we this saw that yesterday. It was a monster decision that swings uh -huh. it. Right. I, I had no idea that would matter that much in this long a match. He, Mario should have thought a little bit harder. Oh, yeah. One, you know? But, it w I mean, again, Mario has a, such a tough cube action. I mean, two times, two games in a row, he's been challenged. Yeah, but why not think a little longer about it? I These agree. are big decisions. It is. It's a four cube. But, I mean, if he if he was already made up his mind that this is a big yeah. pass, you know, nothing we could do mm -hmm. or say to make him change his yeah. mind. But I would only make a decision that quickly if I hedged. <laughs> that would be my argument for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, five two. Uh, Mario is unable to split the back checkers. No, that's not, not, uh, okay. It's not too bad. Oh, it's not too bad. Okay, I, you don't really want to uh, strip the midpoint. You don't really want to leave a, sh a seven to hit. It's too many hitters. Uh huh. Um, I guess there is a middling play where you do leave mm -hmm. the sevens, but then you slot in here instead, so you get to keep the spare on the mid. Uh huh. This play wasn't bad. The point oh eight. Um, Wasn't bad. So now Peter is considering the double, and the, what makes Peter's position strong is the fact that he's winning the anchor war. Look at how the anchors are placed. Uh -huh. It's just a tremendous timing and priming advantage that he has an advantage. And he has anchor. three Vinner board points yeah. versus two. He's, he's got he's, a good priming formation going yeah. on over here. And, and he's he, winning the hitting battle, too, with three Good three decision, versus by two. the way, that he didn't double. Yeah. It was correct. Very good. He's playing accurate backgammon. Now we have another cube decision here. And there's gonna come, yeah. This one was, it is, this was easier. You know, you have the market losers, mm -hmm. that the big doubles that run, the four two, the double two that comes here, and even the, all the bad numbers of Mario, where Peter just rolls something neutral and Mario rolls a double four or double five or uh -huh. double six or something, and, and completely destroys. Oh, well, I can see the double. I'm, I was, I'm worried about whether I would get the take right. Yeah, um, it's a clear take, but I'm not sure I would take it. Do you see a path? To winning this game oh yeah sure you roll a three and split right away that's typically a tell that you should take it in five you know if the path to winning is not too hard to visualize uh -huh. usually you should just take it in five. i call it the light at the end of the tunnel do i see a yeah, do, do i see a light uh-huh and i think we both see some light here from mario right he can if he can roll a three soon he split yeah or even like okay he rolls a one then he rolls another one then he plays a 23 point game uh -huh. maybe peter rolls a something weird where he can't really get these guys free maybe peter r runs with one of them mario attacks and traps him behind a five prime you know there there are many ways for mario to win okay here. see for me it's easier to see the double because i can count market losers yeah. easier than i can count the path that's right that's the, the i think the, the take decision is harder the take decisions are always harder. yeah I see the doubling decision you need to be within a range to yeah. take you have to be 
you have to be either either right or wrong. Yes. You're either over or under the take point. I think the key is uh, with the doubling decisions, you have you can identify threats. That's a, like something visual you can, uh -huh. you can cling on to. You, oh, that's a threat. That's uh -huh. a trigger. I want to double. But on the take pass side, it's like figuring out which sugar cube weighs more. You know, they look identical, <laughs> but which one, is, which one has yes. more... Uh, mass so you agree with me? It's harder to decide in many positions whether to take than it is whether to double. 100%. Well, we know Woolsey's law says you double if he's not sure. Yeah, so yeah. all you have to do is be not sure yeah. about the take to have the cube. <laughs> That's right. And I, I think I still think Woolsey's law is the best is is the number one tool in backgammon. This is a great example of Woolsey's law. Probably. Yeah, right? yeah. You, you're not sure whether Mario has to take or pass. Yeah, so of course I, you should double. I don't have to worry about whether he has takes or passes. Very okay. good. This Very one, good take. This one, he got it right. Very good take. Yeah. After a little bit of uphill battle. Well done. Those, uh, take passes. And there's a path. Yeah. That three doesn't look as good anymore. Deuces. That's pretty good. Well, that's a good that's, blocking yeah, number. That's good. I mean, the take just got yeah. got much much stronger. Not a... Ah, we're Ooh. running here. I think we're running. I think we're Ooh. running. You're running? I think so. I'm scared to death. I might, I might be slotting. Um, wait a minute. <laughs> this is a big decision. Here we got to think. Here we got to think, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So my intuition was right, but again, if I was there over the board, I would not play it fast. This is a crucial decision. Yes. There, there's always risk. This is a big play. But you your gut to... reaction was right by yes. a mile. Because it's a destructive play. All other moves were, were destructive. We're uh, not going to slot. We're already winning the prime yeah, battle. Slot is very bad play. Yeah, yes. Very uh, bad play. You don't want to risk getting a third man behind a five prime. Okay. And that stuff. Uh, the key here is uh, the the lack of attacking potential here for uh, for Mario. Uh, he doesn't have. I mean, when Peter's running, it's not that easy for Mario to point on him. Yeah. You know? The threes uh, and fives all leave blots in the outfield and lose points. Another yeah. feature here is the fact that Peter's actually improving his priming by making the ten point. Oh, you know, it's yeah, it's part of a prime. It's part of the prime, which means it's structure. You can create structure here. I think that's actually my first, uh, my gut re instinct that's like, wow, we can make, create structure in our prime rather than make a destruction. Right, this play. is a great lesson, and, and you, you spelled it out perfectly. You have a gut reaction, then take your time and make yes. sure, see if it's right. And, and Peter <laughs> did exactly that. Right? Yeah, he, he very good. He went through somewhat of a similar process here. This is not a good roll. Are we going to see the ultra pure play here? He might be tempted to make the ultra pure play. This one, you know, the ultra pure double slot. Wow. Uh, because if he doesn't, he's basically resigning. Yeah. You know, making the deuce point is... Yeah, uh, it, it turns out to be wrong because of the gammons, though. Yeah, it, exactly. Too many gammons. Double match point, the pure play is correct. Yeah, yeah wow. Point. But in, in a... In a in double match point, I'm not even sure I, I'd find that play. But in gam when gammons are into the mix, yeah. it's too big. But I hope he looks... Yeah, he looks at it. You he's know? looking. He's looking at it. It's the, it is the best way to win the game. And by the way, when you're losing five to one, that may have a, uh, it make, make make you be a little bit more work, you know, more yeah. inclined to work for the win. That's right. That's right. Um, very good play by Mario. Yeah. He didn't let the temptation. We're seeing become. very good plays by both of them. This yes. is a great match with great players. So here, Peter's gambling a little bit because he's leaving a three six. He's leaving a three six to hit him. Uh huh. But uh, is it, the question is whether it's worth it to get that. The extra spare is, you, you you want to use the six over there yeah that's why the computer wants to just clear it that you don't need the, the you don't need a builder here you, you're using the six yeah. on the other side of the board depending so, on what he rolls maybe you're not <laughs> if he if he cracks you might not need that six but that's why it's only two percent difference yeah, exactly that, that's a good point though right but this is the the principle of diversification uh <clears throat> if if peter has a Builder here on the ten point, it's actually duplicating his own wolf because he wants to use a six over here. So why not? He can't even use this this six or six to to, to build over here in the four point. He wants to diversify. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's taking his time, you know. Look at the, uh, the. I mean, the the previous decision from Peter whether to run or not. That's such a big decision. That's something you want to spend time bang on. Uh -huh. Here's like, okay, don't spend too much time bang. You know, it's not. Uh, this is not a crucial decision. You know, this is a tactical detail. Yeah. Which one? You, whether to get the extra builder he, and, and leave that. He spent that one joker. Time bang. You know, coming up on two minutes of his time bang. 
on this particular move? Would you know over the board that the de decision wasn't that big a difference? I, I think so, because okay. it's kind of like, okay, uh, if we play the flexible move, this one, yeah, it's more flexible, but we're diversifying, oh, oh sorry, we're duplicating our own sixes, and we're leaving a 3-6. And, uh, okay, let's play safe. We don't have quite the flexibility, but it's safe, so, I mean... Ah. It, it's and he found the right play. Sorry. He found the right he play. He found the right play. He found the right play. It's not one of those decisions where you're like, okay, that's a crucial decision. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's a pretty good roll here. Uh, the blitz to escape idea from Mario. Mario could even win the prime battle now. Wow, Mario is in this game. He's almost 50-50. 3-5 three, and 3-6 three, would be pretty nice. Yeah, he wants to roll. Oh, that's not good. He want really wanted to roll small here. I don't think he should make the three. What about slotting? Oh, this is tough. He could make the three point. But I want to block his sixes here. I want to slot. I want to slot and then play eight to four. Oh yes, look at this. It's a clear play. It's a clear. No, 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 no. no you can still win the priming battle here, Mario. No, that's you a monster can, blunder. Can, monster blunder. Peter is running out of timing. The key is Mario wants to keep blocking his sixes, so Peter is forced to play eight to two with his sixes. Okay, okay, yeah, he's going to go back. That, that's the normal idea, but in a priming battle, you got to look out for tactics. And the key here is not to block the threes, it's to block the sixes. That's what forces Peter to play this ugly six over here on the other side of the board. Wow. So you can slot. You can, you, and here's difficult to make the six prime because you need a one. With the other play, you actually have better flexibility and diversification to make the six prime next time. Let's have a look at it, Mario. This Come is on. why I think prime versus prime checker plays are so hard. There's so much to think about here. This is the play, or actually, let me put it like this. This is the play. Uh-huh. This is the play. It's I, I see the logic now after I see the play and hear your explanation. You want to block the six. You got you to gotta look over at the other side of the board, figure out which numbers are cracking numbers. Which numbers do I need to block over here on this side of the board? Right? Yeah, okay. He, he makes the human play, I would say. Um, it's the wrong idea. Yep. Um, and it's yeah, going to cost him. Yeah, now it, Peter has a cost him. big, 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 big advantage here. You, you hit? Uh, yeah, do you hit? Do you, you just... do, you do. I, again, over the world, this is a tough decision because it kind of depends on timing. Uh, there's a, the, the thing about the hit is that you still have that idea of the hit and hit blitz to escape, you know, but it's so difficult to escape. And it, he may be at the point where he's saying, I'm probably losing, let's not get gammoned. Hitting leads to more gammons, possibly. Yeah. Um, Knowing when to give up is a very hard thing in backgammon. <laughs> yeah. When to just give up but and say, I don't want to get gammon. He's not necessarily giving up here. He's just trying to win the game with priming rather uh -huh. than blitzing, you know? Yeah. Blit rather than blitzing and racing, he's trying to win back. Now he's trying to blitz and race, you know, the hit and split. Uh -huh. um, but again, ooh, oh, big roll, double hit, double hit, hit two. You got to play pure here. Hit two, yeah. sure. Peter knows it. Sure. It, purity is more important than flexibility here. You but need Mario's not dead. Structure. Peter's got to roll a six. This is uh, a very strong position for Peter. Wow. Now Peter has a decision here. Do we swap and just blitz him? Yeah, we do. Of course we do. Yes, of course. You have all the time in the world to roll a six here. You win so many gammons. There it is. No, oh, no, that's the wrong guy. Oh, was Mario. oh I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or two, okay. okay. Peter's playing really, really well in this game. Four point, uh, one point seven so far. PR. Uh, I think Mario has played quite well as well, but Mario has been. He had he like had two the, major blunders. Yeah, that's the top. He, he had a couple of cube errors too. But look at this. He's playing under five with three major blunders that we saw. That shows you how good the rest of his play is. Yes, he's played very well, and he's been facing some very tough yep. cube actions. Yep. Uh, that's why his PR is a little, slightly higher than maybe he deserves. But, uh, yeah, Peter's Peter seems to be switched on. Um, he was a little bit shaky, Peter, in the, his match against Mochi. He had a little bit of Game 1 syndrome. He uh -huh. started out very poorly. I wish you'd have seen him. I wish you'd have seen him in the cube action against Victor. I did the commentary. They were some of the most complicated eight cubes I've ever seen, wow, and he got okay. them both right. Wow! And they were really. I mean, talking uh -huh. eight cubes. Uh huh. They're That's very weird. hard to calculate what your what your doubling window and doubling point is, and yes, really complicated 
sit, I mean, the expert sitting here said, Michi could said he couldn't figure that out over uh -huh. the board very easily. I uh -huh. mean, it was that tough. And Peter nailed it uh -huh. against and Victor. seeing him playing at a 1.6. Yeah. Yeah, he basically made one blunder so far, uh, Peter, the, the, the move where he didn't split. Wow, sixes. That makes him... No, he's still an underdog to save the gammon, but it's very close. Very close. He was basically losing four points here. Double deuce is not bad. It's a lot of crossovers. One, two crossovers, three crossovers. So not bad. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't mm -hmm. change the whole a whole lot. Or two. Mario runs to roll something big. Still fifty percent gammons. Yes. Not this bad. helps. This two is crossovers. good. This is very good actually. Do you bring it in or, or cross? I don't think it, we want to waste any pips here. So just and you're play. right. You're right. Just you don't play. want to waste any pips. Yeah. So just play. Bringing uh, it in, waste one pip. Exactly. And one pip could be the whole difference of the match. <laughs> mm. Good play. Um, I you got it right. I mean, it's, yeah, it's uh, the gammon is, is down to forty-two percent here. Oh, wow. oh, now he needs now he needs double five or double six. Ninety-four percent. 94.5%. Yep. There it is. The game. That was a big roll for Peter. That was huge. He's up 9 1. This is huge. Huge. At 9 to 1, Super probably, high stakes probably close, to, close to 10%, 90%, uh, I think. Uh huh. 80, 90%. Wow. You take a break. Still no water. Still Wish no I water? Get bottle. Yeah, he's not even there. A good bottle of water or coffee. I need I need to keep my throat liquid or else by the end of the day I'm gone. Let's see if we can get some. Thank you for coming. This is great to have you here. Yeah, yeah no, it's very good. My now, why don't you use this? My, we're, by the way, we're streaming. Uh -huh. I want to ask you a question. I had two people email me. They're having problems with Galaxy. Yes. Everybody I know plays Galaxy and they got a problem right now. The, What's going on? Yes, I can What's say going this on? is a perfect time to say well, yes. what's going on. So yesterday we launched the new version to Pagamon Galaxy. Talking to the main, main. Yes, yesterday we, we, lost, uh, we launched the new version of Pagamon Galaxy. And um, the, what happens is because you're relaunching a completely new app to the URL, pagamongalaxy.com, it takes time for some internet IP addresses to be able to connect. It, sometimes it happens immediately, sometimes it can take even up to 72 hours. And there's just nothing we can do about it. It's an internet thing. So hopefully now, we already had like almost as many matches yesterday on the new version as we usually have on the old version. So it seems that people are adopting it well. We do have a little bit of complaints on Facebook because of, uh, of course there was a lot of people who, who uh -huh. loved the old version. But you know, this is a business uh, decision we had to make. Uh, we want to. It's kind of like when Apple changed the charger. You know, okay. uh, the new version has so many new features. We don't want to hold it back no more. Now okay. it's time to let the new version. So the back. answer is be patient. If you can't get in, yeah, keep trying. You'll get in soon. Yes, that's the and, answer. And yes. it's not Galaxy's fault. It's <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the it's the internet's it's fault. It's the internet's it's fault. Blame thing, the internet. It's this thing called DNS. Yeah. Uh, Blame Tesla. He, he's the guy that started all this problem. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um, okay, if you guys have any questions you can uh, let us uh, send the questions in the YouTube stream Me yeah I have never have asked a question to Galaxy where I didn't get an answer back very quickly <clears throat> the customer service is fantastic yeah and I think it's just because we're part of the community we're not some weird entity yeah sitting it's because I'm talking to Wilson I'm talking to you yeah. I know the people and they're not and you're nice people you care yeah yeah you can even just text yeah. us on messenger you know? galaxies I think yeah. the combination of galaxy with XG's uh, interface in there it's just the best thing that's happened to online backgammon yeah. by the way backgammon grew tremendously during covid i think because of galaxy it's i think galaxy did it i think so congratulations too. on uh, what you did uh, we, there we have a lot of guys coming here yeah. uh, at the world championship saying uh well we started playing on galaxy that's and right now we're here you know? that's right that's well, amazing we had, well, we had two guys here we have the app by the way for for the new version you can see we got new board colors we got all these cool board colors uh -huh. we've got the legendary avatars here you see mochi so you can actually get to play mochi and because of the new matching system System, it actually allows for these uh, advanced players, not necessarily grandmasters, to play against Mochis, the likes of Mochis, uh -huh, uh -huh. Sander. Can you pick your opponent? Can I play with a friend? You can play with a friend, yes, and you don't have to find him in the lobby. You can just send him a four-digit code and the match starts immediately. Oh, that's so, amazing. I didn't know that. Yeah. 
Um, I'll be doing so that a lot more. You should try it out. So the, what the thing? Well, I do it with my students. My students and I meet on Galaxy all the time, and we talk about it. We play on casual speed, and we uh -huh. talk about the plays while, you know, on the on the phone or, or or on Zoom while we're playing on Galaxy. This should make it even easier for you guys. You just oh, create wonderful. the game as a private game, send him the code, and you don't have to find each other. In wonderful. The the, what what was missing in the new version was the web application. That's what we have now. So now the new version is a unified server with mobile and web. It's the same account. So uh -huh. you, can, you can play you can play on the web and you can just go to bed or go to the bathroom and review the match on your phone you know so that's we've Fantastic. got the improved analysis module with the well arrows. i must tell you i don't review the match on my phone i always download it to my computer because i really want to run it you know in a deeper level but, but you know i, I review do? every match though. you know what you can do now phil oh. if, if you pay the monthly subscription you can get xg plus analysis on all moves which means that you don't have to download it. How much is that going to cost me? Well, if you want four ply analysis, you get other features as well. But the four ply analysis and all moves is seven ninety nine per month. Uh -huh. If you want the full that we call the Star Plus, which is quite extensive, it costs a lot on the server side uh -huh. because XG Plus is heavy on all moves, right? But if you want it, you can get it, and that's nineteen ninety nine a month. But then you know what? all blunders and uh, every single nineteen ninety nine a month is going to save me four hours a month at least <laughs> of the my time yeah. to take it down and run it. Uh, I, I'll give you the payment right now, <laughs> and I've got uh, and I've got forty students that I'm working with right now that'll yeah. do the same. You, We're you all doing it. You don't have to necessarily. Oh, uh, it's nothing. That's yeah. nothing. And, and it's not compared to what I have to do to to do it the old-fashioned way. That's right. Of downloading it and putting it on my computer and running it. Now I won't have to. You don't. You won't have to. And you can even just share the match link, uh, and other students can review right. other students' matches if they just have the match link. That's great. You know, whenever I play well, I share the match link. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which doesn't happen that often. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. You're doing Good. wonderful things with it. I love it. Thanks, Phil. Thanks a lot. And while so, we're mentioning it, uh, I think you saw a flash up. The back, the uh, Galaxy has a great store with a lot of very excellent products and books and and the the boards that you that we have Monte Carlo. I think one of the best things that happened. Well, there's a lot of best things that happened since Mark took over Monte Carlo. The Having Arda here, having Bill and Tara and, and me and the crew that you brought on is great. But the boards, oh, I used to hate the boards here. Uh -huh. I used to bring my own board. Most Many of us did. Yes. They had these cheap plastic boards. We're playing in the world championship on this uh -huh. crap. And now we have these gorgeous wooden boards yes. on every single table. Yeah. And, and that, I know that wasn't cheap. That it, was a major expense. It, it was, you know, 150. Yeah. Handmade, each, each. handmade board. Yeah, I know. You know. So uh, that, that, that was a big cost, yeah. but huge. We, we, we have a great. It, it uh, made it classy. I agree. Everything about it's classy. Exactly. Bill? Sander will not spend his time. Tomochi? Ah. They wouldn't take the second. Okay. So you're saying Sander lost Sander again the second time he's out? Set. He's out. He can't win the championship again. Uh -huh. You know, I, w I was made a, I was made a fool at the beginning, and I made this announcement. There are I counted twelve world champions in this tournament, and I was wondering what are the odds of one of them repeating. And after the first round, almost all of them were lost. <laughs> they were almost all gone it's, after the first round. Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't believe it. I, more than half of them. I think eight of them, eight of the twelve lost in the first round. <laughs> this is one of the stories, one of the narratives of this year's tournament. All of the favorites lost in the first round. Yeah. This is so long. Uh, Hussein just made a post about it. It's it's crazy. Like all It's of crazy, them, yeah. It so, happens. Uh, well, I think yeah. also a couple of stories. We have a couple of people who are, who are newcomers, people uh, like Galen Hall, who has only been playing for a few months, yes. who beats Sander. Uh, yes, he played much worse. He played at 12, but 12 wasn't that bad. If you, his cube play was great. Is he? You know, this is a guy who's been playing for just a few months. It wasn't Galen who, who, who beat Sander. Oh, I'm sorry. It was, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh the guy from the Mind Sports. But for Mind Sports. Yes. Yeah. He, he beat Sam. Yeah, Galen Hall. Gal Galen made it to the finals of the uh, Monte Carlo. That's right. He uh, he got the double match point with Kazuki. Yes. Is what happened with Galen Hall. In, in the semifinals with Kazuki. Open. So we've got a couple of people who've only been playing for a few months. And but he said he just played on Galaxy. You know, he, that's where he... he all he did. Game. Galaxy yeah. and, and, and Extreme Gammon. Yeah. Oh, over and over. He, he put in the hours. And the other fellow, he, he, he took lessons from Tim Cross. So he had some... He had, he had a teacher. Uh -huh. There's no faster way to learn this game if you can afford it than a good teacher. Yes. And I I mean that even if I if I wasn't a teacher, that's how I learned the game. I was playing for a lot of money 
and didn't know the game at all. And Kit Woolsey, I, I call up my buddy from Bridge, Kit Woolsey, and I can't tell you how much money that made me in the next year in my uh -huh. real estate office. So <laughs> from then on, I've been taking lessons. I'm still taking lessons. Uh -huh. That's the fastest way to learn. Yes. And the books, of course, are very important as well. Yeah. Here, don't you don't two o'clock two o'clock we'll have Wilcox Snellings versus Steve Sachs on the live stream, and that's the that's the undefeated, undefeated yes. You mean second chance? Mm. Okay. And we have a second chance match between Petco versus uh, the triple champ Jorgen Grandstead. And in my hand is a betting slip. I've got a bet on Wilcox versus Sachs. I'm not going to say who I bet on because they're both really good friends of mine. And there's odds. Of course, Wilcox is favored 120. Uh, but you can go you can go online on Martin Holmes' website. What's it called again? Clubgourmet.dk. Yeah. Club gourmet.dk and when you go online it's going to tell you don't go to the site it's dangerous ignore all that stuff it's not dangerous go to the site you can bet on steve Sachs and wilcox snelling too you can bet on any of these matches yeah. you can bet on who's going to win the champion he's changing the odds all the time it's yeah. really fun it's i don't really have fun. a huge bet here but i at least it's fun if i if i win i'm going to show this to everybody if i lose i just throw it away <laughs> Um, what else? Oh yeah, we've got the we've got the new website Bagaman Gal. No, oh, sorry, Bagaman World Championship com. And there we today we I think maybe already I don't know if they finished it, but they're gonna put up the live brackets uh, onto the the official website. Yeah, so you can find the live problems. brackets on, on the website. We, we, I was telling everybody to go to Drawboss dot com, and I wasn't finding the brackets. No, we you you go to the official website bagamonworldchampionship dot com, and there you have a link to the brackets. <clears throat> okay, that's the better. You sent me the link, and I put it on Facebook. Yeah, but I, I'm going to stop telling people to go to Drawboss. Just tell them to go to Bagamon World Championship. Bagamon World Championship. There they website. will find the brackets. Yeah, and, and another thing we're going to try to do is uh, we're going to try to make news updates with blogs. So we have we this new blog page. Uh -huh. So. This, the team here, we can make blog posts, like for instance, uh, Snelling's just won against this guy, or uh -huh. this guy, this sure, you know, making stories. Uh, CC's got a good blog uh, going CC, too. CC's Facebook. making the, the vlog, you know, <laughs> that's not a that's a video log, yeah, you know? yeah. So he's great. making the video log for you. And Michi and Mochi both have YouTube channels, I have a YouTube channel. And of course, Galaxy has one. I've learned a lot. Uh -huh. I keep talking about Gammon Go Light at two away, three away. I learned that from you. Oh yeah, you yeah like I love that. Expression. I love that. Yes, it, 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 it's changed my cube action. Oh really? It's actually changed uh -huh. my cube action. And the same with four away, three away. You know, I know it's not exactly yeah. the same, but I just like for the sake of simplicity, I love uh -huh. them together. You know. By the way, three away, here's a new one you may not have heard. I learned this from Dirk while I was doing commentary in Istanbul. At three away, three away, you ask yourself, is this a double for money? If the answer is yes, you double. If the answer is no, you still double if you think it's not a blunder. Uh -huh. At three away, three away. Uh -huh. If it's not a blunder for money, it's probably a double at three away, three away. Uh -huh. I didn't know that kind. It makes it easier. Yes. It's a great concept. And if All right, we're starting. If it, if it might be just a small take for money, now it's going to be a pass at right. three away, three away. Right. I mean, these are, these are tricks and uh -huh. that are going to make you a much better player without a whole lot of brain damage. <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, I don't have to estimate wins uh -huh. and gammons and market losers. I got a trick. Yeah. <laughs> and I need that. Okay, so Peter is trying to figure out what's the best opening reply here with the three two. And it is a little he, he knows that there's something weird here. Look, he's he's gonna find it. It's this ah uh, no he didn't. He couldn't figure it out. No. It's a little bit tricky because this is one of those variations where you have to split with a deuce and bring the down to the ten. But it's 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 an exotic opening reply, you know? And Peter didn't remember it. So he just Is made the a opening small reply different when you're winning nine to one than when you're losing? Nine uh, to one. You, you are more prone to split your back checkers to get an established and an advanced anchor as 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 fast as possible. Okay. Uh, but not too much because in the opening reply you're very much reacting to how your opponent opened. Uh huh. Uh, I would say in the opening role, yes, of course you're more prone to splitting rather than taking two down. Okay. I'm playing game and go and game and save at the score. Is that wrong? No, that's pretty good. Okay. Or maybe you should say game and go light instead. Ah, uh, I know, guess it. Just yeah. That four away, two away is just so extreme that it's like nothing comes close. Yeah. yeah. And but, and, but and one away, two away, Crawford is the pure game and go yeah. and game and save. That's the same. Yeah. yeah. But so everything else is game and go light. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I love that term. <laughs> It really helps me. Yeah, it helps me judge my checker plays and my cube action. But for sure, there's a dramatic change in their cube action strategy at this point. Uh -huh. A six away, fourteen away. So uh -huh. Peter, we're going to see Peter be much more 
conservative with the cube, much more careful with doubling and taking. And we're going to see Mario being really aggressive in gammonish positions. And this mm -hmm. is a gammonish position because this is a priming battle. Yes. It's not the kind of positions Peter want to get into. You know, Peter wants to get into gammonless positions. I hear you. I think there could easily be a double because of the score. That's a, yeah, exactly. I think Mar gonna Mario be, might be thinking about it, depending on the role here. Yeah. If I were so, Mario, so I would be thinking about the cube. Two down. Uh huh. This is a I losing mean, nine to one. I'm shipping. I, me too. I think so. I think he can double here. I think this is a cube. Let's see what XG says. I think it's going to be a big I, I take. It's a big take. And but, uh, I'm uh, shipping. I, I mean, it could even be a blunder not to double because of the. There's a little bit of. I mean, look. Imagine this roll here, right? <laughs> how uh, how epic that would be. Yeah. Uh, how about double fives and you have it to, is you, yes, big double, yeah, big take. Look, exactly. Look how big of a mistake it is not to double. Yes. It's the volatility. Yes. Even a roll like four one that just double hits. You know, then you start a blitz attack. You pick up that other guy. Do you, you double hit with six one? I think yes, so. Yes, you do. I think so. Look at the pip count. Mario is leading in the race. He's more advanced, uh -huh. and um, thereby. Mario is at a timing disadvantage in a priming game, but he's in a blitzing mm -hmm. advantage. I hear you. So six one should probably be used to go for the blitz attack. All right, are you standing there because you just heard me say what a great thing that we've done by bringing you in? <laughs> I'm serious. You just missed it. I right. by having you and me. I said yeah. you and me. <laughs> what a great thing he's done. <laughs> great job, though. Good. Great job. Yeah, we just got the the excellent. Tournament director here, Arda, handing over Phil's uh, official. Yeah. I first official met badge. Arda in, in Cyprus, oh, and it, I huh? couldn't good believe how well it was been. Oh, sorry, sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Yeah. Yes, but, go ahead. Uh, this is important. Mario made a really good play here with yeah. uh, hitting loose. Again, he realizes that he's okay. Is that? Yeah, I guess it's good. I guess it's good. He's going to go for the blitz attack. Yeah, yeah, of course. I and a hit. A good roll. It's now a great he, roll. He buys himself a lot of time to escape. The he wins four contact. points here. He's back in this match. Yes. Wow, this is a excellent development for Mario. I think he's going to win a gammon here. He's got a split. Oh, yes. That's the deuce. And I yeah. guess you just come up with the ace as well. Is there any advantage? Why would you come up with the ace? Why, why would you play Why would you play that one? Yeah, but why why come up with the I don't see um you, you have more just, flexibility but, staying on the on the 24, don't you? But it, it's kind of, you feel like you're duplicating your deuces a little bit because now you're going to play oh, deuce here. Oh. You're going to play deuce. Big roll. Here. Don't wow, run. that's a swing. Wow. That's a swing. Wow. Wow, does he switch? Yes. Yes. So we see the analysis, but over the board is not an easy decision. But that's a great play for Peter. Yeah, I, before I saw the analysis, I asked myself, do I switch? Yes. You, I think you saw it really quick, but Peter actually has uh -huh. very good flexibility here to make the, the key points. Oh, another big swing what? roll. Oh, my God. Oh, oh two wow. huge swing rolls in a row. What other game has this kind of that excitement on every play crazy. and every roll? This is why we play backgammon. Wow. This is why we're here. That was pretty sick. Back and forth. That was Unbelievable. pretty sick. And it happens all the time in yeah. backgammon. I can't tell you how many times in this tournament I, had a, I got excited about these back and forth swings. So look, Mario is aiming for this point here, maximizing builders for the seven point. Okay, Peter just dances away. Um, do you make the six prime or do you come up? I think coming up has takes pri takes priority here. I have um, no clue. Yeah, look at this. You You're right. Step up to You're right. Three because then you don't get in the range of these guys. You're right. You know, so you, you don't get stuck with a double six, for instance. Three was the ideal number to come up with rather yes, than a four. It was exactly. And now the next decision is whether you slot. Uh, oh, point here. Oh, okay. Huh. Okay, he chose that one. Uh, as long as it doesn't roll double six. Out scout. Uh huh. And and Mario doesn't need the six prime here. He doesn't need to make the yeah, seven point. Yeah, he'd only have to break it in a minute or two anyway. Yeah. Don't you, you don't make it to break it. You make it to hold it. If Mario he had his, make it. if Mario no, had his back checker yeah. back here, he would go for for the six prime. But uh -huh. now that he's got freedom, he doesn't need the six prime. Uh -huh. He can just clear from the rear, bring your checkers home. Oh, Gammons are huge here, like forty percent. Yeah, this is big for Mario. You know, yeah, he was uh, trailing by so many points. Yeah, if he can win a back in the here. match.
just go to the staff room to find some small things. If they don't have water, do Thank you want you. something else? Anything. I just need something for my throat. Thank you. You're right. Thank you. We lost Marco here now. I can talk about him without me hearing him, but what a great guy to work with. Just a super guy as well as a great, great backgammon player. And his staff is, I've seen lots of staffs at backgammon tournaments. Everybody here, are we're all friends. We all love each other. That's how we get along well and it's, everything runs so smoothly. This is my third tournament where I've worked together with the Galaxy staff. It's really a pleasure. He would like to come in quickly, reduce the gammons by moving his checkers forward. Dancing is not smart. And these are smart guys. Why the heck would they dance? I wouldn't dance here. I would come in. Peter, you're better than this. You need an ace. Plus, you can threaten those outside checkers with indirects. So this is really not good. Every roll is more gammons and fewer chances to get a shot before he gets them all in. There it is. You don't come out, though. Clearly the right play. Four in and to the deuce. Most flexibility. Nothing leaves a shot here except 6-5. I shouldn't say it out loud, should I? 6-5 is the only number that everybody's thinking here. Clear from the rear. Now nothing leaves a shot. No shots. And he doesn't need to take checkers off too aggressively because as long as he doesn't leave a shot, he's got a pretty good shot at the gammon. He's got 50% gammons here, according to XG. <coughs> yeah, no reason to make a point right now because there's no way to get a shot. Ah, thank you. Pretty uneventful so far. Uh huh. Yeah, it looks like the, he didn't miss anything. The natural progression here. <coughs> Mario is trying to win that all important G to win four points. <coughs> I mean, it really matters a lot that Mario wins the gammon here. It's kind of like 50 50 ish. Wow, that helps. That helps a lot. Do we have any uh, good comments over there, Phil? Yes, Can Jesper you? mentioned that he thinks the boards are fabulous. How could you not? FM boards are, I think, the best wooden boards out there for the money. Yes. There's some people making specialty wooden boards for three times as much. They're very pretty, but they're three times as much. Yes. Exactly. And they're no better to play on. So it's a it's a backgammon galaxy board, but we have ah. I mean we collaborate with FM Gammon, right? So it's their workshop, it's their craftsmen uh -huh. who make yeah. these boards, and they're so good. You know, I helped start the company for what in Mete, uh -huh. where FM and Mete was my good friend, and and they helped me. I helped design the board, and I got the number two board as a gift from them. Wow! I'm very proud of that. You still have that board? I'm uh, sorry to say that when I started the P40 company, I, s <laughs> I sold the board. <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed to say that. Why would you ask me a question like that? I, I should have lied. <laughs> I'm embarrassed that I did it. I love the board though too. I needed the cash at the moment, and I and I had P40, so. I'm still involved with P40, and I still love Fouat's boards. I just sent one of my students to Fouat. She went to Turkey and bought seven boards. Wow. She wanted yeah. a nice wooden board. Uh -huh. She was in Turkey. I, I introduced them together. Fouat brought over a whole bunch of samples to her hotel. She bought seven boards. One for the yacht, one for the airplane, one <laughs> for each home. Good. <laughs> wow. That was a good customer, huh? Yeah, it's a good customer. Good friend of mine now, too. Uh-huh. Uh, so Peter's trying to figure out here whether he should <clears throat> leave with a six, will which will cost him a little bit of match chances here. But it's gonna. It's very the close. Backgammon very, very close. Very close here because this very. is basically just saying, okay, I don't want to lose a backgammon. Yeah. But uh, it, it's very important that there's five checkers there it, instead of six, though. There, and there, that's exactly. We what might get to the cool classic again. We might, <laughs> we might get to see it twice in the same match. We that's I played it. a match once where we had cool classic three times in a row. We hit all three times. Really? Three okay. in a row. Wow. Yes, we are in position for the good Yes, and you're supposed to stay back, yes. risk the backgammon. <laughs> and, and, we, and we've seen well, Peter knows how to play the containment game, right? But there's some scores where you don't stay back. Look at this. Ah, okay, okay, okay. 
He's, yeah. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, was a thought maybe it was right to run. They, there are no, some scores where it's right to run where the backgammon isn't worth it. It uh -huh. isn't worth losing the backgammon. It, it happens at some scores. Yeah, yes, well, but, uh, how about three away, one away, Crawford? The, ace. Yeah. Oh, the backgammon. <laughs> we have a big roar in the crowd. Yes, cheering for the Germans. We've got a big guys. crowd here. A lot of Germans rooting <laughs> for Mario. That's big. That is huge. A backgammon, six points, six points because he got it. He, but he you caught him in the inner board. Last Cooper Seek set up, Peter eventually won the game, right? And yes. Now Mario just had his payback. Right. The backgammon. What goes around comes around. Yeah. <laughs> it only seems fair. And we've got a more exciting high roller final here. Let's remind the viewers that this is a super high stakes match. We've this got is big. 54,000 euro to the yes. winner. And we've got 28,000 euro. I have to, to tell the, you, when you loser. when I saw that you have a seventy-five hundred dollar entry fee, I said you're nuts. You're not going to get you're not going to get more than eight players. You got sixteen, got and you 16, got rebuys. You got 60, <laughs> a sixteen player bracket. Yeah. Um, last year, the Patty we call it the, the Patty Rubin uh, high uh -huh. roller. Yes. In memory of dear Patty, and uh, last year was a five thousand euro tournament. So yeah. this year we. And we had 16 as well. So this year we figured, you know what? Uh -huh. Let's go even higher, you know? Let's get bigger prizes, more glory. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you, I've been a close friend of Patty and Ronnie for many, many, many years. And I'm sure they're proud of what you've done with the tournament. You've continued the legacy. They they have nothing to, they, they have to be glad that they turned this over to you. Oh, you've done, you're doing an amazing job. Thank you, and Phil. The turnout here and the reception, and look at how many people are watching the streams. Yes. We've taken, you kept Backgammon in the glory that it needs to be. And this is, this is the glory tournament for Backgammon. Thank you, Phil. Nothing, nothing compares. Yeah. Um, okay, so much for the cube adjustments from Peter because now we're at a much closer oh, score yeah. again, you know. So Peter's we got a match starting, now. Peter's might want to have a look at the cube here. It's not that. F is this a cube? Could this be a cube? I think we need to split with Mario. This three stack over here on the ace point is simply and you're not right acceptable. It's you know, huge to split. You you have to get it going. Like for any any of you watching, if you see a three stack on your twenty four point, that is where your hand goes even before the dice hits the board. And if you see your opponent with that three stack, so, you should reach for the cube. I think <laughs> if the, had the score been the reverse. This would have been an easy cube for Peter, but he is still leading. You know, he's six away. Eight I'm away. doubling. I see a lot of market losers. You d identify the threats. Good. Yeah. That's, you hit. That's, you hit, and he doesn't hit back, and you're you're gin. Yes. So that's what Peter's gonna. I think Peter already saw this as well. He sees. There's the 27 losers. direct shots, not to mention the indirects and, and what the is, combinations. What is concerning Peter now? What he's trying to figure out is Double. whether yes. it's still good enough because he is leading with two points. Very. It was good a double. Cube. Very good. Cube. I was doubling there too. Very good, but I mean, okay, good. He takes it. the take decision here was, I think, rather easy. Yes, it was, not, it was more the doubling decision. I, was, I'm going to uh, take credit. I developed something called reverse Wolsey's law. You know what that is? I think I can. I think I know. You figure it out. You, you, you can. You can. If tell you're yours. doubled and you're not quite sure it was a cube, then for sure it's a take. Very good. There you go. I like it. Um, I'm a little bit surprised uh, that Peter is actually. I mean, I no, I would say impressed that Peter isn't just hitting immediately here he he realizes that the hitting it, is wrong by a little bit maybe it's not that good to wow. get hit back. you know you're leading the the race by 33 pips 33 pips you i would have hit reflexively a, 33 pips that's a lot of pips wow good play. play you know great very hard play to he, make he, he's one man back he's up 33 pips so why get hit you know that's for me that's like not having dessert <laughs> that kind of restraint it would have taken me not to hit yes he exactly but it just goes to show how how well he understands the game i think he really understands that uh hitting is not automatic Two does that come from playing the computer a lot or does that come from just intuitive knowledge i think peter has so much backgammon experience like uh -huh. he's been playing i mean he played in the ace point club in new york back in the 90s i was there with him Oh, I was playing in the East Point Club, and Peter Jess Thompson and Falafel walked in, and I moved my annual meetings, my, my weekly meetings from New York to Dallas. The day I saw Peter Jess Thompson and Falafel, I'm telling you, I used to play with Chris Trencher and Karen Davis and, and Blake Fleetwood and a bunch of guys at the East Point Club in the 80s, and I moved in the early 90s. I moved. My whole corporate meetings were there because I wanted to play in the East Point Club, and it was Peter Jess Thompson and Falafel that chased me away from the game. I couldn't win anymore. Uh-huh. 
Yeah. It was a fifty dollars shoeette, and I was raking it in until they walked in the door. <laughs> Changed my whole life. Okay. I went to Dallas, and Malcolm <laughs> Davis and I had a we had a nice game with uh, Harvey Huey and a bunch of nice people in Dallas, and that was more lucrative for me. Uh huh. Wow, the five four is huge. So, so Peter is not that he. I mean, he's what is he late forties, early fifties, you know? But he's got so much backgammon experience. Well. I would walk in in the morning, early in the morning. Alan Stephan, who ran the Ace Barn Club, was a good friend of mine, Alan and Lourdes. And early in the morning, there would be Peter and Falafel. They had spent the entire night with Snowy going over positions all night long. Uh -huh. So this Everybody the talked about how what a natural player Falafel was. Yeah, he was natural after hundreds of hours of study. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, he, he, he didn't do much else other than That's play right. and study backgammon. That's all he did. Yeah. And eat. He ate well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool play by Peter here. He goes for the blitz attack. Yeah, that, that's a dance, and this uh -huh. would have been this would have been been a double pass actually. Sure. Uh, so Peter is in a good spot now. Uh that looks a bit ugly. Is that really the best play? It's real close. It's very close. close. Point oh one five. Um. Yeah. It's okay. close. The, the best place actually to go for flexibility now. That's the play. That's the play. I mean, it's it's a little bit tough to find because you have so many blots here, but you you want to take the chance early to then cruise it easily, cruise it later on. You know, if you play, if you make that move eleven to three, it's safe for now, but you might get in trouble later on because it's ugly. You're front loading. This one is risky in the short term, but if it works out well. I would then not have had the guts to make this play. Yeah. I would have made the second best play, I think. I might have made the I might have played eleven to three. I might well have done that. Yeah. I mean that's actually an impressive play by uh, by Peter. Good play Ooh. by Peter. In and yeah, hit. You know, it's a it's a good role for Mario, obviously, but Peter still has some action here. Uh -huh. He has a ton of return shots where he can win the gammon. We can even call it the gammon trap, and that's uh, that's uh, exactly what we see here. This it's clearly right trap. here. You it, must hit. Clearly right. You know, clearly it's the gammon right. trap. Imagine mm. Mario dances <clears throat> here, then Peter just destroys him with a blitz attack. So Mario needs to perform super volatile position. Is, yep. he, is he thinking of a recube, underdog recube here? No, that cannot be right. If the score was nine to one, I would think about yeah, it. Yeah, then do something <laughs> else, but you know, it's, yeah, it's a big mistake. Oh, big roll. Wow. Look at this roll. Wow. We've had some swing rolls here. Wow. That had to be the number one roll, come in and hit two. That's crazy. That's the number one joker, and all yeah. of a sudden it's Mario going for the gammon here. First he gets the, the back gammon, and now he gets this roll. That's a kind of a swing of fate. You can't even see. Uh, look how calm Peter takes it. You know, he's just ice cold. He didn't. He didn't even flinch. I'm sure Peter's been hit this hard many times. <laughs> yeah. And bounced back. <laughs> but inside, he's just as mad as any of us would be. <laughs> inside, it's yeah. churning. So Meyer's trying to figure out the the last remaining five. He's played no wait, he's played, he's played two. two. Of them. He's played two, two of them. them. Hit two, he's so got, he's two, got more. two more. I think you just gotta bring builder. I think you have to go to the eight point, get a builder there. I think that's automatic. You don't want to stack the midpoint too much, you know. That's yeah. under I think you come from the midpoint to the, the eight. Checkers. You gotta you want that builder. Yeah, and then after doing that, the best place seems to be just bringing the other one down and just making the eight point, you know? It's a good priming point. Oh. It's, it's ammunition for a blitz attack. And you're right. That is the best play. Yeah. You're right. I mean, it's difficult to make a blunder here, obviously. <laughs> Lots of good alternatives. I would like st well, stay away blunders, from... Well, they're not blunders, they're just errors. I would stay away okay. from stacking, ending uh -huh. up with a move that has five checkers on the midpoint. So I would find one of those combinations where I uh -huh. have good flexibility and all. But it seems that it's actually quite nice just to... Just to make the eight point, you know, it's a priming point. It's ammunition for a blitz attack, 
And then next time you bring your checkers yeah. around the board. If you had another checker you could bring into the zone, then then you might not make the eight point, but this is at least productive. And it is another checker in the zone. It is. And that matters, you know, that really matters because yeah. Peter got Peter's got two men on the bar. And uh which means that yeah, that's the move I don't like too much. No, it ends up with no. stack in the midpoint. It doesn't bring checkers in the zone. I learned this in the, the Nordic Goban final actually. Too I, good to double. I made a pretty big blunder where I was stacking the midpoint and Falafel was doing the commentary. I'll never forget that mistake. And Falafel's not real forgiving when he was doing the commentary. No, exactly. <laughs> I've had Falafel commentate my matches. You make a small error and you, you look like a fool. <laughs> that's that's how I learned not to stack the midpoint. <laughs> Thanks to Falafel. Yeah. Yeah, he had a he had a good way of criticizing your moves. You know? Yeah, he could so, be four to one odds it was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. And then you had to take it, you know. He's giving me four to one. He's giving you the odds. <laughs> it's still too good to double, yeah, by the way. Yeah. It's still know, too good. It's it seems rather risk free to Yeah. To try and at the score you're trailing, you want to be a little bit more greedy yeah, than normal. It wasn't a big, it wasn't a blunder, but it was a real error. Like half a blunder here. Well, I, I think it's the I would have thought longer at least. It still looked like it was too good. It, it was probably a close decision for money, uh -huh. but when you're trailing, you want to be more greedy to win the. Yeah. The, go for the the game. I want to remind you that after this match, we're going to have some incredible matches coming up, including, uh, including Wilcox Snelling and Steve Sachs, two great great. Giants. Yeah. And I'm not sure who the other and, match is going to be. What was the line on that one? Uh, 120. 120. Because uh, I bet on it. I'm not telling you which way. So 120 for, for Snellings, right? Yeah. And uh, I forget. Uh, that, that makes him like a 55% favorite if I know yeah. my American odds. Yeah. According but, to the bookmaker, that is. And Will, Wilcox would be a much bigger favorite against almost anybody else. Steve yeah. is. Steve is one of the real premier players, and he's... That's, uh, there might even be some value on Steve in that one. What do you think? I'm not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to show any... By the way, they're both good friends. Steve yeah. and I traveled Europe together last year. We, we were in Maine together last week. We, we did a lecture last Friday night. We had 35 people at a club that they never had backgammon before, and half of them were under 40 years old. It was really great. That sounds cool. Steve took the advanced, I took the intermediates, and Jason Briggs took the beginners. Okay. Look and at it, this one, Phil. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, I've, I've actually, I'm working on a book called The Golden Point where all positions in the book are a dilemma where you either make the 20 point or the five point ah. i've got 150 positions compiled and this this wasn't the golden point but it's kind of similar you know do you yes. anchor up do you make the nine point do you hit on the five point and these these dilemmas are so much fun what what i use is what joe sylvester taught me years ago offense offense defense defense if i'm in an offensive position i tend to make an offensive play i'll make my own five point if i'm in a defensive position i'll tend to make theirs Th that's not bad advice it's good not, advice but uh it, i think you're gonna it's like more technical it. than that though that, that you what i found studying all these positions there's a lot of little details that i didn't really know before i went through these uh -huh. positions well, it's called deliberate practice. When you really yeah. dive into something, you That's find right. things you never thought That's before. Right. Like, <clears> how's <throat> the resulting structure? You know, are you stacked or are you flexible? Uh, are you <clears throat> are you uh, eliminating the utility of your enemy's checkers? Like, for instance, if your enemy has a stack on the six point, the advanced anger is really good because it neutralizes uh -huh. basically his utility with his checkers. So there's there are many details that I discovered <clears throat> uh, diving deep into <clears throat> that dilemma. I, I learned a, uh, a saying long ago that I love. Every disciplined action has multiple rewards. Uh -huh. but, but you're taking a disciplined look at it, and you find out five things you didn't realize before. Yes. And you, what, can even, you can even apply it. I can't wait to read the book. Well. Yeah, yeah. I've read the, every one of your books thoroughly. Believe the, me. The script is actually done, but uh, we need to do, go through the editing phase. Uh -huh. So it, it's probably going to take another six to 12 months, I think, before it's, uh, it's ready for publication. Mm -hmm. Look at this double five, huh? That's a good roll. <clears throat> that is a great role you know it's it's hard not to come out you know that's probably going to be the first two two fives you got to get freedom uh, to me it's so hard not to make the three points so that's what you do afterwards okay i think first you come out and then you make the three and, point and is right three point you do both you do which both. he's not doing if he makes this play yeah he's got to leave a check around the midpoint i mean what other alternatives are there I'm having difficulty seeing other alternatives. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. guess you could, you could play this one and then make the three-point, but that's just uh, inferior, I think. 
If he's come to the conclusion he's not coming out, then that's why he's having problems. I don't think he's made that leap that he must come out. Maybe he's getting there. That's, the, huge, that's half of it. Huge difference between having three men behind a four prime and having one man behind ah, a four prime. He got it. Good. Play. He got it. Yes. I don't see any other plays here, to be honest. Good play. Yeah. Beautiful. He got it. Play. He got it. Wow. Pierce oh. back after being very unlucky in several games mm -hmm. in a row. Now you make the he four point. Finally rolls a joker. You make the four point, then you look for the last one. Well, yeah. the last one, you got to come out. You got to come you out. You have no choice. You have no choice. No choice. It plays itself. Yeah. FBL, forced by logic. Yeah. <laughs> forced by logic. That's right. Okay, so Mario wants to come in here. If he doesn't come in, we might see a cube. Well, he, he can come in. He can, he can make the po outside point. I think he has to, doesn't he, he? Yes, he has to. He's very sad about this situation over here. I mean, he if he didn't have that blood in the outfield over here, he, he could have come in with a three yeah. and stepped up with a one. <clears throat> uh, but the fact that he has this... Uh, oh, and a quick, quick cube. Yeah, very that, quick cube. Uh, okay. There wasn't okay. any hesitation at all. very easy to And take. it's not a double, okay. by it's right on the no, edge. It's right on the edge. I right mean, on not the a, edge. Not a bad cube from people. No, it's not bad. And again, it's one of those... This was one of those situations where it was the decision was on the cube side. I mean, the take was very easy. Oh, yeah. Using the inverse uh, Wolsey's right, ball, right? You're right. Not sure if it's easy a cube or not, it's an easy take. That's right. But why such a fast decision? Is he getting? He's not low on the on the clock. I guess he's just that was sure. Yeah, he's just that sure. Yes. I would love to have that kind of confidence over the board. I guess you. Okay. Another because, forty years, I might get there. Oh, that he, that's not good. Now he's in the disconnected state. No, uh, that's not good. Uh, but the, I, I mean, that was a very difficult play to find because the best play was the slotting play. Wow. Very very difficult play to find. Wow. That, humans don't find that play. I guess the key is you're facing one man back that can easily escape. You need a pure prime ASAP. It can only be too slow. So slotting and. Wow. Uh, I would not have found the slotting play no. either. Again, we see here, so Mario has to play super pure here. He has to play super pure. I think he wants to split the back checkers. Ah, he, he doesn't want to... No. Ah, look, at it's, he doesn't not supposed to split because of this. Black is too dangerous here, so it's dangerous to split the back checkers. I think that's why That's why splitting is not the right idea. No, it's not, on, also, not on the list. He doesn't have a good four to play if he splits. Yeah. Like, if you do this, where's the four? four? You're not going to stack, right? That play is a little bit weird. That seems just nope, weird. No, nope. no. Look at look at Peter's. Uh, he looks like the he looks like Phil Lock, the Unabomber. Yeah. Peter Jess Thompson. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> I said Phil uh, Lock still plays a great game of backgammon. By the way, I don't know how many people know that. That's what I've heard. He's oh. Still got it. He's he's a brilliant last, gamer. You know. Last he's, week he won a whole bunch of money from somebody I know. Okay. He still played a great game of backhand. So it's not just poker he's good at. Yeah, and, but, and Phil Lex, another one that hung out at the East Point Club all the time. We were there. Uh -huh. I had dinner with him many times. I think uh, Peter and, and Phil are probably more or less the same age. Right. And they were all they were at the East Point Club together. Yeah. And when the East Point Club started having poker, that's when Phil, that's actually when Phil converted from backgammon to poker at the East Point Club. Uh-huh. Interesting. And then look at the career he had. In poker yeah. Ever since. Yeah. The career and the girlfriend. Was it the same with Gus Hansen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, uh, what do you call it? Like, uh... Meg Tilly. Yeah. He got, a, he got a career and a great girlfriend out of it, too. He scored upwards, you know? Yep. Well done, Phil. 4-2. Okay, we make the deuce point. <clears throat> Yeah, you got to do it. You got to get those checkers utilized. Uh -huh. uh, he uh -huh. had too many checkers stacked up here. So it's a little bit impure creating this gap, but at least uh, he's utilize utilizing his checkers. 3-1. I mean, he's probably thinking about slotting here. He's down to 12 men in his front position because he got three men stuck. Slot and play, slot so slot play to the 8. Yeah, you look, slotting is the right play. Yeah, I'm playing you know? to the 8, that's you, right. You need to play right. efficient. You need to play efficient. It's scary to slot against that that board oh your only this is, is this a good play i i, I think it's good a good roll uh, yeah i think it's good also I'm, notice that he's killed his sixes over here yeah right so I, he's my question down. was whether it was a good roll or a bad roll i think it was good i uh, think it was good could hurt his timing 
It would have been not so good if he'd made the bar here. It might have been slightly bad for his winning chances, but I think it was good for his gammon chances. I see. Overall, I, I, I didn't get to see the percentages, but I think I would take it. I think it was uh, okay net profit. That's the beauty in XG. You can go back and look at dice distribution and uh -huh. find out how good or bad a roll is. That's a pretty good play here by Mario. 2-5, not a good roll. He needs to get that back checker going as soon as possible. Oh, that's a big roll. Mm -hmm. Big, big roll. That's Huge great roll. for Mario. And uh oh, there goes the Ooh. There goes the it's six. Still round. not a recube yet. No, I think he's got to get a six out. He needs a six. Complete 50-50 position here. Yeah, Mario he needs has, a six. has the timing advantage. Oh, there it is. Wow. Wow, Mario's what a turnaround. A Mario's a favorite now. That's the six. And then there, it doesn't really make much sense to make the 13 point here. So you should gamble a little bit and get that extra builder down so you can fill you out your You only get hit with one time. six and three four and three five. Yes. That's, that's six it. numbers. Six numbers, right? He, he doesn't take the gamble. It doesn't make But the reward gamble. is worth it if you it can is, make that point and have is. a builder. You need to have four builders. Yeah. Pointing at that point. Right now he only has three because you you can't count this one as a builder for the for this four uh -huh. point. It's not quite a recube, I don't think, is There's it? It's a huge difference. It maybe if he had a fourth builder yeah. now, it might have yeah. been, you know. If he had the eight point slotted, it might have been. Five, I need to mm. I think he needs to play it big. Yes, look again, we see the big play. Two down. When you are in a priming battle, it's really important that you play efficient, flexible, and pure. You cannot allow any deficiencies, you know, playing playing like this move here is just so inefficient. You can't do it. You need to utilize your checkers. He did it. That's he what, did it. Yes, yes. 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 Good Very play. Good. Pick up the dice. Hit the clock. You, you take it. Hit the clock. You run a risk, but that's the way you win the game. Hit the clock. It's the right play by a lot. Yeah. Takes yeah. guts to play back, Evan. You know that? And look at the blunder potential here. Again, we see a priming game. That's where you have these bl huge blunder potential moves occurring. Good great play. play great great play. play by a great Mario. player. Yes. Uh-oh. Okay, he holds. Now. Okay. Wow. Yep. Wow. Now no. it's giving Peter a decision. It's giving Peter a decision. You know what? I'm surprised it's a take. It is a big take. No, it's not a big take. It's well, a big cube it and... It's less than blunder margin. It's for almost, human, it's close, yeah. For a human being, this is such a This is tough, one. this is a tough one. It's really, really tough one. I mean, wow. for a computer, it might be clear, but yeah. not for a human. That's what I was talking about with Kit earlier. It, a small mental error could be a big PR error, but still. Yeah. This is a wow. tough one. This is a very tough one. All right, what are the odds that Peter gets it right? Uh, I think he's, I think he's a favorite. You know, he should be a favorite. He should to be get it right? Than, he should be better than random. Why is he looking like but, the Unabomber uh, now? Yeah. That's oh, my he, God. He, 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 exactly we're talking about Phil Lack. That's why I told you. <laughs> oh, I, about I didn't Lack. look up and see that. I no, didn't no, see it. That's, okay. that's exactly why I was started talking about Phil oh, Lack. Oh, I, now I see it. I, I never looked up at his face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is he going to take it or not? This is tough. I think he's going to spend a couple of minutes on his time bank here. It's a huge decision for the match. Uh, Peter might think... That he's a better player and adjust a little bit here. Let this one go, you know. Yeah, if you think you're the better player, because this is not a hard position for Mario to bring home. Yeah. If it was a complicated checker play position, you'd be more inclined to take if you think you're the superior player. I'm not thinking. Yeah. Unbelievable. What do you think about this one? This, uh, what do you think about this fuck you here? I hope he's going to take it. Huh? I mean, I. The reason why it's good to play two, two down with five. Three. He passed. He yeah. passed. Oh, he passed it. Passed. Great play by Mario, though, in that, that so double Sanders, slot. Sanders a little bit disappointed. German is uh, it's now up. He was yeah. up 9-1 and then two, 10 points. This is the second match in a row where where the... Where a player had like 10% equity and turned in all of, you know, he's leading. <laughs> but he, uh, Peter is still, uh, he, Peter has one blunder in this match so far. This wasn't even a blunder to pass this cube. Uh -huh. He's got one blunder in this match. In the whole match. And the score is 9 to yeah. 11. Right? He's played at a 1.9, right? Oh, now he has two blunders. Maybe it did count it as a blunder. I don't know. Maybe it was. It, it was right on the edge of a right blunder. Yeah. Point, point 0.79, as I recall. Anyway, he's playing uh, 
It's semantics. The blunder well. just has to have. It's just a line at point oh eight. Yeah. We could have, we could have yes. set it at point oh seven or point oh nine. It's yeah. just <laughs> it's an arbitrary number. Yeah. Right. Do you know why we set it to point oh eight? No. I know why Extreme Gamma did it because I helped develop it. Because Snowy had it that day. Because Snowy had it, yeah. We don't know why. Because Lever <laughs> Leverman decided that's what it should be. Uh huh. That's why we're so doing it. So it's Leverman. Uh, he was the, the He was the guy. We, when he did Snowy, he decided uh -huh. 0.08 was the number. I feel like it's a great, great number, actually. If it was 0.07, we'd all accept that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's arbitrary. No, we wouldn't, Phil. That would be too low. No, we all right, if it was 0.09, <laughs> you'd accept that. <laughs> I wish it was point oh nine. We'd all look better. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. I'm, uh, I'm a point oh eight player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Six three. You got to make the ah. Is that the play? No. Okay, it's close. It's close. Okay, very close. I would have gone for the anchor there, but uh -huh. I think the, the match score is influencing it a little bit because now Peter's now, now Peter's the one trailing, and he wants to go for the offensive movements. Six away, four away. Yeah. That's so, not gammon go light. It's, it's gammon go, gam go light light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we are seeing some adjustments. I think that checker play was actually an adjustment. I think Peter uh -huh. would have made the anchor in a neutral score rather than the five point. Um, five. Mm. That's okay. He plays the four first, which is a little bit weird. Because now, one thing I always that just hits me anytime somebody's four away is if the cube gets turned, gammons win the match. So the gammon yeah. value is going to be very, very high. Yes. In favor of Mario if the cube gets turned. That's right. So in, in gammonish positions where Mario is the favorite. Oh, here's the Mario cube. Mario is actually. Here's the oh, cube. That's it's a, nice a very good cube, cube and a very yes. big take. Nice cube by, by Peter. Excellent cube, actually. He's trailing a bit in the race, which make, that's what makes it a take. But it's an excellent cube. And there's even a little bit of bluff in this cube. You know, oh, he, get how fast he did it, too. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he might get a pass. He might get a pass. I wouldn't yeah. be shocked if Mario passed this. It'd be wrong, but I wouldn't be surprised. And I, I mean, the key here is the pip count. So Mario, please. Okay, now he's counting. Good, very good. I, and that means he's probably going to find the take. Because if you know that you're up seven pips in a position like this, early middle game, yeah, it's almost impossible to pass it. You're not I, on the bar. Yeah, but it's when you're winning shot. in the match, you're winning in the match. That's that, scary. That scares you. Yeah, that scares you. And the and the gammons, you know, he and you can't see that many gammons that you would win. So that one percent, that one point oh gammon value, when you're only winning eight percent gammons, isn't really exciting. Yes, that's where the bluff comes in. I mean, I think Peter looks really scary right now. You know, I mean, he's, I think he's taking this Unabomber to a, no, a, a new level. Yeah, we got to call Phil Lack and say something. He took it, at a boy. Okay, good, good play, good, good play. play. Mario certainly is impressing me with his skill. Okay, he's, we have a we have a blitz attack here. We have a blitz attack. Oh yes, the Sander. I'm looking at Sander. Yeah, he's already exactly. I saw it immediately as well. The blitz attack, point shift, four point board, pick up that second blot, win the gammon. It's actually a clear play. Yeah, 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 yeah. Peter sees it. Come on, Peter. It's a clear Not play. Not a lot of people. Oh, yeah. oh a lot of people oh, would yeah. miss that play. Yeah, you got to A lot of people miss that play. I would make yeah. the play if it put two checkers up. With one checker up, I'm not sure I would see it. Exactly, exactly. But the other blot makes me want to do that too. You gotta, you gotta train your brain to look at the switching, yep. you know, uh, switching place. You know, it's counterintuitive. Excellent play by Peter. Five three, okay. He comes in and hits. I, I, I mean, he has to right. He has to hit. It's not over. There's yet. no other three. It's not over yet. Is he considering hitting on the ace point? No. Maybe. Why? To, to, to leave the big shots? anchor. Oh, to also to be able to anchor, maybe. Look how close it is. I would never have dreamed it would be close. I mean, it's much less shots, right? It's it's, yeah. it's less. But also, if you hit on the ace and you get hit back, you might anchor. You might anger. It's yeah. Le it's less ambitious, of course. You're gonna win more games with this, but it's. A I would have lost that bet. I never dreamed it was close. This is a powerful roll, and he's gonna put Mario yep. back on the bar. And now Big Mario roll. needs to perform. He really needs to perform here. Ooh, he no. Dances. No. Wow, this was a big swing. Big it's, swing. Two men on the bar. There you go. This is uh, 
Powerful, powerful blitz attack here from Peter. That's the four. Okay, so Peter's going to He's going to hit with anything. Anything here. That's anything. Four, a nine. That's the hit. And then he's going to he's gonna split the, the ten point to have more attackers. Sure. Yes. Good play. And, and Mario really needs to perform here. He needs a four. He's desperate for a four. No, he dances. This is... Looking, looking like a, a four-point win for Peter. To yep. me, here. now we're down to the Be double five. Oh, we're down to oh the five. Wow. wow! He does it again. Big swings. He does it again with two and a half minutes left on the clock. I, they must have stopped for the transcribers. Yeah, yeah. they stopped for the transcriber. Wow. Oh my god, the swings he makes the three point, doesn't he? That is sure. Just, wow, what a swing! That roll oh. might be worth 30. It was almost going to be two away, four away for Peter. How much equity is in that roll? Oh, how many dollars is that roll worth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. great question. Okay, but it's not over yet. So uh, Peter enters immediately, makes the seven point. Not yeah. a bad roll, actually. He gets to make the twenty-one and the seven point. Um, wow! Oh <laughs> my goodness, Mario, Mario. the comeback kid. We're and gonna call Mario from now. now on. Yeah, the comeback kid. Four three. There's the crunch. He came back Mario from what? The score eight to one was it? Nine to one. Nine to one. Is yeah, that eleven to nine? Crazy. Oh my god! And Peter hasn't made a mistake, basically. Oh yeah, <laughs> and he's playing. He's playing XG. Yeah. <laughs> that should be. We we used to call McGrill X twenty two. Yeah. We should call Peter XG. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. It's not even an inaccuracy for Peter here. Six two. Um, Mario. Yeah, y you could split the rear anchor, but then you don't. It's not really a good thing to do. So let's just play 13 to, to 5. Peter comes out. Uh huh. Good. Threes and good. tens. Three. Yeah, three, but it comes with a little bit of risk, but he's got to do it. You know, just what hit else that is guy. there? What, yeah, what else is there? You know, and he's six to five is right. It's, it's close. Close. I, Which one? I would have done this to dupe the. Oh, well, no, it's not duping. No, it's not really. Okay, four three. Remake the four point. I think. Really, you don't clear. Ah. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're uh, right. I mean, you remake it. I would have cleared. The, the problem with this is that. Oh. The problem with this play here is that you're burying a checker, right? Yeah, so, uh, I would have buried the checker. Uh, the That's what he's doing. The problem making the the four point obviously is that you are uh, leaving a shot. Yeah. But but you. you he, yeah, he that, made that, that's a small mistake. How could he make such a chicken play that I would have made? <laughs> <laughs> but he's still below a two PR. So double three. Now we're gonna see movements with the rear checkers here. He needs to somehow get at least one of these guys out here. I, I I'm uh, a little afraid to leave one because the double ones, double twos, and pick and pass. Yes. So I I would bring them both out, and it's right. Yeah, he doesn't want to get hit with a fly shot here. Yeah, I like that play. Mm -hmm. Good. Again, uh, what did you call it? Forced by logic. Double five yep, from FBL. Peter. Double five from Peter. Big roll. So it now, okay, yeah, yeah. This is now is a good time to bury checkers because now you're racing. Uh -huh. You don't want to get hit. It's not that it's pretty, but it's necessary. I've never heard that expression. A good time to bury checkers. <laughs> Yeah, I always thought it was never a good time, but it's, well, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Right? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Not exactly desirable. You're still, but yeah, you're still creating wastage for the race, but it's better than the shots. Yes, you, 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 and the closer the race is, uh, the uh -huh. more valuable it is not to get hit. You know, this this points out how important it is to have a sense of the race at all times. I think here, if you can just kind of figure out, you don't even need to count the pips. If you can just figure out that you're leading, you know, uh -huh. as Peter here. Okay, then you should place it. Oh, this is an interesting decision here because is he going to play with the dragon with the tail? That's the dragon, that's the tail. Or was he going to ensure this perfect contact, which uh -huh. is uh, six pips away here from the anger? So. Ooh, that's good pip three. count. 
He's gonna keep the dragon with it. Oh, he, he can still have no. it. No, that's not good. That's that. That's he's losing to in the race too much. Uh, yeah, you, exactly. You, you if can't you're down do in the one. race. You don't want to race. No, no, that you're giving up way too much uh, contact here, Mario. Okay, he's counting the he's race. He's counting the race. Know, he's he, not gonna he, do it. He should know that he's trailing. Make the ace. But there is a play. He can continue to have a dragon with a tail. Yeah. By playing this move here, I make the ace point really quick here, and it's that, that real. It's a tie. Play as well. yeah. I, I would just play it's close. It's a tie. One minute and fifteen seconds left on the clock. Five three hit. Wow, that might be the best way for Peter to get his checkers home. If Mario can just stay on the boy oh, five three. Wow. He hits him right hey, back. Wow. Wow, Peter just can't catch a break Somebody here. Somebody who pointed out the clock. One minute and five. One minute. Mario's and down to almost no time. Yeah, he's slightly above one. There's a lot of match time. left. There's a lot of match left, it's too and Peter's got a tremendous amount of double time. Double four. Okay. Peter has a he chance. Plays. He plays. He, 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 Peter has a chance here. He needs a six. That's he got a six. It. He got that's the six. A six. That's, wow. That's a cube, that's a cube saver. It, well, I mean, I think <laughs> Mario was going for the gammon until this point. Uh-huh. Um, but at least it's a gammon saver. Yeah, it's right? a gammon so, saver. Uh, he's That's not going to lose the match. Oh, oh six, uh, wow. Wow, he's that, up in the That race. might be a match saver. One, two. <laughs> Shouldn't he just run here? Isn't he up? It's even. It's very even. Very even. He's up, but he has more wastage. And he has the gaps here. That's the problem. So even though Peter's going to be up seven pips in the race, he's got too much wasted wastage and gaps here. So... It's a very close race after running. Peter's got plenty yeah. of time in the time. And by staying, you make a very good point in your board, too. That's the other reason to stay. Oh, that's right. You're making your four point. That's right. Of course, it's, it's a better play. By it, of far. Of course it is. By far. You're going to get a seven shot on most of his rolls. You might even get a... I mean, imagine if he rolls a 5-1, sure, right? Sure, 5-1. Uh, you get a direct shot if he rolls the 5-2 or 6-1, which would be good sure, for Mario. Sure. He gets a fly shot if he rolls something, any, anything bigger than a, a 7. He's got it. He's yeah, got he's it. Got he's it. doing it. Good play. Great right play. It took me a while as well just to figure this one out. But uh, No, now, your gut reaction was right, though. No, my gut reaction was to run oh, to go for the okay. race. But then I started looking at all the wastage. And There's a 7. It's a 7. That's a good okay. roll. Okay. This a is the roll. big, big it's, roll it's of the actually, match right here. one of the best rolls. Huge roll. roll. Oh, he, he dances. danced. He danced. And there we have the cube. Yeah, there we have the cube. Double pass by a wow, lot. Wow, he's really unlucky, Peter. He's really unlucky. Yep. Huh? Yep. Uh, even that seven from Mario, it was a great shot because it went from 50 50 to two thirds of a two to one favorite. That's right. Mario, he only I had about 30% chance to hit. That's right. What's the luck factor? I mean, Mario. <laughs> Way in favor of Mario. Mario turned Mario. around with just the double five that got him into the position to start with. Yes. It was huge. Yeah, he's got, we're going to see the split here from Mario, of course. Keeping volatility down. Gammon's down. Yeah, Mario's luck factor is almost three. Yes. And at six away, two away, maybe we could even call it Gammon Go, you know, or Gammon Go Light. Or gammon go uh -huh. even a little bit more than gammon go light. This is a very gammonish score, yeah, obviously. Well, checker play is certainly gammon go. Yes. But the question is the cube. Uh, yeah, yeah, that take, that takes away. Uh, a John O'Hagan and I, me, unfortunately, twelve years ago, came up with a formula for when do you double your opponent when he's two away, when he's within eight percent of his take point. It works every time. You not adjusted for gammons. If his take point's 22%, you double when he has 30% in a race. When your opponent is two away. Really? It that works sound, every time. Does it? That every sounds time. like... Uh, a two away, five away, is take point oh, 72%. Wait, wait, sorry, when your opponent is two away. Right. Oh, when, you're, yes. when you're the trailer, yeah, yeah, okay, yes. you double when your opponent... Yes. Because he has no recube big, so you double about 4% faster than you would in any other score. Well, I mean, in a straight race, you would also double 8% from him. That's exactly what I'm talking about in a straight race. Yes, so there's no difference. In no, no, the straight race is usually... The straight race is actually the same doubling points. If you use the Keith count and you're over by 4, you and his take point is 22%, you're doubling when he has 26%. You would be doubling uh -huh. at 30% if he's two away. It's 4% faster doubling when he's, two, when he's two away. If you use the Keith count. I don't use the Keith count. Well, I just look, use percentages. Uh, if you use the percentages, it's going to be 4% more. That's a good play, by the way, by uh, yes. Peter here. Um, okay, let's fi let's finish that discussion later on. Yep. It's interesting. Yep. Um, okay, 5-4. That's a oh, nice play. Okay, I would have played Peter's play as well. I, I liked it. Uh, apparently, the computer prefers to run. 
I, I, I like the cover. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow. Another huge that joker. Oh, my God. The German this is, spectators this are is, clapping. What a This joker. is Mario's 14th big joker of the match. Wow. Wow. And he can just win an on double gammon here. Wow, yes. Peter has to rid him. He, he has to... Yeah, do something here. You know what I like, though? To not lose a the Germans who are watching are screaming like crazy when this happens. It's not because he's German. They like this guy. He's a nice guy. Yeah. It's not just about the country. Uh-huh. Okay, he doesn't doesn't pick up that third guy. Uh, okay, I, that's a little bit conservative, you know. I, I would be agree more great oh, this, wow, that, Peter. That's I, very helpful. Very helpful. <laughs> very helpful. So the question is, uh, can you allow yourself to leave any shots? No. Yes, this, this is a good play, Peter. Because the problem, even though it's more flexible to make this play, you are risking getting a fourth man sent yep. back. And you don't want that. And then a gammon you costs you the match. Gammons. You, you yeah. lose the match if you get gammon. You have no more hope. Yes. So gammons are important. Uh, this is a little bit crunching. He's crunching the wrong. Okay, it's not a, not a big deal, but uh -huh. I have some pretty clear rules for when to run here from this. And this was actually uh, one of those. Are cases. those rules in one of your books? Um, I need the, I need those rules. No, it isn't. It isn't really. Yeah, how selfish of you. Yeah, I, it should be. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of these secrets, you know. You, wow. you can't get it all out, you know. All at once. Well, keep writing books because I'm learning from you. Yeah. And by the way, I'm stealing all of your information and teaching it to my students. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> double three. Uh, double three. <clears throat> That's a little bit tricky one, right? Because, I mean, how are you going to balance this one out? You don't want to front load too much. You don't really need to to slot either right that's a little bit weird but you could well, so it seems there's that the, six plays that are close though this one you're gonna kind of give up some contact yeah it's not terrible but they were, they were close they were very yeah it's difficult to find the best one apparently there was a slightly more flexible ver variation from the computer uh, the computer was a little bit more greedy to try to win the on double that's gammon. the play you'd have to roll it out to really know yeah um do you just leave one of them there to annoy a bit Duplicate aces? No, probably not a big deal. You could. Okay. You know, the interesting thing here is the gammon value is not necessarily one because just winning one point and getting into Crawford is pretty good also. So probably gammon value is only about 0.7. Yeah, which is still... Still good. Still good. You still, still like to get a gammon and yes. end the match and yes. go home. Go but out to also, lunch and... It's also important. <laughs> <laughs> it's also nice to just win in them. Win a single and get to crawl for it. Uh -huh. Good play, Mario. Yeah, he doesn't want to have an unflexible position. It's completely risk-free slotting. So, excellent play. Mario's rolled so many jokers in this match, I, I don't think I could name them all. <laughs> and Peter's had a couple, too. Yeah. Um, I think Mario has played a really good match. Oh. Uh, he had some super tough cube action yep. decisions. And... Uh, but what can we say about Peter? You know, by the way, three three point four is nothing to sneeze at. No, he's yeah, he's been. <laughs> a, you're really playing so the game. Far. You are, um, and he had some tough cube actions. Yes, and and Peter has just played uh, fantastically well. I would say. I, I mean, he's got. He had look, one checker play blunder. My nickname match. for him is XG. What do you think? Yeah, <laughs> he's amazing. He's pretty amazing. Yeah. And we've seen the same kind of play from Kazuki this tournament. Yeah, Kazuki seems to be uh, coming into it. Coming into it. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be exciting to see if he can get some big results here uh -huh. this year. And Oliver Squire, with horrible time pressure last night, played under three. Oliver is getting really good as well. He yeah. played a three and a half in the UBC. Yeah, another and college he, kid. He even made it to the uh, to the quarterfinals of the UBC. Right. Where he was knocked out by, uh, who was it? I forgot. But one of the top, top players knocked him I out. Think, I think, I think Zed Zedek. Was it Stanek or Dirk? I, I thought think. it was Zedek. I oh, no, it was wrong. Mochi, I think. It was Mochi? It was Mochi who knocked him out, yeah. Mochi, of course, came back and he won the contender tournament in the first try. I've mentioned you know? that a couple of times. <laughs> Is it still December in Copenhagen against Sander? It's, it's probably going to be December in Copenhagen. Oh, great. We, we, we haven't settled anything uh -huh. uh, fully yet. Do you need uh, a commentator? Perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> I, I've never been to Denmark. 
<laughs> You've never been to Denmark? Never been to Denmark. Back, back in the capital? I the know, okay. I know. I, I, my, my good friend Carter keeps screaming at me, I got to go to Denmark. Yeah, you should. You should. Aside from the backgammon, he said, I got to go to Denmark. You will like it. Especially if you go in the spring or the summer. Uh huh. December is But you're actually inviting nice. me in the winter time, are you? Well, actually, December is quite nice too because you got the Christmas uh, thing. Uh huh. Christmas market. Sure. Uh, if we're lucky, we get snow. Not always, you know, but sometimes we can get lucky and have snow. Well, I'm from Chicago. I've seen snow. <laughs> All right. It's yeah. gin. No need it's to. It's gin. It's over. Yes. So, okay. Cold, cold, six away. One away, six away. Do you know the percentage here, Phil? Do I know the percentage? I'm guessing it's uh, 12%. 11. 11. Okay. 11. So not bad. Okay. Yeah. 11%. I know you play Game and Go. Now, does the gammon matter that much? Yes. Yes, it, it does. absolutely it does. does. That's the first thing I look at at Crawford. Very if you're good. on an odd number score, you really want a gammon. Yes. If you're on an even number score, you don't worry about it too much. And the logic is uh, that all post Crawford games are played for two points. So it really matters whether you're five away or four away because four away is just two games to win. Five away is three games to win. So yep. So. And Peter, I've seen so many players really trying for gammons when it didn't matter or not wearing, you know, yeah. <laughs> just not, they always think whenever it's Crawford, you try for a gammon and yeah, they're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. If if it's an odd number away, uh, that's, it's almost worthless to use, win that gammon. That's right. Well, it's worth 0.024%. Yeah. <laughs> that's what a free drop is worth. Oh, I would have made the two point and I would have been right. He did not make the two point there because he unstack. Now they're letting the transcriber catch up. But that last play, I it wasn't a big error, but he he came down, came down and made the nine and, and could have made the two. Yeah, and this is one of those positions where it's dangerous for Peter to split the back checks. Okay. I mean, worked out very nicely. <laughs> but he's out of timing, you know. We have a, yeah. another priming battle here. I think Peter can can actually win this one. Okay, he needs to play pure here, Peter. So what's the purest play? It's thirteen to nine, and then it's seven to five. Exactly. Six to you, four, you mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, seven. No, seven to five. Sorry. Ah, no, six oh, to four is wow, what? Wow, it's even. It's six to four. It's even that one. Six it's, to four. I, I was talking about a pure play that was yeah. even purer play, yeah. and I didn't even it, mention it. Yeah. Oh, double three. Wow. Very bad roll. What a roll for Mario. I mean, I feel... Uh, well, he's, I had should, his I share, he's had his share of jokers. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be biased here, but I yeah. feel bad for my countrymen. Yeah, I you understand. Know, Peter is in, a, in the... I feel bad for anybody who's been jokered a lot. Super high stakes uh, match, and yeah. he just has to endure joker after joker here from Mario. Yeah. And this is... I mean, he... Just a gin position. Oh, oh yeah, it's a gin position. You know, yeah. now he's left. Yeah. Work. Oh, why not? Is one? Okay, you have to think about this one. Is are we covering or coming out? I this cover. Is tough. This I is cover. tough. I mean, you don't need to win a gammon. I cover and it's wrong. You, it's wrong because you don't need to win a gammon. Ah. That's why you should just. I mean, yes. The, the pure priming moves are are worth more when you just have to win. Wow. And the cover was so natural to me. Yes. Wow. I wasn't really sure. I, I mean, I, I think I could have made the same mistake here, but at least I, I realized that it, it was a decision, yeah. you know? Keep in mind, he's playing very quickly. He doesn't have a lot of time. Oh, 28 seconds left. Yes, that's another. Okay. We got to cut him some slack for that. If Peter can get a six, he will have an ace point game. Ace point game is about 15%. With If you have timing. That's with the, the problem. Six, he would, he's down to 10% yeah. because he doesn't have timing. Yeah. Uh, kill, killing is okay. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's very efficient to make this move, uh -huh. and he he can still move a six on the other side of the board. There's the six. Ooh. That's a great shot. And I think now we're up to those. No, we're still. Uh, we're still at ten percent. Ten percent. Nothing much changed. Yeah. I guess because he crunched the six point, we still have bad timing. It, he wants small numbers. That's not. Good. That's not good for. Uh, okay, he's saving a six. He made that play really fast. Clear from the rear against the ace point game. Yeah, when I mean, you don't need a gammon particularly, why would you peel? Uh huh. Mm. 
now the reason you peel is you want to get to an even number on your high, highest point. It, that way the high doubles don't leave shot. He ran. Is there a it's chance? Not, I guess it's his last resort. Uh, right? that's, well, again, he didn't think very long about it either. He ran so quickly. Yeah, I think it was wrong, but I don't know about how much. This is not good. It was wrong. Either. Why would he do it? He's not the one under time pressure. He's got 10 minutes. Maybe he's hungry. Maybe that's why he's playing <laughs> fast. That's why I play fast. I want to do a quick interview of Mario if we have time. You should see that interview I had yesterday that's that's been posted. Uh -huh. of, of this uh, this young man. The best interview for back, Evan. What he's going to do for the game is almost as good as what you're doing for the game to promote back, Evan, from now on with his Sports Olympiad. Really incredible. Yeah, there's the, the handshake. Yep. And, uh, great match. What a, what great match. Feed. Look at those PRs. Yeah, Look at know, those PRs. Peter Luck did. factor is plus five, however. That, Peter did that is, everything yeah, he possibly he could. He did all he could. I mean, he made one blunder in game two or something. Yeah. <laughs> and that was yep. about it. You know? Yep. Then he played like a machine for the rest of the match. Yep. Here comes his fellow Germans, Andreas Humpke. Congratulations. Uh, congratulating Mario him. And let's winning. see if I can get him over here. You want to interview him? No, let's, I'll, I'll, I'll let you do that. Okay. I, I will get him. You, you can stay here. Okay, good. Uh, what a what a victory for Mario! Oh, wonderful victory for Germany! His his whole country was alive on that on that match. Fifty four thousand euro. Yes. Fifty six. No, it's uh, uh, fifty six. Fifty six thousand euro. First prize, incredibly, uh, incredible, high roller tournament. Let's see if we can get one of the players out here. Yeah. Stay tuned for some great matches. Again, I know I know Steve Sachs and. And Wilcox is going to be one of the matches. I don't know the what the other match will be. There he is. Have a seat. Congratulations. Fantastic match. Have a seat. Yeah. We're, we're, we're being this is Mario, our, our winner, the super jackpot, and a very wealthy man. Will you buy me dinner now? <laughs> always, always. Always, always buy me dinner. So tell me, what are you what are you feeling right now? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, w I was trading uh, a lot. Yeah, uh -huh. I think nine to three. You had a, uh, we think we nine to one. Yeah, we figured you had ten percent equity in the match, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, after this, I had a streak. Yeah. Wow. I lost no no game. You yeah. may and have I had rolled some really jokers like double five from the bottom. Oh, and you had some it was great jokers. Same like in New York. Yeah, I rolled that, uh, and a super important double five at the end again. Uh, at the end against Victor. Against Victor in New York, I remember that. It's my yeah, favorite number. Okay, they talk about how you're lucky to get those jokers. You will never get those jokers unless you put yourself in position to where you can get the joker. I mean, yeah, it's not, of, and, and then yeah. you play them well. But look, I, but you I played saw, well, though. You played Peter very did, well. Uh, I saw during the play that Peter, yes, uh, he played very well. Yeah. I oh, guess, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Peter played like. He is uh, one of the best I have a new players. nickname for him. You know how Paul McGrill was X22? Yeah. I'm calling him XG. <laughs> he played well, but you played great too. You had you had one really, uh, really poor prime versus prime in the very like the second game where you came out with a one six and hit, which is clearly wrong. You were supposed to make the prime. That was that hurt your PR. Oh, the, the, the bar point. Yes. So I, that's I that was that hurt your P. But you take away that one and you made it quick. It was just something you just didn't see. If you take away that blunder, you you probably played the two. I mean, you're. I'm very impressed with your skill, and you've Thank only you. been playing match play what a year or two. You, this is kind of new for you to play. You work on match play, isn't it? I, I work on match play since about nine months. Nine months? Yeah. Oh my god! No, I, I played twenty years ago. I played tournaments, but uh, over the last ten years, I um, usually I played only one tournament uh -huh. a year. Uh -huh. But uh, since New York. Yeah, I started to play a little bit more. So this is this year my fifth tournament. I've been working on my match play for 46 years, <laughs> and I can't come close, <laughs> come close to your yeah, skill level. <laughs> I, I played backgammon a lot also before, but uh -huh. not so many tournaments. Yeah, but you got a, you got another thing going for you. It's IQ. You've proven yourself. You're a very smart man. I Thank think you. I've never known. A, you. I've never known a dumb giant in my life. And you're certainly. Are you on the Giants list this year? 
No, no, no. You're going to be the one, be one time I was How could you in not two, be? 2001. I, I know why. You don't play enough tournaments. But this year you told me you're going to start coming to more. We're going to see you in Dubai. And we'll probably see yeah. you. And we'll see yeah, you sure. at the Nordic, maybe. Yes. And we'll see you at Cyprus. Cyprus. Well, I mean, you're going to be high on my list for the Giants list next year. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Spend the money well. Okay. Buy me dinner. <laughs> okay. And we'll see you more. Good luck in the main tournament, too. Yeah, thank you. How are you doing there? Uh, second chance. Second chance. Well, you can still win the, you can still be the world champion. That's what we oh, love about this game. It's a long way. Good luck. By the way, it's nice to see a nice guy win. You're, you're one of the good guys. Thank you. Congratulations. Stay tuned. We've got some big matches coming up.
<clears throat> well, hi there. Bill Simborg again from Monte Carlo. I'm privileged to be doing the commentary on an amazing match that's coming up between two giants of backgammon. When I say giants, that means they made the giants list in the top 32 in the world. Yeah, I guess 64 is also a giant because I'm on the top 64. So let's call that giant too. Uh, very proud to be there. These guys are in the in the top echelon of the world. Wilcox Snelling, and who was number one in the world at one point and gave up backgammon for a lot, long time. And we are very privileged to see him come back. He's been competing uh, fiercely <laughs> uh, and uh, doing incredible uh, things with his PR and his skills and ability and proving again that he's certainly one of the top players in the world and contending for those top spot. He really is an amazing, amazing player. Steve Sachs is his opponent, uh, and Steve has been on the Giants list. I think he's been as high as number six in the world. He's been up there for a long time. He's part of that L.A. trio of Steve Sachs, Joe Russell, and Bob Wachtel, three incredibly great players. They played each other all the time. They learned from each other. They worked together. They traveled together, and uh, they're virtually unbeatable. I think they both admit that Wachtel probably had the better PR and, and, and some international results, although Joe Russell is a world champion. Uh, Steve has been very, very impressive in his wins and his skill level, and very, very uh good teacher as well. He's part of the Backgammon Learning Center uh, that Perry Gartner and I founded. Uh, Mochi's a part of that group. Dirk Scheman is a part of that group. Uh, I could go on and on with a list of superstars that are our teachers. Frank Talbot. Uh, I won't go on and on. I'll stop. Uh, but he's a great thinker of the game and I had the privilege of recently doing a, uh, recently, last Friday, uh, in New York, we gave a lecture at a club. We had 35 people uh, who had never uh, at a club that never had a backgammon program before. We're helping to start a backgammon program there, thanks to Jason Briggs' promotion of backgammon in these private clubs. There's a whole underground of people that you never see at these tournaments that are playing a, a club, club to club, and in, within their clubs. And these are all, of course, very wealthy people at very exclusive private clubs. So I'm not privileged to say where I'm doing this and where we're doing this, but I'm. Uh, Steve and I are both on, in the circuit and lecturing at a lot of these clubs a lot of the time. In fact, I'm commuting back and forth from Florida to New York uh, and sometimes Chicago and, and Boston uh, to help promote the game in these clubs. So it's really growing the game in ways we haven't seen publicly. Uh, but Steve's a big part of that. Uh, PR-wise, you have to favor Wilcox. In fact, I think he's a 120 favorite uh, on the betting odds if you go to uh, Morton Holmes betting site, um, which, uh, let me see, I think I have that site handy for you. I've given it a couple times, but you can actually make a bet on this match. <laughs> you can make a bet on anything going on here in Monte Carlo. It's, it's kind of fun. It's kind of interesting. Where is that? Um, here it is, clubgourmet.dk. And when you go to that site, it's going to tell you not to go to the site. It's going to give you all these warnings. Ignore them. It's safe. It's Morton Holmes' site. Your money is safe and secure. He has a long, long reputation for doing the book at Monte Carlo, and you can place a bet. It's very interesting, very fun. Um, so we, we know that Wilcox is a slight favorite, but uh, it, we've seen some matches here, including the very first round where a, a new player uh, with very little experience and kind of new to back M and beat the world champions, Sander Lyloff, uh, in the first match, um, Galen Hall. So uh, he's a great story. It's almost like a Chris Moneymaker in poker story for having played for three months, comes to his first tournament and beats the world champion in the first round. So, and he actually did pretty well after that, too. He got pretty far. So this would be an exciting match. This is the third round undefeated. The way this tournament works is the undefeated, if you lose one match, you go into the fighter's bracket. And if you win the fighter's bracket, you play one match with the undefeated champion uh, player for the championship. Uh, it used to be you had to win twice. That got changed, and I like it. The only difference is they, the one who was undefeated gets a little bonus on the money. But the championship title goes in one match, which is much, so much better for all of us to see one match determine the championship and, and 
just just much more exciting event that way. So I think they made a great change. Um, I'll watch the chat right now. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. We're waiting for Wilcox. You see Steve at the table. Steve is, I think, pretty much nothing but a backgammon player. However, we I've been teaching him gin rummy, and now he gives me a decent game of gin rummy. I consider myself to be a better gin rummy player than backgammon player, but I teach both. But Steve also has a hobby of photography. He's been to most of the ballparks, almost all the U.S. baseball parks, and taken pictures at all of them. He's been traveling the world lately with Jason Briggs, and he's coached Jason and Jason's son, Charlie, as have I. <clears throat> ah. All right. Here we go. I don't know the schedule today, but I'll let you know as soon as I know. That's Steve playing the white checkers on the top of your screen and Wilcox at the bottom of the screen. I don't have any help right now because everybody's playing the major tournament and whether they, even they won and lost in the side events, they're all playing. So I'm on my own. But we do have an XG feed. So I've got me and XG. I'm going to let the game unfold and let's see what happens. Very simple standard so far. That's interesting. I might have been made the anchor, but it's clearly right to hit. Come down. In the early game, it's as simple as one, two, three. Steve likes to say it. One, can I hit? Two, can I make a point? And three, can I escape a back checker? In the early game, that seems to be your hierarchy in pretty much that order most of the time. But I believe that all generalities are false, so there's plenty of exceptions. Steve always had that funny rolling style over the side. I, I could tell just from the hand if it's Steve. Wilcox lives in Costa Rica. He's in sports betting. He's got a brilliant mind and brilliant math mathematician. And I don't know anybody that knows take points and match equities and numbers is any better than Steve does. He knows it all. If you've ever seen Steve socially in chouettes or even casual match play or any match play, he probably takes... 30 to 40 pictures a match if it's not being recorded and then puts them all in and studies every single one of them. And he has the courtesy to send them to whoever he's playing with along with his analysis after every time. Puts a tremendous amount of work and study into his game. The anchor is critical. I think this is a cube. I would cube this. It's not a double. 0 0.011. I would be wrong by 0.011. Now, why did he plus plus it and made me look worse? I told him I don't ever want him to plus plus it. It makes me look worse. <laughs> when it gets more accurate. I would have doubled this. I see a lot of market losers. Oh, he did too. Oh, they got a nice they got this nice little cube they're using. What is the, oh, it's a jade cube. Yes. Jade cube but made by um, Morgan Simpson, I believe, brought those over. Double looks pretty darn good now, doesn't it? I saw a lot of market losers. I thought I I really thought it was a double. XG didn't agree, so but Steve liked it. I don't be I don't mind making the same mistake as Steve Stacks would make. Wilcox wish he had passed it now. I don't think this two is too critical. I wouldn't waste a lot of time on the clock. And XG agrees. It's less than 1% difference between the plays. You want to use clock management. We saw in the last match, Mario got very short of time. Certainly didn't hurt his play, though. He played great. He won the super jackpot if you missed it against Peter Jess Thompson. 
who played a, under two PR. <clears throat> I believe that's a 3-2. Yeah, the dice is a 3-2. It's a little bit of a glare on that one dice. Oh, you can look at the XG feed and see the 3-2 very clearly. That's a trick. Look look on your screen. And uh, as Mark Olson pointed out, the brackets, I was publicizing, to every, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, look at this play, look at that play, Shades of Jim Pasco, he's going super back game, Bazooki, and he's forced to hit really, or, or bury the check, he's almost forced to hit here, he has to hit something. And that's exactly what Wilcox wanted. That's why he made this play. He's trying to time the back game. A 2-3 back game needs about 100 pip timing. He's nowhere near that, and he wants to get there. He's only down 64 pips, so he wanted to get hit more. How many people would have broken their six-point there? That was beautiful, beautiful play. I love those kind of plays. <clears throat> I learned those plays playing Pasco Gammon. And look what Steve's doing. He's making it harder to continue this hitting battle. Coming up there is very important <clears throat> so that eventually when he can run out with the six, he can still keep the three point. I love these back game battles. It's my favorite. That's why I invented Pasco game and I named it after Jim Pasco. It's a big, deep back game and you, you'll see a lot of top players in their spare time playing that game because it's fun and you can't use XG to help you. It's just off the charts. This is not great for Will. He would have liked to hit there, leave blots, try to time it. He's now in trouble time-wise unless he rolls some big doubles. That play of going to the ace point that Steve did, I, I needed to take study that more. It's usually wrong, but if Steve did it, it must be right. <clears throat> double threes. <clears throat> Just terrible. That was a great double by Steve, wasn't it? By Steve and me? Hindsight's always right. You want to bring your checkers into the higher points so that it takes longer to leave a shot and hold your opponent in longer as well. So you don't really want checkers on low points. So you roll a roll that brings it into the six or five point. You just grab it. This is all forced. He had no choice. Makes the ace. A four-point board is not great, but it's enough to still have a chance if you get the shot. <clears throat> and he's got the double shot. And with a four-point board, he could hit. He still has some winning chances as a result. I think they're letting the transcriber catch up. That's what this is about. Yep, in fact, looks like they're rebooting Extreme Gammon. What's going on? He... It's so hard to do that job. Aviv from Israel doing it. He's brilliant. I used to do this job myself at Turner. I did it at the World Championships. I can't tell you. It's the hardest job in backgammon, doing live transcription. <clears throat> the fastest one I know at this is Ben Friesen, and he's great at it. I think he lost his. He lost XG. He may be starting again from here. That's a shame. Maybe his computer crashed. <clears throat> we have super fast computers here. That's not the problem. What a time to get to have to pause right before the double shot. Dice on the checkers, no good. <clears throat>
And a very, very poor roll. So we probably aren't going to have a good XG feed for this match. You'll have to rely on me. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> well, that's why I'll start looking at the chat more. If we have a really interesting position or cube action, somebody please run it and let me know. Do you volunteer here or do you go to the ace? I would volunteer. Going to the ace and putting another checker on the ace, I really don't like. I think this is a place where you volunteer. <clears throat> That's what he's thinking about. It, it's not too bad to get hit now. It might be worse to get hit later. Nope. He does not volunteer. Okay. Probably not going to get any worse or better later, so maybe it's just okay. If you're Wilcox now, you're thinking about how do I not lose a gammon because the wins are not completely off the table, but the odds of winning <clears throat> are so poor, all you think about is how do I not get gammoned? Forced. Sixes and sevens. There we go. There's a six. Make the point. S Steve comes in 75% of the time here. I think he comes out, get that checker out of there. Yeah, get it into play in the outfield. <clears throat> I would go to the 14. That's what he's doing to get more efficient coverage of the outfield from there in case Steve comes out. Steve's dancing is not great for Steve. It's going to really helped Wilcox get off this gammon. And you can see he's not playing for containment. He would keep the checker spread if he wanted to really try to hit Steve. Well, he's just trying to make sure he doesn't get gammon. Steve's uh, not happy about the dancing, I'm sure. <clears throat> There's not much danger staying in. I mean, what's going to hurt you? Double four? That's about it. So there's not too many rolls where you're going to get hit or pointed on on the two point here because he's lost all of, Steve's lost all of his spares, <clears throat> which argues for maybe he shouldn't have gone to the ace point on that last play that he did. I would not have done it, but Steve did it. I'm probably wrong. If you're trying to win, you hit. If you're trying to get off the gammon, you point. And I would make the point. I wouldn't hit. I would make the point and then go come up to get out of the back uh, from the back. Page twenty three, twenty two. Oh, pick and pass. That wasn't on my radar. I, I didn't like the play. That's throwing another checker away and exposing some blots. But it's a reasonable play. Certainly is worth looking at. It was not on my radar. And it should have been. You should be considering every play. Another 3-1 dance. Wow, Steve's not going to like the 3-1's usually a good roll. He's getting a little tired of that roll. By the way, now there's some winning chances for Wilcox. Making another point and having Steve back there. Another 3-1. Oh, my God. I don't, I don't mean to sound repetitive, repetitively redundant, but he keeps rolling it. There are winning chances now for Wilcox. This is amazing. This would be an amazing victory. I don't know what his winning odds were at one point in this game, but they had to be close to 8%, maybe. <clears throat> Finally, he comes in. <clears throat> A two for Wilcox would actually be big here. How do you play this? 
just get off the gammon, bring it in, don't get hit. <clears throat> Very few gammons now. And Wilcox actually could do some winning here. This this is not uh this is no longer gin for Steve. <clears throat> Throwing those checkers on the east point burned him. I, I can't wait to look back at the you know, he did that time he slotted the ace and the time he went back down on the ace. I think both of those cost him, certainly are costing him now. You going to give him a direct seven and burn another checker? I am. I need every pip in this race. I do not do that. It's an eight. <laughs> Double twos doesn't work, so there's five eights. Okay. And he can bring this home now. I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have wasted the pips. You got an even race. The pip count's critical. Well, now, instead of leaving a direct, I think I cleared the three point. <clears throat> Steve is one of the fastest pip counters in the world. And I mean that. I've seen a lot of them. He's way up there with Karen Davis and a few others I've seen. Art Benjamin. That's my play. Will is right in this game. He was playing Gammon Save and all of a sudden, because of all those dances, he's right in the game. Hmm. This is not easy. Hmm. <clears throat> You're less likely to get hit by going forward. You have 17 shots here and 15 shots if you go forward. So it's two less shots, but your odds of getting a shot go way down. And you're costing yourself two pips in the race and more wastage if you stay. I don't know the answer. But I promise you Wilcox will get it. This is the kind of mathematical calculation where he is. he shines. He's up there with anybody. This is not an easy play for me. Okay. He minimizes shots. He thinks he might still win this race. They both have a lot of wastage with those checkers on the ace and deuce. Oh, and he hits. But he has to leave a shot if he hits. Here's a question. If he doesn't hit, he's favored in the race, but not by that much. If he does hit, he's giving him... 12 shots to hit him back, but if he doesn't hit him back, he's got a much better race. That's right. It's going to go there. Do you hit or not? Do you lift or not? I think you don't hit. It's my gut. But that's a gut. That's not a mathematical calculation like you should be making here. And I would make that mathematical calculation if I knew how. <laughs> <clears throat> This is a tough one. <clears throat> Wilcox taking off his sweatshirt. He's already sweating from the pressure of the match. I think that Wilcox has been under a little more pressure than this <clears throat> a few thousand times in his life. He used to be a big money player back in the day, too. When I lived in Chicago, <clears throat> and his father-in-law was Gary Kay, he come to Chicago. He was in some pretty sizable money matches around the world, as well as being a top match player. He decided to hit. Could be right. I have no idea. Can't wait to see. And it was, turned out to be, uh, in hindsight, incredibly well. Stopped it. Cost him 11 pips. But there are a lot of repeaters. That was the other problem with the hit. <clears throat> That's not a bad miss. If you're going to miss, roll 12 pips. <clears throat> he would rather hit, though. <laughs> Very interesting first game we've got here. Two great, great players. I wish we could see the PRs. I promise you they're both under three, maybe under two. I haven't seen a major possible blunder, I don't believe, unless I'm missing something. 
besides brains? I, when I say that, somebody else says, oh, what am I missing? Oh, brains. Okay. Steve takes a 2-0 lead. Not not particularly significant, but it's emotionally rewarding. And Wilcox missed two shots. Let's change the scoreboard, please. They got to change the scoreboard. They're writing the score on the paper, but they didn't change. There we go. There you go, Steve. Thank you. You must have heard me. <laughs> he channeled me. And by the way, on your score sheet, and Wilcox is the one that asked me this, can you write the away score? The answer is at this tournament, you can. Depends on if the tournament director allows you to. You can put down the away score. And Wilcox was the one, I he asked me, and I said, well, I'm not the tournament director. I'll ask, I'll ask uh, Mark Olson, and Mark Olson agreed. That's the way back end should be scored, by the away score. Don't take my word for it, though. It depends on the tournament director. A lot of tournaments won't allow it. <clears throat> I think, oh, no. No, I think you're supposed to come up to the 20 there. Whoa, we got XG back. Thank you. We got XG back. Nice to see. I, I, I guess we don't have it from the beginning, so we won't have an accurate reading of the PRs or the previous plays, I don't believe. <clears throat> Maybe so. Maybe they recovered the match. I don't know. <clears throat> uh, do you hit or do you make the 23? You make the 23. It's very big to have that 23 point. Half as many gammons is holding the ace point to hold the deuce point. Go from 15% to about 8% against the closed board. Nice roll. <clears throat> Kept his anchor and hit. That's a beautiful roll. <clears throat> this is not a good play. He's going to take it back. You go to either bar is about as close. Slightly better to go to your own bar, which I wouldn't have done because it strips my midpoint. I would go out to the 18, which is slight. Oh, 0.001. It's a toss up. I don't like stripping the midpoint. I like going out to the 18. This play is not good at all. Uncharacteristic. And not too complicated to play, an uncharacteristic mistake by Will. Every time Will sits down, I expect him to play at about 1.5, which is an unrealistic uh, expectation from anybody in a given match. He's certainly capable of doing it, but that's not your average match for anybody. No brainer, make the bar. <clears throat> Another no-brainer. Nothing else to do. Oh, I was. Steve was behind the ranch now in the race. Now he's up there. There's a hitting play here. You can make the three-point. If you come out, you can't get to safety. So for that reason, I think you come down and you hit. But I'm wrong. I am wrong. You don't hit. You keep your structure. 13 to 5, 2. I would never have. It's, and it's right by a mile. Seems like such a. Oh, I hit the wrong guy. I had to roll. I'm used to a baffle box. I hit the wrong player on roll. That's my excuse, right? Let me, let me, let me have a break there. Oh, there is a super joker. And that's going to be a cube giver. <clears throat> now is he too good? 
You know it's a pass. You start with that. Then you ask yourself if you're too good. If that's the real PRs for this match so far, it's a pass. Okay. I knew it's a pass. I wasn't positive about the too good part. He could easily anchor with a 4-3, 2-1. You could have some trouble bringing him around. There's some, there's some market gainers. That's roles that could, <clears throat> or sequences that could give Steve a, a take. I mean, Wilcox a takes. So that's why it's not too good. This is a pretty big pass. No reason why Wilcox shouldn't take his time. He's going to pass it, though. I'll give five to one odds that he passes. Any takers? I'm watching the chat. Any takers? It's easy for us to look at the screen, <clears throat> CXG, and say it's a 12% error to take over the board. Maybe it's not so easy. A lot of gammons here, 33% gammons. Even if those are PRs are starting in this game, it's still pretty impressive, isn't it? Both playing under two. And he passed. Good decision. Absolutely right. I won my five to one odds bet. Okay, Steve takes a 3-0 lead, and I'm learning, even in a 17-point match, that's going to matter some, particularly on cube action. Probably not going to change your checker play any, but it really has an effect on cube action. We saw a couple of positions rolled out where if the score was 0-0, it's one way, and if at 3-0, it's a different way. Nice roll. Double threes is always good. You tend to make the five point if there's a blot out elsewhere in the board. <clears throat> Otherwise, you often may, would make the three point instead of the five point. But with that blot, you're fairly safe, not worrying too much about it. Your opponent hitting you in the outfield when you leave the blot on your eight point. <clears throat> Six one. You can't see the roll. Thirteen seven. You're supposed to slot here. Part of the reason is the blot on on the ace point. You got the you got the ace right. It's tempting to slot the four point, but you're gonna slot the bar. That's the point you want to make. Nice play. That's it. That's it. That's why they call him Wilcox. He makes tough plays like this. And it pays off big time. Might even be a cube. Yep, there it is. Not much thought. Solid double, solid take. There's Steve pulling out his camera. See, even though this is recorded, he isn't going to wait. <clears throat> He's going to be up all night putting in all these pictures into XG, analyzing them, making comments, storing them away. And he'll probably share them with Wilcox and me if I want them. Big take. <clears throat> Big take. 
<laughs> in the background, by the way, in the lady in the white shirt, that's Wilcox's wife from Costa Rica. They have a child. I think it's, I think he's in college now. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. That is a very big blunder for Steve. Maybe the score made him do that. I don't know. That's not a normal kind of decision that Steve would make. That was quite a blunder. I'm very surprised. He's really good at those positions, too. <laughs> He's not going to like what it did to his PR. <clears throat> yeah, it went to 7 PR. He was under 1 PR, and he went to 7. That was really... That was really not a Steve Sachs play to drop that cube. <clears throat> okay, not sure what he was thinking. It might have been the score. He may have felt he didn't want to be take a gaminish cube when he's ahead. <clears throat> I'm not rooting for anybody. They're both friends of mine. I have a tremendous amount of respect for both of them. I didn't know Wilcox for many years while he was out of back MM in the last few years. We've talked a lot. We've communicated a lot. Seen him at tournaments. He doesn't come to many. This is his only major tournament. <clears throat> and he went to the UBC. And But because of the sports betting and the NBA basketball season, he can't travel that much. <clears throat> but everybody knows he's one of the best in the world. Has been for many years. <clears throat> Come in and hit. Or do you anchor? Nope. I mean, make the point. I would hit. You don't want your opponent to have his full roll there. This is looking cubish, cubanish. Yeah, I would double because I'm not sure if it's a take. I guess I'm taking because of the anchor, but I don't like having those checkers. Oh, it's a pass. It's a close pass, clearly a double, and not sure is a pretty good answer because it's only a .027 pass. So I wasn't sure of the take. Woolsey's Law tells me ship that cube. Ship it. So the double here is much easier. The tough decision is whether to take or not. So Steve should be having no problem giving the cube, and he doesn't. And Wilcox immediately passes, which is correct. <clears throat> Three checkers back and one on the bar and stacked and didn't have much of a, of a position to play. <clears throat> Well, there's one I would have gotten right. That's one. One for Phil. <clears throat> this is a very, very important match. And the undefeated in the world championship, these people have come halfway around the world to play this match. There's a lot of money involved, prestige. No matter how much you play backgammon, it's really special to be playing in the World Championships in Monte Carlo. This match means a lot to both of them. The more, the further you go in this tournament, I've been there. I've actually been this far and farther. Wilcox has never won the World Championship, I don't believe. He's not a world champ, pretty sure. And Steve, I know, has not. And they're both on track. They're both on track. You get by this match. <clears throat> Mochi and Sander and Jorgen Grandstead, they've all have they're all either out of the tournament or one loss. There were twelve world champions, and I was thinking, what are the odds of one of them winning again? And after the first round there were four left. <laughs> Eight of the twelve had been lost in the very first round. It, it was really a lot of upsets in this in this tournament. Nice play. Make the make the point. Clearly right. Nothing comes close. <clears throat> We've seen some very inefficient clock usage by some very good players in previous matches that I've been streaming. 
where they have almost no time at the end. And <clears throat> that's very, very poor clock management. And the reason I say it's poor is that is because I we can recall them taking a long time on some simple plays early in the match that you just shouldn't waste your clock. This is right on the edge of a double, so he's right to think about it. Right on the edge. Point oh point oh one five. No double. Nice double though. Easy, easy, easy take. He sees market losers. A hit. A hit and a and no hit back. Here he goes. He's gonna hit with a five four. Or is he gonna just make the point? I think you have to hit. You hit and you don't get hit back, you've lost your market. A lot more gammas when you hit too. Okay, let's see. We can see XG now. Hitting is clearly right. You actually win more as well. Very nice play, Steve. You got him outboarded four to four points to one. That screams at hitting. And Steve sees that. And he does not hit back and he rolls actually a pretty bad number. He he'd almost rather dance than roll a two six here. Very, very, very bad number. He covers with fours. He hits with ones and twos. It's a lot of numbers. Six is also hit. It's the right play. He's got the right play in mind. I need help. I need help. You got it. a boy. I got Joe Russell, world champion and co-teacher. Steve made a very big blunder on a cube. Uh, he was playing at 065 and then went to 7 PR on one cube decision. That was really poor. Otherwise, they're both playing great. You can see the score. <clears throat> I mentioned Joe Russell earlier. Under one. Yeah. Not to be surprised. Well, anytime somebody plays under one, it's surprising. <laughs> it's, but early in the match, it's something. Yeah, it's early. It's early. Look at this play. I love it. When you have them outboarded, you need to blitz any way you can. That was a big roll for Will. Steve would got to come in and hit again. And he does Coming not. He covers. He covers, yeah. If Will stays out. It's, it's the end of the game. And he did. And that. Oh, he didn't. No, he was already in. He oh, only had, one, in. He only had, he had one checker. I thought he had two on the bar. No, he only had one on the bar. Okay. And uh, this is a big turnaround, actually. Very big turnaround. <clears throat> Although you didn't see the cube, it was a very small cube and a huge take. But I liked Steve Cube, and XG liked it too, by just a little bit. It was a gambling cube. <clears throat> so, what's going on with the pip count here? You can see the pip count on the screen. Wait. See it? No, I don't In the see normal it. place where you would normally have the pip count. Right, upper right, but above the board. Upper right and lower right. Let's see it. Where is it? Oh, okay. I'm looking on the XG instead of on the board. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. I got it. I see you got it. it. I got it. We got it. Uh oh, where's that remote? Thank you, Tara Mendocino, for saving us again. She, she's amazing. Big see, turnaround, see, redouble pass. These trails by eight. Uh, you can be deceived into thinking these positions are stronger than they are because you've, you've got a five-point board versus a two-point board. He took it. He took the cube. <clears throat> wow. So that's two big cube errors for Steve so far. That's not characteristic of Steve's play. That position was a tough position. I, I, there you go. 
probably not too unhappy at this point. Uh-huh. Especially leading, I would have dropped that cube like a rock. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's a big return. I think you point at him, don't you? Absolutely. You got no other option. Yeah, you got no, no, no. You got to, you got to point on him. You'll find it. Anyway, that, that previous position when Steve took the four cube. Uh huh. It's, it, it's not real easy to figure that out. It's easy if you see XG. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but it's not easy for a human to figure that out. I got you. Two point board versus five point board. You're only down eight pips in the race. Hey, you got an acre. The problem with the, the position is you might have to play off the 13 point the next roll or bust your board. Uh -huh. that's, that's that's the weakness. Then. I promise you Steve took a picture and he's going to learn from it. Those are two things we know. Steve never stopped studying the game. And he's going to remember this cube. <laughs> He'll remember this game. Oh, I would definitely play 8-7 yeah. here. I'm going to cancel my dinner plans. I was supposed to have dinner with Steve tonight. If he loses this match, I don't want to have dinner with him tonight. No, oh, that's a great, great shot for Steve. Still under tremendous mm. pressure, but he decreases the gamut chances significantly. Two point? Yeah. There's nothing, nothing else. else close. There's nothing else. Nothing else. Hit and cover. Make a point. You'll find it. There's no. You'll see why. You just Anything get hit else too much. It's a massive blunder. Yeah. I don't even know what he's looking at. I guess you should always take your time to make sure you're finding the right play. But that one looked pretty obvious. Yeah. Critical roll. And a performance. A wonderful performance. Uh, could be a turnaround performance very easily. If he doesn't come in here, I don't know what's going on cube-wise. And he didn't. He didn't. Now, now what? We've got, now, now what? He's got fives and twos. And this, this is massive. This is massive. Fives, twos, and sixes out. It's not a redouble, but it's close. It's very close. I'll bet you if the score were even or reversed, it would be a big redouble. Well... Another factor to figure is as fine a player as Steve is, Wilcox is probably one of the top three in the world, three or four in the world. Uh -huh. And Wilcox is not going to be too thrilled with taking an A-cube here. That is a factor. You're playing somebody really great. You want to pressure him with the cube. But Steve, does Steve think that way, or is he just trying to do the right play? Is he thinking about, hey, I'm oh, playing yeah. Wilcox? He'll absolutely think about the fact he that he's playing Wilcox. Okay. I mean, he's not going to give, he's not going to change much because uh -huh. of Wilcox. Uh -huh. Because he's a fine player himself. He's not going to change much. Yeah. But if he's going to change for anyone, it's going to be people like Wilcox or Mochi. And this is Wilcox, I'll guarantee you, has a fairly good chance of passing this if Steve doubles. I think, I think, I think he'll take. I, I'm, I mean, I'd make it three to three to one, four to one. He takes, but the, the chance that he might pass. I think the score would make him take two, though. Being down, dropping, and being down eight to one. You go. What he got about ten, twelve percent equity. I don't think Steve will double, but I don't. You know, this 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 is very. I don't think Steve will double, and I think Wilcox will take. But Steve oh, did he double, did double, and Wilcox, and Wilcox grabbed it, grabbed it instantly, instantly. Good for Wilcox and good for Steve. I think he, I think a, a .04 mistake is not really a mistake. That's a that's fine a, shot. That's a, a very good roll. Gets moves a lot of wood. Twenty-one nine is correct. He doesn't roll a four. You're going to pick up another checker. You don't want to throw checkers away. And you don't want to leave that checker inside. That gives Wilcox a super joker double fours and other fours. Well, this is this is very close. Point oh oh four. Good play, Steve. It might be right. either one is either one. As long as you don't oh, no 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 no. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's that we know is right. You gotta move that checker off the twenty one. And the last one really isn't 
isn't too important. They're so close. That's good. Nice play. That's the number one play, Steve. Should I go in and tell him? What a big turnaround. One thing to keep in mind is when you're in doubt between two plays, make the play that's going to be best for you if your opponent doesn't come in. That's a good axiom. You get more shots by playing to the nine if he doesn't come in. Because the odds are he's so, not going to come in, so you're playing the odds. You always play the odds, Joe. Okay, I mentioned earlier that there's nothing like Monte Carlo for being under pressure in a tournament. Do you agree with that? Is this the most Absolutely. pressure you ever feel in a tournament? You know, I, honestly, I don't feel that much pressure. Because <laughs> you won the damn thing and you came yeah. in and you've been in the finals that, that, twice. That, that, could, that could be it, but... You know, you're you're I've immune been to it. I've been for so long. Uh -huh. I, it, it's I had the most fun maybe in Monte Carlo. Okay, you don't feel pressure though. And Steve, okay. Steve found the right play by the way. Yeah, he did. Excellent, Steve. He did very well. Very well done. I promise you, Steve's under pressure. Steve's under pressure in a five dollar shoeet. <laughs> He's always under okay. pressure. So, so here I'd get off the double four. Yeah, he saw what double fours could do to you. You missed the Super Jackpot finals where Mario had like eight jokers to kill Peter Jess, who played under two PR and still lost. I, but Mario played well, too. He left him double fours. He left the double four. You shouldn't say it out loud. If he'd rolled it, I would have told Steve later you said it. He's thinking about the double fours, too. Believe me. Well, here I would play 12 and 5. Get off the double four again. It says 18 to 9, huh? Yeah. The 12 and 5 is really close. Not, not too bad. It gives you a chance to pick up that third checker is what he would like to do, yeah, too. Both plays do that. But yeah. this, this plays... Yeah. Ooh, double three. He, Steve really would like a two here. Or make the point. There's the two. That's big. Very big. And now, now get off a double four. Can continue to pay off the double four? No, there, now there's no okay. reason to. You, right. It's just you got the gammon anyway, you, even if you never make the four point. Probably. You're going to pick and pass or hit loose? going to hit loose. Pick and pass. What if he can just if he can just hit loose, he'll do that. He shouldn't have gotten off a double four. Oh, oh he well, hits. He does he have hits. to hit loose. He's hit. He hits. He definitely has to hit loose. Yeah. Now if Will had a five point board, you'd think about you know it. What I think I would I think I would hit loose and just and just play the uh You wouldn't go to the six? I don't know. I guess I would. Hitting loose and playing. Oh, no. Hitting loose is wrong. Look at that. I can't see the numbers, but hitting loose is the ninth best play. But it, it, I can't see how, how big a, how big an error it is. Oh, wow. I wish you'd scroll down, please. Wow. Wouldn't you hit loose? Yes. I wouldn't hit loose if he had a five-point board, but with a four-point board, I'm hitting loose. I guess you don't. There you go. He hit loose. The last one, and I'd make this play. I This is exactly what I would have done. How bad was it? I don't see it. So we don't know. Uh-oh. We got action. With an 8-cube, every single roll is critical here. This is an 8-cube we're looking at in a 17-point match. Every single dance, every single 4 is really really big this is huge these guys came halfway around the world for this match Woo. boy does he want a four does steve want a one or a four each roll steve has 20 numbers to come in and wilcox has 11. So oh in and hit in and hit no hits wrong again wow Wow. 0.071. Wow. No, Steve, you should come in. Oh, he's taking a picture again. I mentioned this early, 
earlier. He's going to study every one of these. You and I hit, don't we? Yeah, I, I would. I would definitely make a blunder on this. Yep, me hit. too. But Steve's going to find the right. And it's blood. big of you to admit that too. Not big of me because I'm not. I'm not Joe Russell. I don't know. <clears throat> that anchor is going to be very costly for gammons and maybe wins. Okay, you button up. You make a point. No, you don't make the point. Yeah, here, just start clearing checkers before he comes in. Uh huh. Yeah, if you make what it, you, you only got to clear like it. What you have done is yeah. like duplicated the double four and bring another checker in, but you can't do that. So uh -huh. just play ten to five and sixteen fourteen. That's the right play. You found it. <laughs> In the old days when Wilcox was number one, you were playing him weren't back then, weren't you? Yes. And you were very active. Was he was he far and away better than everybody, or just a little better than a few of the others? Oh, I don't know. That that's hard to say. Okay. Uh, he was. was he? he was yeah. probably the the best money player in the world for a number of years. Uh huh. That's what I would say. Uh I said that earlier. He was famous as a money player. I used to remember when he came to Chicago with Gary Kay, his father-in-law, and his father-in-law set him up in some big games. <clears throat> Don't forget Svobo was playing for money back then, too, wasn't he? He was. He's had to be way up there as a great money player. Still is. That's something we have. Wilcox yeah. was one of the most dedicated players. Uh huh. Meticulous. So he he took over your job, right? Okay, he's involved in sports betting. Okay. And no, that's not true. I was more of a software developer. Oh, you're a software developer. I see. He's a he's an NBA specialist. NBA basketball specialist. Yes. One of the most knowledgeable people in the world, NBA basketball. Then you must have heard of my friend Michael Jordan. Okay. It is really good for Wilcox. This game has not gone as well as Steve liked, but he's still not unhappy that he gave an A-cube. Still a huge favorite in this game, 85%. Do you slot? I would slot. I yeah. think the bot <clears throat> says no, but I would do it. I, I think the bot says it's even because it hasn't been rolled out or anything. It, it could get an indirect shot, which might have made me afraid to slot. And that's exactly what's going to happen. No, that, oh, an indirect. Shot. Yeah, he's going to. That's why that 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 was one reason I might not have slotted. <clears throat> Woo! One digit off. That could have been one digit off from who wins the world championship. We're getting pretty much in the later rounds now. That's a great shot. Yep. <clears throat> Don't say six two out loud, right? Because that could make it happen. But that's the only roll. One roll, two rolls out of 36. That would really be bad for Steve here. And he gets a 6-1. And again, one digit off. What a difference a pip makes. You know, what's really impressive is the, the speed with which Wilcox took that AQ. I mean, he took it instantaneously. Well, keep in mind that he had all the time that Steve was thinking about doubling That's, to decide. Yeah. It wasn't like he didn't have a lot of time to think about it. And by the way, that's one of the most important things I teach my students. And Joe is one of our teachers now, too, at the Back Evan Learning Center. When you're playing with a clock, use your opponent's time. Don't just sit there twiddling your thumbs. When it's his turn, you should be thinking about what you're going to do. And that's exactly what happened with Wilcox. Still, it's impressive when you know if you get gammon there. Yeah, it's an eight cube. Over. Yeah, this is an eight cube in the world championships, and you 
gobble it up without using a second on the clock. I see what you're saying. Here he should play five to five to three. All you care about here is what's the fewest shots. Well, it's the same number of shots either way. It's just double jeopardy. Good rule of thumb in, in these positions are when you're clip. Yeah, this is good play, Steve. In, in the same position when you're clearing the six point against the five point, you, you bear checkers off as long as you have a spare on the four. When you don't have a spare on the four, you then you avoid double jeopardy. Uh huh. That's all. That's mm -hmm. like um, almost 100 percent true. It's as good an axiom as you can uh -huh. ever have. Is that in Wachtell's books? The getting in the game to the end? No. 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 Nothing. Nothing about it. You just learned that from. Still yeah, a tiny yeah. bit of gammon. Oh yeah. Not much, but two percent, three percent, pretty small. You said tiny. Now there's none. No gammons. Game, gin, score it. A big eight point win for Steve. Monster equity for the match. Huge. And the PRs at this point is up to date. PRs 281 for Wilcox, 482 for Steve. Yep. Now that might not be that might not have included the first game. They had a glitch in the uh, in the XG and had to restart it. So six so, had two big take blunders, right? Yeah. Were they both take? Were they both games he should have yeah. passed and took, or was one of them a game he should have taken? <laughs> they and passed? passed and he should have taken. Right. Okay. So they've had one of each. That's right. Okay, they're taking a little break here. Which is very smart if your name is Wilcox. You just lost an eight cube. You're losing twelve to one. You got about ten percent equity or nine something like that in the match. You take a break. Get it together. Think about what's going on. Think about your strategy. And I'm going to get a cup of water. You want something? Yeah, water. I'll bring it. This yours? Yeah. Got a code? Huh? Can I use it for a sec? Sure. Are they going to match equity? Yeah. I guess I guess uh, eleven percent. Eight per, eight eight and a half eight. Let's see eight point one percent. Eight point one percent. But it's a sporting guy to show you what a sport I am. Yeah. You're I'll gonna take, give me even I'll take money. Nine money? to one. <laughs> it's eleven to one. I'm taking nine to one. I'll tell you what. I'll take Wilcox even. That's eight. the sporty guy I am. I'll take Wilcox even right now. With what? With what? What do you mean with what? Even, even in what? Even money for the for the uh, for who wins the match? And what, what do you mean catch? and? What's the catch? There's no catch. I got Wilcox. You got Steve. For how much? Oh, not for money. <laughs> this is the gentleman's bet. It's eleven. It's it's almost <laughs> eleven. What? Uh, eleven. <laughs> Eleven and a half to one. Uh huh. I'll take nine to one. All right, you got ten dollars. Okay. It's a hedge. By the way, we're, we're by the way, we're our mics are on. The whole world just heard okay, our bet. Yeah. And by the way, there's a lot of betting going on in Monte Carlo. You got to go to.
the website. You got to go to Morton's website. You can put a bet I usually, down. I usually don't gamble, but not, where am I? <laughs> you usually don't gamble. You can go to clubgourmet.dk and put your bets down on anything, any match or on the whole tournament on who's going to do what. And uh, Morton's booking it. And I was again, actually looking to bet on this match, but he had such a wide spread on it. 120. No, he had he had the line. Wilcox 140, Steve plus 110. I thought it was 120. Hmm. Okay. That is a wide spread. Yeah. That is a wide spread. And who would you? I might have, have, I might have bet on Wilcox minus 110 or Steve plus 130. So he <laughs> he had me covered. You know, in the old days before the internet, <clears throat> and we used to look at football lines, and they might be a three-point spread from one city to the next. And I, I had, I used to had, I had a three point jack once for a lot of money, and the last second field goal cost me a fortune. <laughs> I mean, I broke yeah, even. Yeah, I broke to, even except for the juice, just, but I could have won both sides. Back in the old days, yeah, <laughs> like uh, the Giants were playing the Rams. No, I was. It was Dallas against Chicago. I lived in Chicago and had friends in Dallas. Right. And the, the Dallas lines were always askew because the Dallas people were so ego involved with the Cowboys. And the Chicago people were so involved with the with so I had a friend in Dallas. I actually had to fly, fly down to Dallas to place the bet with cash, and we did it because it was that much money. Well, Phil, those were the I days. Can't you, I can't <laughs> tell you what a pleasure it is to commentate with you, and how much I respect you as an individual and someone that promotes backgammon worldwide. And you're one of the most energetic and entertaining people I've ever known in my life and I'm always happy to share a company with you regardless of the venue and format. Thank you very much, Joe. And here's the twenty bucks I was I I, I agreed to pay you for that. <laughs> it, it sounds egregious almost for me to return the favor by telling you what I think of you, but I think you know already know how much I love you as a guy, as a friend, and as a for what look at you with the USBGF and all you've done for the game. So it's mutual love here. Thank you. Thank you. But thanks for your words. Appreciate it very much. That's why I'm on the Giants list. We all know I made the Giants list this year, not because I'm I'm, I'm as good a player as Steve Sachs or these guys. It's because I, I have tried to promote the game. I love the game. Well, you deserve every every accolade that you receive. Thank you so much. And I've and I've been I've been thanked. USBGF gave me a special award the uk gave me the award for the number one uh, promoter of the game i mean I, I i've been thanked but the thanks is the fun i'll tell you the biggest thanks i get is every time i bump into a student and every tournament i'll go to i have at least in this room there are probably 30 people that have been my students and they're here some of them are here only because they learn from me now they may have learned from somebody else and we'd be here anyway but i take pride that they learn from me oh steve I mean, uh, Phil has uh, taught so many students who are very active in the game now, and he's just been such uh, a wonderful uh, promoter of backgammon. And he makes he just being around Phil is a pleasure. It's fun. He's just very entertaining, and and students love Thank taking you. lessons from him, and friends love hanging out with him, and. He just definitely adds to the vibe and the fun of backgammon. I also add to the cash. Uh, you know, I mean, I, 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 I'm a good contributor to your game. I brought you into my chouette, and uh, I, I, I think you're making a living at that. That's helping you pay the rent. Oh, yeah. I know. Uh, <laughs> I know that's why you pay the rent. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, 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 might, I might be able to pay uh, my grocery uh -huh. bill once a month. Oh, look at this other match we got going. Petco. And Jurgen Jurgen is the only three time winner of this world championship. Do you remember when he won his third world champion, no, Joe? I don't, I don't you don't remember, remember that? I don't recall that. No, I, I wonder who he played in the finals to win the third world championship. A guy named it's, Joe Russell. It's funny. <laughs> before that tournament started, uh -huh. Jurgen and Mochi and I were sitting at the same table talking for like an hour. Uh -huh. And Mochi said, I want to be the first person to win it three times. And he don't he'd won it once then. Uh huh. And I said, I just want to be among the people that have won it twice. Uh -huh. And Jorgen had won it twice. Uh -huh. And it turned out, Jorgen and I meet in the finals. <laughs> and I'm trying to be the person to win it twice. Uh -huh. And he becomes the person. They win it three, three times. times. And by the way, I did the commentary on that match. You were, you were sick. The first man, he had, to, he had to win twice. You were really sick the first day. And, and, and I think the, the next day, I think, what did you play, a 2.4? 
something incredible. You no, no, I, I think it was the three. So. The three, but it, but back then, a three is like playing a two today because we the, the 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 level of computer analysis has improved in the time being well, used in extreme more time to yeah spend. right so you were you played as good as anybody in the world ever played just about in, we both in a played under three yeah it was very match. impressive so what's going on with petco and jurgen is winning two away five away you can see they're only playing to 11 that's because they're in the fighters bracket they've each lost one match but they can still win the world champion again Jurgen could be a four-time four-time world champion the winner time, the time that he when he beat me for, for his third victory in the finals, he lost his first match and fought back all the way through the fighters bracket. Uh -huh. He had to win like I don't know, eleven matches or twelve matches or something, uh -huh. maybe thirteen. I don't know what it was. Yeah. But he had to win in each and he was the best I had already won the winner's bracket and I'm waiting for the fighters bracket to finish. And I was obviously rooting against him because he was the best player left and i didn't want to play the best yeah, of player course, left. of course you know, you know. That's natural you know. human instinct right so every match he was trailing like two away seven away or one away five away like three matches in a row uh -huh. he's trailing yeah he's trailing and i'm just like <laughs> Okay, come on, knock this guy out. Every, every match. <laughs> you're rooting for the underdog, everyone. What do you think of the the change now that you only have to win once to win the world championship? I just, I didn't even know that till somebody told me last yeah, night. We, when did they change that? Last year. Okay. Last year. And what? How do they compensate the winner? They just price? pay extra money to the guy Where's who is undefeated. Where's my extra money? Huh? Where's my extra money? <laughs> <laughs> That's, they changed it after you. They figured, why give it to Joe Russell? We'll give it to the rest of them. But do you like the idea of one time instead of two? Yeah. I do too. I love it. It's much more exciting final. You have a one match well, final. It's so Plus hard the, to win the fighters bracket. You know, yeah. How many more matches did he have to win than, right. than you did? They've proven that it's like even tougher to win the fighters bracket than it is to go undefeated yeah. in Maine. LA's always done it that way. With, with the fighter can only have to win one. Right. And I know it well because I was I was the winner of the winners bracket, and then I lost over to Chenault in the finals, and I was mad that he only had to beat me once. I thought he should have to beat me twice. Well, they're taking quite a long break here. But I see Steve is coming back. There we go. Oh, look at those two handsome guys. That's me and Joe Russell. When did your hair turn gray? Oh, it started turning gray when I was in my early 40s. Uh -huh. And I would say by the time I was late 40s, it was pretty solid gray. One quick story. My hair turned gray one night. They, they say that people do it. I had a fight with my wife, and I woke up the next morning with gray hair. No. I swear to God, almost... How did your hair turn gray? I don't no. know. There's something chemical that can happen. Doesn't have I'm to not, grow out gray or something? I didn't. It was... You had a little gray in it, and the next day it was almost all gray. One night. It was unbelievable. I, 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 I researched it. It happens in very rare cases, but it's under stress. Boy, was that stress. Okay. There's no stress like fighting with your wife, which no longer... I no longer have that problem. Okay, back to the match. Are you, according to Joe Russell, who taught me that, Joe Russell, according to Joe Sylvester, who taught me this long ago, at these scores you play gammon, go gammon, save. When you're this far ahead and this far behind. And the computer back then when he told me didn't agree. Snowy didn't agree, but XG does. You, you play all your opening moves as if it's gammon, go, and gammon, save. And your cube action, too. It's almost automatic, and this is something a lot of beginners and intermediates don't do. It's almost automatic to go out to the 18 with that 6 in the early game. And usually very wrong to go down to your 7 point. Create a new, another blot that, you, even if you like to make the 7 point, there are rare exceptions, but generally that's wrong. So the match equity says 11%. Because of the difference in skill, I think it's 13%. <laughs> Not much more than 11. The, the match equity said 8%. 8%. So maybe it's 10%. You know, you, then we have an even bet. <laughs> That's right. I mean, Wilcox is better, but not enough to matter that a huge amount. That seems like a fair assessment. Mm -hmm. 
and I don't know anybody in setting odds and betting that's that I've ever played with that's better than you. I think Pasco comes close. Svobodny's pretty good, but of the people I know, you set odds as good as anybody I know. Well, thank you. It's something that comes pretty natural for me. Uh -huh. What makes me mad is when we put it in the computer and check it, you're always right. <laughs> Your settlements in, in money games is and, and uncanny. You're within two tenths of a percent all the time. Okay, we got a prime versus prime, but three checkers back is not really good for Steve here. Wilcox has a decided advantage. Oh my God, he's only fifty one percent. What am I missing here? Oh, because this is this is our solid. He's got four in a row without the gap of the seven point. I had no idea that was that big a difference. This is a 50-50 game. I really thought. Oh, I really thought Wilcox had a real advantage. He's getting a swing at, a swing at the blot right now. That's the reason. Okay, a free swing, and a swing and, and a miss. Got five four pointer. A swing and a miss. That was that's not really a miss. That he also has you know that 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 big too that he can point on the uh -huh. three point. Uh huh. There weren't many numbers, but. All right. So the, it certainly has turned some. There's no way you double when you're winning by this much, is there? No. Heavens, no. He's got four men stuck yeah. behind. I mean, three men stuck yeah. behind a four prime. He, he won't double this. It's Absolutely. only a point six four error. Absolutely, he will not double this. Without, I'll guarantee you he will not double <laughs> Well, know, it would be the biggest blunder that Steve's he, ever made in a tournament, maybe, if no, he doubled. wouldn't be that. Okay, he rolled. Nothing wrong with him stopping to no. think, though. Maybe he's thinking about what what would get him to a double if he could get there. A hit, a hit and out would get him to a double. I should just keep going to the six point. He wants he wants to keep shooting at that man. Well, he would still be shooting if he moved the two, but not as good, not as well. He dupes ones and threes by staying there, so it isn't that expensive. It isn't that costly to stay there. Because it dupes the threes also. This is a little bit wrong. Not bad. Just a little wrong. 3%. The main thing it was was two blocks instead of one. It now it's right on the edge of a double. The score would stop him. No, this is no double. It was... I, oh, I see. I, I was looking at the wrong screen. <clears throat> I don't know anybody else with a rolling style like Steve's. Sort of over the side. Oh, it's because he's a left-handy. Yes. That's why he's lefty. That's why it looks funny. So now, where's Wilcox at? Probably still not there, right? At the score, you never know when you're not there. Oh, it was a double. It was a big double. Well, it was I don't, a big I don't fault him for not doubling. Uh -huh. I would have an itchy trigger finger at the score. I think I would have found that double. But he's got such a hang-up on trying to do the right thing, and I don't. <laughs> there he goes. Double pass. Big pass. Steve scored it before he turned the cube. <laughs> He lost his market. He waited too long, and he rolled too well. It was only nine pips. It was. I think that was uh, definitely a take at an even score. Maybe at the score, it was a big pass. Uh -huh. did, we, did we get the XG analysis on it? I didn't see it. But Steve had a couple of major blunders, and he's still playing he's very, still, very, he very still well. He doesn't have a take blunder, so uh -huh. I'm pretty sure it was a path at the score. But I think it would have been a take at a. Even uh, score. Uh. So where are you in this tournament, Joe? You're sitting here for a reason, aren't you? Eliminated. Yeah, that's why you're sitting here. Okay. You're in doubles, though. Who are you playing doubles with? Blake. With Blake. My buddy Blake. We both stayed at Blake's apartment last week. I had a good story. I, yesterday, I was leading my match 8-5. to five. I lost the last seven games of my match. I got into a sh shoe last night. I lost... 
the, I lost all six games that I played in the shoe up. Oh. Then I played my match today. I lost the first two games in my match, so I was on a uh. I was on a 15 game in a row loss streak. And finally, I got to a position where I had a double pass, and I said I'm going to win my first game. I doubled, and my opponent took. It and I rolled you. my 35 to 1 only number that left the shot. <laughs> and you lost? And I lost. <laughs> How many games did that in a row? That's 16? That was 16. What's the odds on 16? Come on, you know that. Well, I know 10, I know 10 is 1,000 to 1. 24. Yeah. 11 is 2,048. Uh. 12 is 4,096. Is 4, 13 is 8,192. 14 is 16,392. Yeah. Yeah. So. 32,000 to one. Yeah. yeah. 32,000 to one, and you did it. Plus, the odds are, are even worse because of your skill level. You were probably better than many of the people that beat you those games. Probably. <laughs> God. I think All right, my, where opponent, are we here? my opponent in my intermediate round. Uh -huh. uh, I'm. And may have been a two to one favorite over, and I that's and I lost eleven to one. <laughs> it's hard to be a two to one favorite in an eleven be, point match against is. anybody. It, it is against anybody. He was that bad, huh? Okay, no, I, I'm not saying he was that bad. Okay, yes, you Maybe are. Maybe I shouldn't say that. I know, I know. You don't want to say it, but it could be. And I might have been only eight to uh, five. Who knows? All right, what's going on with this cube action? Is Steve taking? At this score, I think he's passing. What's the pip count? 12 pips. Steve's ahead 12 pips. Yes. I think it's a clear take. Oh, but yeah. I, but I think he might pass. No. It's a he clear take. We haven't, seen, we haven't seen the analysis, and I'm going to go on a limb and say it's a clear take, and you're going on a limb and saying he's going to take it. I think it's, I think it's only a double because of the score. I wish we could see the analysis. Wish I could hit a button and look at it. He passed. He I passed. I think he's going to have a pass error there. We're about to find out. Oh, yeah. Look what happened to the PR. Well, it doesn't show him having another take error, though. How can the PR go to 11? Something's, something's wrong something's there. Something's wrong. Let me go check on this. Something's wrong. I don't think we want to disturb the match for this. That's not the XG analysis is not as important as okay. leaving. Yeah, I, we're really not supposed to go in that room. Well, I just playing. don't know how his PR went to eleven all <laughs> yeah. of a sudden, we'll and to, it doesn't show there being another yeah, take we'll, here. We'll find out later. I'm I'm curious like you, but we just can't do it right now. Okay, six four, good roll comes in and hits. Now Wilcox has the decision again based on the score. He's got a I I like this cube. I it's a good pressure cube. I like this cube. You just saw Steve blunder on a pass. He might do it again. Why are we not getting the analysis here? I don't know. There it is. It's a good double and a good take. We're not, you know, we're not sure Steve blundered because it didn't. Sh it doesn't show him having another take error. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh huh. Double hits without thinking, going for the gammons, which is, a, you know, when you're losing 12 to 3, you want to think about gammons. That's a good roll for Steve, hitting his big here. <clears throat> Wonder if any. Oh, double threes. Do you come in and hit? I do. Do you hit or make the four? I think you hit. Oh, I'm right. XG says hit. No, no. XG says hit. Wilcox will anybody get it. In the commentary, have anything anything to say? Yeah, I'm I'm looking at the commentary. If anybody knows about that last cube action with Steve dropped, if anybody saw it, let us know. 
Not a, not yet. I don't see anybody intelligent on the stream. Well, Bob Z's got to be there, right? <laughs> Casper, Jim Painter. I see a lot of intelligent people. I'm kidding, of course. But nobody's giving us an answer. <clears throat> Make the bar. No. Okay, yes. 6 1. <clears throat> I have to admit, I might have made the bar there. Well, good for Steve taking that cube. That was a good take. Good double, good take. Double hit. Double hit. Yeah. You got to give yourself a chance to make. Yeah. He, you're, He's getting he, attacked from the point, yeah, the point here. If you don't he, respond, you're in deep trouble. That's right. He gave, me, he gave him his, his whole roll. Double hit was right there. By a lot. He needs a four. Two, three is as good as a four. Every bit as good as a four. <clears throat> Going to hit again? Certainly hit. Yep. When you're blitzing, blitz. But you're running out of checkers in the zone now. Getting thin. That's still a good roll. Nice play. Very nice play by Steve. Oh, hit and cover. That's a great roll. <clears throat> Will wins four points here. He's back in this match. And who did I bet on? I think it was Will, wasn't it? Let's not forget that bet. That's more important than what's going on on the screen here. My ten dollars. You laid nine to one on Will. <laughs> <laughs> you, can you can switch to you laid nine to one you can pick who you bet on right now i can go seven to one anywhere any way i want <laughs> what a sense of humor i love it I'll be honest with you, Joe. This is a replay. This, this, they played this one yesterday. I already know what's happening. <laughs> Unfortunately, since I have 10% of Steve. Uh, you know it's not true, okay? <laughs> that would be funny, though. I still <laughs> can't understand days I'll do that. how Steve's PR went from, like, the low fours or mid fours to 1032. Without another take blunder. Without another take blunder. Yeah, I, it's got something wrong. You're absolutely right. We can't rely on this XG feed today. But we knew that was to take blunder, though. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe it wasn't a blunder. Well, then he made some massive checker play error yeah. or something. Yeah, somewhere. Steve will not be happy. He Steve will only be happy when he plays well. He's like every really good player, you can't control winning and losing that much, but you can control how you play. Most tournaments, I would just as soon play well as win. But this is one tournament. I would rather win. Yeah. Play well. Okay. How about you? Oh, every tournament. <laughs> At my level, every win's a win. I love Carter's response when he won Cyprus and he was outplayed. Was point oh one error. Yep. He was supposed to make the ace point. Point oh one. Yeah. <laughs> I would come in and hit on the thirteen. I don't call point oh one oh. an error. These. Bar 23, 2 to 1. Oh, he's not supposed to hit. That's surprising. That is surprising. And he got it. Yeah. He's... Wow. You win more, you just increase your gammons too much. You increase your gammons 6%. Yeah. Your wins are only 3.3%. Uh, this is a hard play for anybody. This is a very hard play. This is the play I would make. Me too.
I wouldn't know whether to come out to the bar or, or come out to the 16. I had, I would have no idea. And they're close. I, w I wouldn't have a clue how to figure out which is better. They're close. That's the right play, Bo. No, he came out to the 15. That's the third play. Oh. Well, that was my choice, the 15 or the, the, the 15 or the 18. I wasn't looking at the 16. Okay. Not a bad, not a bad play. Not too bad. Next time it shows the overall PRs, let me point out something to okay. you. Okay. Well, covering the ace would be really wrong here. I guess you want him to come in and crack, or is it? About, it's about timing. It's about keeping that five yeah. prime in front of all those checkers. Did Jorgen win? Something's he did. Jorgen won. Mm -hmm. Something is wrong with the XG feed. So Jorgen beat Petco. Is still alive in the in the fighters bracket. The Wilcox is about a close to fifty percent gammon here. <clears throat> in my opinion, Wilcox could easily be the best player in the world. It's hard to say. You know, it's hard to. All the top players are so close well, to each other, but it could it could be Mochi, it could be Wilcox, it could be Sander, it could be ZZ, it, it could be a handful of players. But, Kazuki, Peter Jess Thompson, yeah. Hideaki. But uh, Travi, if he was I, playing more, I would actually probably just as soon have Wilcox as anyone. Uh huh. I think I think you can flip a coin with most of them, but who's tournament tough? If you were Forgetting PR, Mochi still is is the guy that well, gives me the most. Yeah. Mochi deserves everything for yeah, all he, he's done. I mean, Mochi. I talked about it earlier, how he got into the Hall of Fame and why he, for a non-U.S. citizen to get into the Hall of Fame for what he's done for the game in America, he deserved every bit of that. You explained it to me very well. At, at first, I was wondering why would they let a, a non-U.S. player, but for all the tournaments he's played in, for all the promotion he's done in the U.S. And he's done quite a bit with you, and, and oh, he and I've done some charities work with you as well. Quite a, and quite a bit of stuff for kids too. Right. Oh, that's. I'm very that's proud a to be monster, with monster them. toss for Steve. That just increased mm -hmm. his winning chances, increased <laughs> the chances of getting gammon, took away a third of the gammons. Increased his chances of winning the world championship. Wouldn't it be something if Steve wins the world champion? That would be amazing. And we'd have two guys from L.A. <clears throat> and Wachtell almost. He made the finals Wachtel, and played great. Wachtell played one of the best. He came in second, but he played one of the best uh, matches <coughs> ever. Yeah, he played under three PR, as I recall. Yep. 2.6 or something? Yep. O'Hagan also did that also. He so came in second. We'll have... Three men on the seven point, which can be a real aggravation against the twenty-three point. Uh, so he definitely doesn't want to roll any fives here. Now that's a monster shake. That just increased the gammon equity significantly and the win chances also. Yeah, he it was wrong to play six to three. Look how quickly he did that. I would have thought about six to three. I must be missing something. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, she straightened the camera, not the board. Oh, that's great. I'll tell you, Tara, I I always like Tara, and I always respect for her. But after this tournament in Istanbul, it's just unbelievable her technical skills and and how she's on top of everything. Of she's on top of it. He taught her nothing. She taught him how to be a nice guy. Not that you weren't before. Oh. Yeah, I've done it. We're shutting it down after this match. Until what time? Okay. 
There'll be no streaming until 10 p.m. Monte Carlo time after this match, which means I get to rest and have a nice dinner. Yeah. I might take a di I'm going to take a dip in the pool. What a beautiful place to take a break. Now look at this. This he's got to clear the point. Yeah, that, he's that, got to clear. Yeah, that he's still got ones to play. But, like but twos are not going to be 10 fun. Percent extra winning. Oh chances. my God! Well, think about the next two. If it doesn't come with a pair, next two is not going to be fun. That's why you stay. You don't run. You stay and make the two really horrible. Watch this two. There it is. There's that too. <laughs> What's the delay here? Wilcox bore the four off okay. instead of to the yeah, ace. Yeah, yeah. An ace is monstrous here. Monstrous. And he got it. He got it. Wow. Unbelievable. He had a roll of two. He had a roll of one. And now Steve's a big favorite in this well, game. How many men does Wilcox have off? I can't tell how many stack checkers there are. I think there's five yeah. off. No, there's there's less. There's le oh, there's, there might only be one off. Oh, there's more on the... Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Obviously, there were not five off, or he wouldn't be recubing and getting a quick pass. There's no stack checkers on the ace. There's more stack checkers on the four point. What are there, three or four? Oh, there they are. You're right. They were stacked. That was a very, very big game for Steve. Will had a chance to really get back in the match there, and he, and uh, big, big turnaround for Steve. If Steve wins the world championship, it was that role that I won't say won it for him, but raised his equity tremendously. By the way, I'm talking a little soon. He's got what another four matches to go, at least maybe five. <laughs> Another four, probably. This is this is this is only the third round. Yeah, so it's got, got eight rounds. You got to win. It, if you have a buy, you have to win eight rounds. Eight so rounds. So you have to win five more. Okay. All all I'm telling you is I would be excited. <laughs> I'm already excited for Steve. Uh, first of all, he hasn't won. Yeah, but the match he, is not over. But let me tell you something. If he wins the world champion, he might championship. He might buy us breakfast. There's a At chance. Denny's. Huh? At Denny's. At Denny's. <laughs> White Castle. Here I come. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at this cube action. Nice double by Wilcox. Clear, clear double and a big pass. Especially at this score. I tell you, Steve and I played golf a lot together. We used to have a standing bet. Anybody, this, anybody gets a hole in one. Wins two hundred dollars from the other guy, uh -huh. but the guy with all in one has to take the other one out to dinner at any restaurant of his choice. Oh, it's it's a losing process then. So <laughs> Steve, Steve got the hole in one. I had to give him two hundred dollars, uh -huh. but I've held off on my choice for twenty years until the cost of the dinner goes up. <laughs> well, I beat a Kiko one day in L.A. and I. Took her to dinner at Masahito, is that what it's called? Yeah, I, I don't want to tell you what it cost me. The next night, she won, and we went to an Ethiopian restaurant. It cost her $40 to take my son and me out to dinner. The previous night, it cost me easily 10 times that much. This is a big pass, especially at this score. There you go. boy. Good play. I'll be right back. I'll the restaurant. Right, okay, go ahead. Go for me, too. Change the scoreboard. Change the scoreboard. Phil, they didn't change the scoreboard, I don't believe. I think it's 15.
I, I'm pretty sure it should be 15. It's just pretty critical if I'm right. Look at Wilcox playing under three. That was to be expected. And Steve is not playing the best he's ever played, but he's certainly nothing to be embarrassed about. Is this the right score? Okay, okay. I, I I had it wrong then. I thought he I thought he was fifteen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got it wrong. They got the right score. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's where I got it wrong. They got the right score. Okay. <laughs> it's three away. Thirteen away. Everybody knows the match equity for that. 6%? That's my guess. All right. We're at 14.4. Yeah. 6% is my guess for equity. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> You went to bkgm.com for the match equity table? I have 71 articles on bkgm.com and 12 inter 16 interviews. My favorite website. Thanks to Tom Keith. Famous for the Keith count and the website. I guess 6%. You know you got 500 tabs open in your phone? <laughs> you realize how much that draws on your battery? I had no idea. I'm plugged in, so I don't care. Yes. Ac accidentally closed it. Join it over time. Pistons against the Nets. Double threes. Nice roll. He's thinking about the cube? I don't see no, how. No, he's not thinking okay. about Okay. I was saying, I don't see how he could think about the cube. Makes the five point. What else is there? Why would you consider the two point when you can make the five? He's not. Okay. A dance here and you think about the cube. At this score, if you dance, I would give the cube. Dance here, it's, it's a pass. The pass? Yeah. They came in. It still might be a cube. I'm doubling here. If I'm losing 4 to 14, I'm doubling. Oh, look. It's a pass no matter how he played it, according to XG. It's a double pass. When Sander was playing the Galen, the, the fellow that had only played back Emmett for three months, he took a long time to give a cube that was a monster pass, and the guy scooped. It was clear poker. It was sheer took poker. This one. Oh, my goodness. And this is a blunder. Wilcox just did the same. Did Wilcox play poker too? That was a poker move. Take a long time when your opponent has a pass to convince them, to, but you don't. You don't. You're not going to outfox Steve Sachs. It's it's only three pips, so it, it's deceptive. Again, this would. It's a little this, tough. This would be a massive take. Yeah. Look at the, look at he wins thirty three percent, even after the play. Yeah, at fourteen four, I don't know. I don't think the word massive applies to any take. Right. <laughs> This, I was going to say this would be a massive take in uh -huh. the money game. John Noel Grinda, welcome. Another world champion is visiting us. So good to see you looking so good. 
Another world champion, did you? The room's full. He's being punished for this take, possibly. Starting to look that way. Do you lift? Do you lift at all? Do you think about lifting? It's right to lift. Yeah, I would lift. It, but real close. It's very, very close. I would have lifted quickly. I would say it's wrong to lift. Wrong to lift by 0 0.01. Yeah. I don't use the word wrong when it's 0.01. <laughs> That's the difference between you and me. <laughs> I would have lifted. Do you leave him a 3-5? Yeah, I guess you still want... it's The gamuts are a little bit different, right? 2%. The winds are only like 1%. Yep, 2% winds, gammon difference. But I don't know how to calculate the gammon value here. It still can't be that much more than it's, it's 0.6. It's percent or... yeah. That's about all you can do there. Bring it in. You got the three. That's good. That's going to reduce his gambling chances a lot. I'm running. I'm just, no, he's not supposed to run. I would have just run. Say, I don't want to get gammoned. But there's enough wins to stay, and I'm surprised. I would have yeah, gotten surprised this wrong. I'm surprised this is big an error to run. Yeah. 0.091 error to run. This type of position... You know, normally you'd stay back, but you're thinking I'm up 14 to 4, 14 to 6 versus 14 to 8 if I get gammon. But uh, what's the difference in the gammons? Oh, good play, Steve. Well done. That was a great play by Steve. I, I guess the score scares me that much. They want to be playing too safe. That's the biggest mistake that I say beginners make is playing too safe when they're ahead. And I would have made that beginner mistake. <clears throat> one way to look at it is what were the numbers that pointed double twos three one double uh, uh double threes but three one really wasn't that big a gain because then you'd have three men you haven't closed out but you'd have three men on the six point and and flat on the three four or five but there were no immediate shot levers, were there? Immediate? I don't think there were. I needed to look at it a little bit more. I just, my gut was no, to I, get I the hell think, out of there. I don't think there were. I don't think there were any immediate shot levers, so he's going to have to stay there for at least a couple rolls to, to make it worthwhile. And now, now you're going to run. You're not going to waste pips. Well, he's not wasting pips by staying, so he can stay. Mm -hmm. Again, you don't waste pips. I think you run here. If he rolls a high number. Oh, you only waste one pip, so you stay. It's right to stay. And he's still probably going to get off the gammon, so it's not that terrible. There are five checkers on the ace, and he's off the gammon probably. So that, that justifies the stay a lot. I was doing yes commentary yesterday with David Wells. He went to the same site and looked at the same numbers. Okay. <laughs> we were doing the same, and we had similar kind of scores. All right, so we're at three away, 11 away. Yep. Let me guess before you do this. Three away, 11 away, 8%. 10 and a half. Oh, okay. You're still not doing too bad on your bet. Not too bad on the bet, yeah. Mm. 
I'm still playing Gammon Go and Gammon Save. It's playing, got to be really aggressive if you're Will. A little more conservative if you're Steve. <clears throat> That's a very good roll for Will. <clears throat> He's the only Wilcox I've ever known. Have you, do you know anybody else named Wilcox? No. no. I, not that I can think of. And Snellings. This whole thing sounds very English, isn't it? Or Scottish or something? I'm curious of the origin. <clears throat> Maybe it's Costa Rican. Uh, Wilcox grew up spending half his time, I believe, in uh, Louisiana and half his time in New York. Uh-huh. His mother lived in New York. His father lived in Louisiana. I think his father was a lawyer. Uh -huh. uh, had some very colorful stories about his dad. Some really, really uh, huh. funny stories that you love to hear. I love those kind of stories. Michi was uh, doing commentary with me last night. Michi told me he keeps a running count the entire match. I don't know too many. Matt Kongair says he does that too. It would be so distracting for me to do that. It's not It's not that hard, actually. Well, yeah, John O'Hagan does it too. When I learned the trick from John O'Hagan, the problem I had is when you hit a checker. Right. You just, if you hit a checker from the 24 point, it makes a 24 pip difference. If you hit it from the 12 point, it made a 12 pip difference. That trick made it easier for me to do it. Now, Steve doesn't need to keep a running count because he can do the count as fast as anybody I've ever seen. Yeah, he's super fast. He's super, super fast. <clears throat> he and Art Benjamin and Karen Davis and uh, Jake and uh, and Jason Briggs. Jason is incredibly fast. Karen is <clears throat> very, very fast. Karen is. I'm actually faster than most of them, but I don't get the right answer. I can give you a count in a split second. Yeah, but the wrong number. <laughs> like me. Yeah, I know that one. <laughs> Wilcox is playing a 2.19. Ma ma masterful 2.19. Yeah, masterful. And it's, look at his mm -hmm. checker play PR. It's, it's, a, it's amazing. And, he's, and it's not that he's had a bunch of easy plays. Look. Look at his checker play PR. No blunders in, a, in this entire match. No blunders. Not one blunder in a 17-point match. Oh, that's a big, big roll. Big roll. He's now 10 pips ahead. 10 pips ahead. One pip big ahead. Back. One pip ahead. No, pip oh, that was double, oh, that was double five. I thought it was five, four. Oh. Steve's got to have a lot to double here. His, what's his take point? That's <laughs> eight, probably 16 or 14. Well, Steve will probably be doubling the next shake. Yeah. That's probably, he's, I think he's there right now. I don't think so. I do. I'll I don't yes. think so at I'll this score. Five, he's five got euros. 17%. Five euros. Okay. He's got seven. You're, you're betting what, that he'll double? I he bet he doesn't. And I oh, no, no, I'm not betting that. I was betting, no, no, I, no. I was betting that he will no, double. No, you said he didn't have a double. I said he did. Oh, you're right. <clears throat> I wish we weren't being recorded. I could get out of this one easily. And he did double, too. I would lost it either way. The good news is five euros is less than five dollars. Used to be, you would have heard more. No, five dollars, five euros is five fifty five. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, that's right. I'm losing more money. You got five? <laughs> I actually lost money. I lost more money. Double or nothing on who wins this game. You can call, you can take your choice. You can take my choice? Oh, Wilcox I'll, take, be a favorite. I'll take Wilcox. Because yeah. I'll bet that the last... There's no betting in backgammon. Nobody bet the bets. position was a double, and he bet it was. I thought but you know, he had 17%. Isn't that a take? No. At the score? No. no? It, if he He's loses, Steve gets to Crawford. Oh, that's that's right. The downside is huge. Okay. So his take point was probably still more like twenty three or twenty. Most of the time most of the time you need 
at these kind of scores, believe it or not, most people think you can take really deep. You usually need around 20% to take. Really? I, I had that wrong. I thought at 17 he'd have a take. I would have taken that cube. If I'd known it was 17, I probably could have figured it out because the Keith count is pretty accurate. <clears throat> I gave you I gave you a big on this because Wilcox obviously is a favorite in every game because Steve has to be more concerned. Of course, of course. But you're going to tell everybody if I lose. I know how you work. My reputation is going to be trashed. Did you hear what I did to Simborg the other day? I'm going to hear that for a week. Well, Wilcox is certainly favored now. I like my position. I like my bet. Even with the double threes. Make the two he's still a favorite. The seven. Oh. oh, he was supposed to go to the five, I guess. Okay. You still make the bar? Well, he had no Steve, other, he had no other a, ace to play. He wants a four or a two here. Which would you rather have? I'd rather have the two. two yeah, I'd rather have the two. There's the oh, four, though. four is good. Where's the six inside? I think it is inside. Yeah. Eight to two is a little bit. It's better. Okay. You don't want to leave a blot because you could get into a blot hitting contest right now. Okay. So <clears throat> Steve's up 11 pips. I would not consider doubling if I were Wilcox. This is a double. Okay. So I would, I would blunder here. More power to Wilcox if he finds this double. This is because you, your great shakes can lose your market. Uh, and, you know, let's say that he just brings the man down and hits loose on, if Steve doesn't respond back, he loses his market by mouth. Uh -huh. Great double, Wilcox. And, and for money, it's probably a blunder yeah, to I'm double sure this. It's a, blunder. it's a blunder to double this for money. That's how different match play is and why match play is so much more interesting and intricate than individual game or money play. And he took it. Good for him. Big, big take. Very nice take by Steve. <laughs> Do you hit? So, I don't think so. It's too loose with, with the with Steve's board. I, it's too risky. You're right. It, it's not horrible, though. It's 3%. I was tempted. I would have looked at it longer. A four would be big for Steve. Six two is not good. <clears throat> this is a tough play. Yes. And it turns out the top two plays are only .004 apart. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was a tough, very tough play. Tough play. Is that or up and up and out with the six? That's a great shot for Wilcox, giving him a commanding racing lead uh -huh. now. By the way, now, they Steve, both have plenty of time on the clock. Steve is Steve <clears throat> wants to anchor well, four to anchor badly, and he does. And he got it. He got it. And six to one. Yep. yep. <clears throat> Once Steve can stop worrying about the gammon, he can have a sigh of relief here. <laughs> well, Wilcox is like 55% in this game. He's got a five-pip lead, but Steve's on shake. Make the two. I'm, oh, that's no, Steve. Down. I'm sorry. Two down. <laughs> Steve, I'm sorry. I keep thinking with the baffle box, who's, I, I get mixed up on who's on roll. I'm <clears throat> so we're back to about a 50-50 <clears throat> game here. And there's virtually no cube big. And he should run. You're not giving the cube until it's gin. <clears throat> That's an interesting intellectual question. When does Steve have a recube? Maybe when his opponent has five percent. He will never have a recube. <laughs> never ever. <laughs> never, because he only needs two points to win. I was seeing. <laughs> I was seeing if I can get a bet out of you on that one. <laughs> You're too sharp. I want to bet that way once, by the way. Somebody said, oh, I think it's probably 4%. I said, oh, I'll bet you. <laughs> Who was that? That was Carter. 
It's a dead cube, baby. Now, responsible moves. If he was to accidentally give the cube, is it legal? No. That's part of that would have been legal in the old days, but responsible moves, that's one of the things you can't do is give a dead cube. He stopped the clock. I think he thinks he made an illegal play. Well, the transcriber may be asking him too. Oh, maybe they're asking. Yeah, the transcriber's trying to catch up, possibly. <clears throat> it's a tough job transcribing, especially when it's going fast okay. like this. <clears throat> this match could easily be over very soon unless Wilcox performs with some doubles. <clears throat> now keep in mind, this is the winner's bracket. Either one who loses could still win the world championship in the fighter's bracket. They so, could actually <clears throat> meet again. They could meet again. Absolutely. One of them could win the winner's bracket. One of them could lose the, win the loser's bracket. Do they call it the loser's bracket or fighter's bracket? Fighter's here? bracket. Fighter's bracket. Loser's bracket <clears throat> is a bad name. It is a it's bad name. It's called the second chance. Second the chance. Fighter's bracket. I think it's called second chance here now that I remember. And I, I'm in the no chance uh, bracket. So are you right now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the next year bracket. Next year bracket. Well, you got doubles. Consolation. You, are you old enough for senior? Are you old enough for seniors? No, I no? will. I will be next year. Yeah, next year. <clears throat> well, Steve's about eighty percent here. It just went up. Probably went up to eighty-five yeah. percent. Yeah. Went up to 87.4%. Yeah. I would use a lot more time on the clock here if I were Steve. Rub it in. <laughs> he's playing for doubles now. That's the reason for this play. He knows he's probably not going to win unless he rolls doubles, so he's playing for the most doubles he can get. Next time the XG feed comes up, if you'll sum the errors on the right side, see where it says Steve, yeah. they don't sum to his total errors. I see. I think there was a glitch at the beginning of the match where we had they started the XG again. That's part of the problem. So we're not relying on this XG necessarily to be correct. Correct for the overall level of play. But I will guarantee you that we're going to find out that Wilcox played incredibly well and Steve played very well. <clears throat> Keep in mind, we're looking at two of the best players in the world right here. Steve is up there in that class of one of the better players of the world. He's he's been. I think here he's a bull off. He should just play six to four. He's got to roll big doubles, and he needs to get as many men off as he can. I don't. I don't think he could. Typically, you would play five to three here, but I think here he needs to play six to four. He needs a double. You need four. doubles. You need doubles. Big you, doubles. Yeah. You need big doubles to work. If you're winning, you would play six to. You would play six to. Th Five to three. Five to three, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, double threes is going to be the same number. You got it. You got it. You got your play. Oh, it says six four is wrong. It says four, four two, to three two off. and three off. That's playing for really big doubles. Now he's looking at it. This 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 caters to double six and double five. But doesn't help your double fours. Well, maybe you're so. I desperate. would not know how to measure this. Maybe would, you're so uh, desperate. Uh, yeah. You trade double. You know the gain on double six. <clears throat> you sure gain on double five. It also it also is the play that gets two men off the most in X shape. That that has something to do with it as well. Uh huh. <clears throat> Non-contact bear off is a lot more complicated than most people think. See how close all of these plays are? Yes. The top three plays are 0 .05. Yeah. And he's, you know, and he, he's got the 
he understands that these are these three plays are really close. He so. knows they're close. He knows he has almost no chance to win this match, and he's giving it everything he's got to get this right. Why? Because he wants to be right. You have to be a perfectionist to play this well. You can't be play this well and not give a damn about your plays. That's true of Joe Russell. That's true of all these top players. It's a matter of pride to get it right. Every single checker play you make and every cube decision is an intellectual exercise. It's like solving a, a puzzle, and that's what he's trying to do right now. That's why this game is so much fun. I would have played six to four, which is the second best play. It's minus point zero zero two. Well, and again, without rolling it out, you might be you don't know that's right. But all the XG's pretty good at these. Yeah, XG plus plus doesn't would, get these wrong. XG to be right with this. Yeah, on plus plus it gets the, usually gets these right. XG's a little off on some back games and some other complicated things, but not not like this because it's. You know what XG is doing? It's rolling it out 720 times on top of 720 times, which I'm not sure I understand. But it's like it's like a 2100 rollout. <clears throat> oh, that's a very good roll for Steve. A one doesn't even hurt that much because he's. Uh, uh, as long as he doesn't roll a four next time, it's going to be... Oh! There's some chance here. He needs a four. Without a four, it's going to be Jinnish. Or Jin. It's going to be the last it's roll. It's going to be Jin. No, it's not. 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one keeps him in the game. 2-1 followed by a double. He'd have to have double twos or greater. No, he'd have to have double threes. That's it. Great match. Great well, match. Played. well played. Congratulations well played. To both players. Congratulations yes. to Steve on beating one of the best players in the world. Right. Look, Steve looks happy. Why does he look so happy? I want to get Steve over here for an interview. Would you help me? Sure. Would you go around and get it for me? Yeah. And thank you for your kind words, Joe. Really appreciate it. And for helping me. Right there. Keep going. I should almost be interviewing Wilcox too, but he's not going to be in the best mood after losing, I'm sure. Uh, but Steve, I guarantee you will be in a good mood. I know Steve. He's a very good old friend of mine. He's going to be in a good mood. I would be too after beating what Joe Russell says may be the best player in the world. Certainly one of them. <clears throat> We're done for the day. I think we're not we're not resuming until ten o'clock. Excuse me, one second. Bill Riles? Yo. Next match streamed is at ten PM? Ten PM. Ten PM Monte Carlo time, but stay tuned. I'm gonna interview Steve Sachs, who just demolished one of the best players in the world. So I wanna I want you to stay tuned for an interview with Steve. It's been since he played nine. Huh? I'm not gonna ask that. <laughs> I'm not gonna remind him of that. I'll get by the way, while Michael Pines is here in the meantime, Michael Pines runs the San Diego Club along with uh, Jack Frigo. Uh, Frank, Frank, Frank Frigo. Frank Frigo. Frigo. I have Jack Frigo a cousin of mine. So with uh, Frank Frigo. And they had 35 people. This is a new club. They had 35 people there at the last meeting. They're bringing in new people from all over. It's strictly promotion. It's all it takes is letting the, everybody know that there's backgammon in San Diego. And when, then when they get there, treating them like kings. New people they're giving a little free lectures to. They're giving them great hospitality. They've got a point system that's ongoing so that people have an incentive to come back. Every city in the world could have a club like this. And backgammon would grow by a, a hundredfold if everybody did what Absolutely. Michael Pines is doing with, with along with Frank in uh, San Diego. Yeah. So my hats great. off to you. We also, we also have Alan Tish is a great help. And Alan Tish, my buddy Alan Tish also. So and uh, Doran Bishop's in San Diego, one of a great player there. But what I'm saying, though, is write up this article. Tell everybody how you're doing it. Let's promote it. Get it in the USBGF magazine. If every Look at Flint, Michigan, a little nothing town that has a huge group and a lot of world champion a lot of really great players came from there thanks to carol cole that's all it takes is one or two people to work hard promote it and keep it going so thank you michael pines for what you're doing for the game 
pleasure. Nothing you know, if yeah. it wasn't for you, Phil, I wouldn't be here. And I thank you. <laughs> well, my pleasure. You know, I was going to say before Steve comes out here, and Steve's a great friend of mine. Steve's a, a great, great, great player. He's always been snake bit in Monte Carlo, it seems. You, never do, you do this interview. By no, you no, do it. No, yeah. okay. You, uh, uh, here but he, he is. He's always been snake here bit, he is. and here he is. Here he is, the new world champion, possibly. <laughs> Steve Sex. The guy, no, you didn't get lucky. You played great. You played well. Not great, you played well. You played better, but you played very well. First of all, congratulations. Thanks, I'm so happy for you, my good buddy, Steve. Yeah. Have a seat. Hello. Now, we know Wilcox outplayed you, PR, which isn't a real big surprise because he's not a bad player he's really not as bad as you probably may have thought he as... was the number one player like okay in the 90s and he's gotten talking better. to the talking to here uh, yeah, he was the number one player in the early 90s and he's gotten better so did no. you change your strategy one iota because it was wilcox Snelly? did you ever no. did you ever make a, a cube decision because of that well I got to a lot of situations that i thought were i just didn't know what to do you know? <laughs> they were tough situations you made two blunders that Joe Russell sat here and said I would have made those same blunders. Really? Yes. Well, so don't feel player cube uh, action. Huh? The cube action. At one cube action where you passed was I think it was a point one four one take or something like that. It was. A, he, I said, boy, I can't believe Steve made that big a, a mistake. I, I would have guessed Steve. Joe said I would have made that mistake. That was a really <laughs> don't don't be misled by XG. Well, that was a really where, complicated position. Oh really? I don't. It was a pass that you passed, but let's not dwell on your mistakes. Oh. Okay. You made a lot of great plays and a lot of a lot of great decisions, nice. and you weren't you you kept your composure the whole time it was wonderful but give me your thoughts about the match i was nervous i mean i was playing wilcox and like he never gives up yeah. he's like terminator you know he saw at the end he was trying to figure out where to play the two yeah. <laughs> i mean here he has almost no chance to win the match he wants to get that right you're right he yeah, never gives up it's well he's a terrific player and a good friend of mine and uh I was feel very fortunate to have won the match. Uh huh. As, you know, was it your toughest match so far? I mean, you up your well, opponent. I I only I got a buy and I won a, one match to, before I played. So the buy was your toughest match because you had to wait. <laughs> yeah, apparently so. Well, Joe and I predict we want you to win the tournament because we're both good friends of yours and we know you'll take us to Denny's if you win. Right? Denny's. You're not promising. Denny's light. Denny's light. <laughs> Maybe for breakfast. Right? Sure. <laughs> All right. Well, get some sleep. You got till ten o'clock till the next match. Yeah. You got plenty of time to relax. Okay, that's true. Get some sleep. Have dinner and and relax by the pool and. I know what you're going to do, though. You're not going to listen to me at all. You're going to take all those pictures, put them in the computer, and examine every one of them, and drive yourself nuts and when, for every mistake you made. And I'm telling you, throw that damn camera away now and enjoy the win. Thank you, Phil. That's my advice. Okay. Well, congratulations. Keep going. I'm rooting for you. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. We'll see you at 10 o'clock from Monte Carlo. It's going to continue to get, be as exciting as this with great players like Steve Sachs and Wilcox Snelling. Got a tremendous venue coming up. See you later.